It's a Midwestern, lowly, pathetic town. Like that slug. That's, that, that's the big that's like, chick in the back. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all your friends have. Everybody has a, fr- a story with Sluggo. I feel like we'd come up with a better name. Get a little it. centered a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, her real name's Brittany or something this, super this Midwestern. Is, this I need y'all to be Sluggo. connected at the hip. <laughs> uh, it's the footsie under Sluggo. the table that they can't see. Yeah. Trust me, the table's got a weird thing. It's like right where, when you have two guests on one side, right where you sit is where the fucking legs are. So you need like a table that's just got the legs at the very end yeah. so you have like feet space and shit. So, my bad. Okay. Or that's a we good, uh, anytime you're traveling with your boys on a road trip, you run into some chicks, you don't, eh, you don't want to give them your real names. Like you're just having fun in the bar or whatever. What are your names? Oh, I'm Sluggo and this is Muggsy. We're still, we're still on the Sluggo thing. <laughs> All right. We're from Tulsa. <laughs> Don't even look up Dallas. <laughs> Just fucking give him the thing right there off the bat. Oh, man. So, Dave, thanks for coming, dude. Hey, thank you for being on our podcast the other day. Yeah, I mean, just whatever I can do, man, to help out the <laughs> help out the kids in need. You, you know got to I mean? get, get the listenership up. <laughs> nah, man, y'all's, y'all's podcast has been great, man. Like, I've, I've listened to a handful of episodes that, uh, you know, like I said, it's a lot club-based and a lot of club culture and club history and and, and uh, you know, I'm interested in that stuff to a degree, you know. Sometimes I, I just, whoosh, over my head. Yeah, but you were in that you were in that stuff, too. Yeah, but, it, you know, like, uh, I when you go down a rabbit hole and you just, like, talk, start talking history, kind of like you did last night at Bike Night, about the whole, the bike riders thing. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, fuck. I can't believe they're making that a movie. I'm yeah. so stoked for that. It's, I can't I, believe I know that. But when you start doing that, I'm like, hell yeah, here we go. It's like. It's like getting on a rant or something because I know that you got all this information like stored up in your head about all these, you know, historical things that have taken place within the motorcycle culture and club culture over the years. So I don't know. I enjoy that part about, you know, you guys. And well, we had a bunch of episodes with what three before yeah. this one, I think, with you, and we lost them all. So we had to obviously get you back on. Mm-hmm. And then Ken took forever to edit and publish the issue. So he actually did have to edit it. So I don't know how to do anything when it comes to the podcast. Yeah. Just, just Ken and Derek do that. And I fucking suck. And so you and I finished. And I didn't realize I didn't turn it off. Like, I kept it recording. So I'm, like, walking around my house in my underwear. And I was having a voice-to-text argument with a buddy. And I was like, so you can hear me in the background, like, yelling at him. Just yelling at your phone. Yeah, I was like, what did I, I was like, something like, you know, go fuck a blow up. Don't fucking do anything else. Go watch some HDTV or some shit like that. Like, don't don't do that. And it just picked up the whole conversation. And Ken's, like, playing it back for me. He's like, dude, you're fucking dumb. When when you were yelling at the phone, was, was Siri going... I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, what if I would have like, like just went to my couch and started beating my dick while this shit's just still recording? Like, Ken said he could watch me like just walking back and forth and I had no idea I didn't turn it off. That's what you call Patreon material, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a YouTube red or YouTube dark or something like that? Uh, that kind of shit? I don't know. Is there? I don't know. You gotta find out. You gotta monetize it. I pay for that. YouTube premium, but I still haven't seen a penis I think it's on it yet. I've been looking. So far, I just get no ads. <laughs> they all can belong to OnlyFans. YouTube does oh, quit. Oh, that'd be cool if there was like a, a a back door, like a speakeasy in the YouTube world. <laughs> it's like there's a there's a dark. You got to go to this one video, and then in the description, <laughs> you hit a link, and it takes you to a whole other YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be pretty. Uh, yeah, the dark web, like the. Yeah, I don't. I'm too dumb for the dark web. But that's why the the episode oh. has such a fucking weird name. It's like buffalo dicks or buffalo sex or something like that yeah. it's just because i was shouting just random shit in the background for like 10 <laughs> minutes like whatever we were arguing but i didn't know i was gonna go out drinking or something and i was like ah oh, stay home but you don't need to go out and just arguing back and forth mm. and ken picked the whole thing up oh it could have been worse man it could have been a lot worse <laughs> yeah they could have dropped like the tyree nichols uh <laughs> footage right <laughs> there and he watched that ah it didn't seem so bad to me <laughs> what are they complaining about <laughs> Looks like he started, honestly. Just, just dropping hard R's all over we, my yeah, house. Yeah, with your Rittenhouse shirt. This <laughs> <laughs> is <says> local hero. <laughs> all the people, and I was like, man, I love my homies and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, like, I was like, shouting them off. I hate that motherfucker. Like the, <laughs> just going down oh, a list. Yeah, dude, he's from Wakasha. Yeah. That's close to you, right? That's no, um, no, he was actually from Illinois, but the thing took place in, like, Kenosha. and, and Yeah, Kenosha, right over the border, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's... Like, <laughs> He's definitely got a Clint Eastwood uh, cut out of him in, his, in the corner of his room with an AR. <laughs> Whatever happened to that kid? Why can't you get, get him on a podcast? What's he dude, doing? Oh, dude, I wouldn't even want that. <laughs> no. Uh, definitely demonetized. As much as I root for chaos, that's when I go, oh, no, we're, we're not really about yeah. that. That's Let's, the hard thing about, like, 
like our podcast too is is we don't monetize it and i feel like we we can't uh, because then you're making money you know we're not in the industry and we're not in you know we, we rep i choose my words you know we like to talk about the culture but we're not representing the entire culture for mm-hmm. MC culture. There's so many different avenues and, and different, and, and then you have people that are, that are in clubs and, and rep, you can't try to monetize something. Yeah, You can't make money off as much name. as you don't, as much as we say, you know, we don't represent the clubs or whatever. It's just our opinions. You can't appear to monetize that or try to make money off of that. And that's for me, if we're going to look who you're sitting next to, <laughs> what, what do I monetize? What, what do you provide to the community? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus, it's got dark. It's got I can dark. say the same about me yeah. too, though. <laughs> uh, well, so, as an offense to you, you're you're providing entertainment. Is what you're doing? But I think yeah. that's why, like at least for me, <clears throat> is it too early to talk shit? No, uh, of course not. We got Lee Harvey also over here fucking from the sixth floor taking pot shots at me. Like, hey, I, like I'm collecting money from somewhere. Like, I've ever gotten a check for fucking anything. I'm a passy <laughs> motherfucker. I'm a motherfucker. <laughs> He's going to call his tax guy. <laughs> this fucking guy. I'm trying to make him feel better. Yeah. <laughs> But throw me under the bus. But I didn't get any faggot. Throw somebody <laughs> else under the bus. I you did something. It's way too you know early for apps. It's way too early for hard apps. This is never too early. I think, we're, I think it was a 30 seconds, and then you're good, right? Yeah, we're as long as we don't say any of the bad words within the 30 seconds of the video. Oh, okay. Okay. Then, uh, see? That's monetization yeah, info right there. That's the end of the Wait until this little siren kicks in, dude. I'm coming oh, after man. you. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Mine's kicking in, dude. <laughs> Mine hasn't yet. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw my notes away. I don't know why I came prepared. <laughs> but no, I think that's part of the, the thing that we try to stay away from is trying to monetize something that we feel like belongs to everybody, whether you're in a club or not. Club history, the, the stuff, mm-hmm. looking at clubs, deciding if it's for you, it's not for you, whatever. The good, the bad, the ugly. Like, I just don't feel like we can make money off of that mm-hmm. morally or whatever the right word is. And that's why I fucking hate podcasts that are dedicated, like club-specific ones where that's their shtick, where they're, they're trying to monetize it and they're trying to take mo- money off the community or from the community. I, those are always so cheese dick to me. I fucking, I don't think there's a, yeah. I can't say all, I hate that. Like don't speak in like totalities, but I don't think there's one out there that I'm a fan of. That's like goal is to make money. There's other club yeah. based podcasts that are really good, but if somebody's trying to monetize it, it's, it's fucking cheesy. And I don't ever want well, us to fall into that. Uh, We're probably cheesier. <laughs> but no, I mean, that's a hard argument, man. I like, I don't know if I could agree with you on it hundred percent because, um, we're, you know, these mics, the the audio interfaces, the computers, everything that you guys do to create a podcast, you paid money to do that. But we, um, we're, we don't making have this money setup. off of it, making money off of it is kind of like it's like a level, right? If you're making money to cover it, to do things like trust me, none of us in the motorcycle industry doing podcasts are going to be rich enough to like be like, yeah, I got this off the backs of others. You know what I'm saying? It's just not that big of an industry. Right. But. The other thing I would like to say to that is that, you know, there are people that, that I've seen do club bot podcasts that aren't really in it. And they're just like the E news or the, the TMZ of like what's sure. going on in the club world. And it's easy clickbait because that's a very popular subject in motorcycles to people that are especially not in motorcycles. You know what I mean? Sure. And I think we kind of touched on that on the, on the last one yeah. too. And, and I, again, I separate what you do and, and other podcasts or, or, or media media that's that's motorcycle related like this yeah there's a difference in the culture of bikes the industry and the culture of clubs yeah and i have no problem with somebody making money off of the culture of bikes off of the industry whatever like if you're a if you have that skill that talent that art you're a builder you're a painter you're you're just a a motorcycle mechanic you're a rider whatever cool if you're specifically and almost only trying to create income from highlighting motorcycle clubs I don't like. I just my opinion. I yeah, think yeah. I don't like that. To me, that's just, it's it's, it's. I don't have the right words, but it's just you're making money off of something that doesn't belong to you. You're yeah. not creating anything. Yeah, yeah. That, you, you, that you're I agree. Creating videos, sure, but you're not yeah. creating a bike. You're not creating art. You're not promoting us. I guess you could say I mean, promoting it, a scene. I, but. Like I said, there's a little devil's advocate to that. If you're creating some kind of value for someone else to enjoy, that's worth money. Right. Sure, if somebody that, spends yeah. their time listening, reading, it's, it's kind of like if someone writes a book based on a story that they were able to get a Hunter S Thompson being with the HA, things like that. Is that, is he not, should he not make money selling that book? You sure. know what I mean? Sure. But sure. I'll give you that one. I'll, I'll concede that point. Um, 
you know, I think think for me, I focus probably my fault is I focus too much on the dudes that are doing negative stuff. So if you're constantly trying to monetize and make money off promoting negative aspects, then anybody with a phone can Google a negative aspect about motorcycle culture or motorcycle club yeah. culture. And if that's where you're trying to kind of be this this leech and this 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 festering sore yeah, in the yeah. community to, to promote that. And I'm not promoting it. I'm just talking about it. Yeah, you're promoting it because you're yeah, making yeah. money off of it. And that, that part that I, I can't get, say. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 it gets slippery. The line is very thin between those kind of angles. But at the same time, you know, I, I to kind of something you had said a while ago was, um, you know, people that start to make money doing stuff is because they, they, they do something that, is interesting to people. Mm -hmm. They provide some kind of value, some kind of interest. Um, and so it's like, it's, you know, like I never, we didn't do the podcast. I wasn't trying to be famous to do a podcast. I was, and I'm not famous. You They're know, pretty famous. No, like it's not the point. The point is of doing a podcast and then whatever is the result, whatever the reward is or whatever the, uh, whatever comes after is that's just, that's something I don't have any control of. Yeah. But doing the podcast and, you know, yes, making money. I make money doing this podcast. But if you listen to podcast number one and you listen to podcast number 300 or 307, you see that the money went back into the podcast. It got better. I got but better. I, I could do more with it, you know? I don't think you have to defend yourself yeah. or justify it because you're creating something that belongs in the community and you deserve to get compensated for that. Yeah. If you're... I wish, I don't know why I can't think of big words today. I mean, I can't normally, but I should have Googled them before I came in. You know, if you, again, if you are making money off the negative aspects of the community, and that's yeah. kind of like your your niche, like, I think that I hate that, and I want you to go away. And, and that's just my opinion. And no, nobody I, has I could, listened to me. I and you can that. People can click on it, and they can subscribe to that shit all they want. And people love, they love gossip. I mean, that's what, yeah, we're drawn that's to that. What, that's what yeah. social media exists for, but but I, you're Who's not getting ran through the ringer today <laughs> on social media. <laughs> but but it's, it's it's different lanes, yeah, and, and what the fast life does, and, and what some of those other podcasts do that are, are focusing on the negative aspects of the club, they're two different lanes. Yeah, so you and, and like I said, people like you over here that are making money off of it, you're giving something back. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any value over here, and I think we're in the middle. We're in a gray area where hopefully there's some value in what we're providing. But I don't think we're in a position to ever try to monetize it because that ever, would just take us too far the other way. Have any of y'all ever considered like step branching off and doing another podcast that might have some kind of monetary value to well, it? So not 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 to do it for money, yeah. but do it something so it could possibly grow into that. So you know we I mean? have um, not podcast wise, but like Ken. Ken sells T-shirts and stuff like that. He has Black Sale Supplies. Shout out Black Sale Supplies. <laughs> and and he makes money. He does some four for the road stuff on there, and that's that's cool. I got yeah. so you could say like you you know a hater could come back and be like, oh well, you guys sell T-shirts. Well, Ken sells T-shirts. Well, so four for the road itself is not a club. It no. is a Just entity a of people yeah. that are. Doing a podcast, so yeah. if you sold four for the road T-shirts, you're not making money off of any fucking club at that point, mm -mm. right? Mm -mm. So, it's, and, and then we did once. Uh, I think there's like three or four episodes out there. Uh, Ken and Derek, no shame, and and myself, we started a drunk drunk digest. Where we were just going to be three dudes, like just kind of bullshitting, kind of what the Quaint Zone does. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, people, we just get so busy that we just couldn't we couldn't keep up with it. But I think there's three or four episodes yeah. out there. Um, that was just going to be non-motorcycle related. I think one episode was about vets because all three of us are vets. One was about dads and uh, dads rights because we're, we're all dads yeah. and stuff like that. So Those sound boring, dude. Yeah, that's, that's why there's only three of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, one thing you said a minute ago as far as uh, a hater could come back and say you're just trying to push T-shirts. You're one of the one the biggest champions I know of, of propping up your friends, supporting, you know, normalize your friends, doing bad shit, supporting them. You're always, and I hate the fucking term hater. We should probably just go ahead and sub substitute it. And because I don't want, I'm not trying to jam anybody else's oh. thing. I'm going to choose a couple words that I would use if we were standing around a campfire, but I won't use now. Just say a fucking dumbass fucking bitch. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, lack of a, for an R word or, or an F word. Or it's something. like I just want a hard R. There's a, yeah, dude, instead of calling a, an F and fucking. Ugh. An FGTRTD. Yeah, <laughs> dude, just, yeah, and those fucking dudes are always going to be there, man, so never, like, if, I understand the difference in shameless plugs and acting like you're whoring out for something, but, man, I've I've got no shame if it comes to somebody I really care about and they're pushing something, if it's something to help their business, I'll always, you can call me whatever the fuck you want, but like I said, I don't, I don't get a check from anybody, so anything I say, something I mean, and I'm trying to help somebody out, it's, yeah. 
So never worry about the people that will come back and say some shit about what you're doing it for. Fuck them. They're fucking bitches anyways. Like, that's not anybody that I'm worried about taking their opinion in the lightest. The fucking slightest. bitches, dude. <laughs> yeah, they just... You're gonna. I'm, I'm gonna drop an R. R I'm gonna drop an R bar before. I'm gonna like an R bar. Come on, baby. Yeah. And I realize that I'm probably <clears throat> wrong a lot of the times, or that I'm an overly critical asshole. Like I get that. Like I can be self reflective and realize that that some yeah. of it is probably me. But but people really- monetizing MC stuff and shitty veteran events and nonprofits just drive me up a fucking wall. And I feel like I should let it go. Well, you're, the, you're. I mean, kind of. You're kind of sandwiched in between those two worlds, right? Between what you do for a living yeah. and what you do on Four for the Road, yeah. and so those are fault, two. I don't get away from it. Those are two very delicate places where you can easily piss off one or the other with words or with perspectives. Uh, are we going to go down that road? No, I'm just saying. Like, I, f- I feel like what I'm getting vets, at is hang on, wait, vets are worse in the motorcycle community. And I know got a lot of vets that that are in clubs and vets that listen to Four for the Road, and I'm sure there's lots of vets that that listen to the Fast Life Garage uh, podcast. Vets are worse than than regular bikers, dude. They, they get get pissed off about the dumbest shit, and then they're fucking taken to the internet with their imaginary pitchforks, and they want to cancel it. I don't care what anybody says. Vet culture is a fucking disease, and but that's a different. Uh, so I mean, that's a broad statement that I have no weight in. <laughs> So I just want everybody to be clear that Jace did not say any of this shit. <laughs> no, 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 Jace drew a line. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one community, <laughs> say yeah. Look, <laughs> Don't, I'm sorry. Hey, this, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this podcast probably won't be as good as the first one, but if there is one community that could stand to get made fun of more, bikers and vets. Like it's those are probably two of the title, maybe swimmers. I don't fucking know. That you, heard, you heard it first, <laughs> first here, folks. Jace Hudson says, "Take your DD two fourteen, <laughs> shove it up your ass." <laughs> oh man! Oh man! You fucking veterans, dead apple. <laughs> but no, I, you know, to to your point, I think those are well. So people understand real quick, just to like put some context behind that. What you do for a living is. Helping vets. Yeah, and I'm a vet. Like, yeah. yes, I love the veteran. I love the veteran community, but there's a lot of flaws in it. Just like the biker community, mm-hmm. there's there's veterans that are here to, quote unquote, monetize the same way that I was just talking about certain you know other MC podcasts or whatever. There's vets that are playing the system that are look at me and they're not giving anything back to the community. That's my biggest pet peeve. Like, if you want to be a part of the community, what are you giving back to it? Yeah. If you're and you don't it doesn't have to be tangible. Like I don't have a fucking skill in the motorcycle world. I can't paint a bike, I can't build a bike, I can barely ride a bike. But you can give good, good vibes, you can be a good human being, you can you be can a show decent up person. Tanks, support people, yeah. And was that a dig? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just Kinda. Kidding. I mean, yeah, I guess the shoe fits. That's over down there. here. That's that's down here, okay? Okay. Um, but yeah, it, you, you can just be a good human being. But if you're constantly taking from the community, no matter what fucking community it is, you should go fuck yourself. Like, first off, fuck your bitch and the clique you claim. Yeah. West side. West side. <laughs> I think you may just have one of those words. You're constantly just seeing the, the vet side of that. But man, there's plenty of that to go around, like in the whole community where it's not that just may be where because of most of what you do, you're just seeing more of it than everybody has that where you see the most of something just because of your, your world. Yeah. But can you, can you insert a couple key song? Over this? People suck all over the, <laughs> the spectrum. But. Yeah, absolutely agree. Like I'm sure it's like, you know, focusing on, the, it's easy to spotlight those two. Cause they're yeah. so, especially with social media. And if that's like what you follow, like it's kind of like living in an echo chamber. Like I work around vets. I am a vet. So many of my friends are vets. And then I ride a motorcycle and love motorcycle, the motorcycle scene. So you're going to kind of be in an echo chamber of the worst and the best of those two communities. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure people could gripe about fucking Outback Steakhouse cooks or swimmers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if we're getting into it yet or not. I'll get into it. Before we get in, at some point, I do want to hear about your recent... I wouldn't even call it like a walkabout, more like a rideabout, where you've done some traveling, some riding, some journaling, but just some different parts. Again, we if we want to package that for later, but you've done some shit in the last six months, three your, months, four months. You know what I mean? F- your face is giving me pause. You know what I'm talking about, right? I, I feel like I do, but I feel like there's a joke coming. No, no, no. 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 Seriously, like, I'm, just, I'm saying at some point I want to. Oh, we're here about supporting each other. Dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to hear, well, I just want to hear more about it. We talked briefly while you were doing That's stuff, it. but. I just want to hear more about that when we get to it as okay. far as what, what it was about, what you've gotten from that. Because a lot of that was solo solo tripping well, and stuff that... Yeah, well, let me ask you this. Like, you know, Four for the Road's going on, what, like, 
three years now, four Something years? Something like that. Well, I mean, so like, like, so for anybody that doesn't know from the first one, there's 11 people that are kind of like, they put together ideas or articles, Drifter writes books, you know, there's a podcast, there's just a lot of different mediums. Um, but I think aside from like three of us, they're all actually in clubs. Uh, myself, like I'm just a fucking nerd. I, you know, I, I came from a club and stuff like that and, and decided to get out. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's 11 people that are putting together creative ideas, but it's not like, or at least I feel like it's not 11 people gate guarding a podcast or a social media platform. It's like, I want other people to give their ideas, whether I agree with them or not. Like, as long as you're not a jackass, like, like tell me what you think about something. Like, let's mm. talk about it. Like, I think that shit's cool. And, and through that, been able to meet so many different people, which kind of ties into the writing and, and stuff like that. It's probably a big yeah. reason why I've chosen not to go back to a club because I, I just, the opportunity to ride so many places. Yeah. And that's, that's probably a good place to take this is like, you know, not to debate clubs versus not clubs, right? Not to really do that, but <clears throat> you've got a good platform for it. Well, I mean, we, we're, we're always trying to encourage people to, to do things on their own accord, yeah, right? Absolutely. And if there's nothing like what you want, then be the creator of what you want to happen, yeah. right? You don't have this, try to start it or find someone that you can go support. You know, same thing with a club, right? Kind of the same similarities. But what I wanted to get that with you is like, what about with you, like being very involved in clubs, where was it then you decided that, that this wasn't like necessarily for you anymore? Not that one's bad or the other, but. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you should, everybody should go check out episode 61 at four for the road, which is I think clubs versus culture where we have this debate. Yeah. Um, and I wanted you on it and, and you know, you were doing great dad stuff, so you couldn't be there. And so, you know, if it's something that we can do here too, I think there's a different venue for it here than, than, than well, I want, I want our audience to hear kind of your side of it. And, and I'm not, it's not a debate. This no, is no, yeah. you telling but I think us what you would, I think when you and I talked offline about it, you had a really great point that, um, you know, when you're talking to a drifter or a Ken or, or Derek or whatever, you know, you're talking to the best representations of motorcycle clubs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's easy to have rose colored glasses when you're talking to those people, like things are going to look rosy and you're going to be excited and you're going to be enticed and you're going to be hyped about it because you're seeing the absolute very best. Yeah. I always encourage people, go see the fucking worst. <laughs> and be like, well, you know, you're obviously not just going to walk up to a club clubhouse or a party or a bike night or whatever and be like, hey, man, who's your shittiest member? Can I fucking meet him? Yeah. Obviously not. But if you hang around long enough, you'll see the bad. And I really encourage people to do that. And for me, like, my my thing was, like, I didn't have bad. I just got to a point, like, I, I left the club to, to move into a bigger club and started running. And it got, you know, what they were doing and the pace they were moving, not, like, People are going to think Sons of Anarchy. No, 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 no. Just the pace that they were moving, the amount of activities they were doing, and and the, you know the amount of nights a week and stuff like that. I have young kids at home, and I was like, look, I love this, I respect it. I'm not, I'm not built for it. Like, I'm not going to be at the level that you're at, and I don't want to be. Yeah. And so it's not on them to change for me. It's on me to change for them. I've mm -hmm. always felt that way. Like, it's not on them to to cater to you. You have to yeah. meet the standard or, or kick rocks. And so you know, if you do it the right way. Everybody that I was with, um, I think, still respects me, <laughs> and we still kick it all the time, so I assume that, that things are all good, um, and, and I think there's a right way to, to make that decision, and that's kind of, from that, I just kind of pivoted to using the relationships I'd built through things like this, through Four for the Road. I've been so fucking fortunate and humble to meet some of the absolute best dudes that are yeah. like, hey, come have a beer, come ride, that it's almost like, for me, I don't, I don't, I don't see the point. I may go back. I may go back one day to, to a club, I and mean, there are certain aspects that I absolutely miss. Uh, being a fucking history nerd, uh, you can't really replicate that. I can still yeah, but do it, but... On that same topic, because I know you're such a... so enthralled by the history, is there... This might be ego talking. Is, is there no want to be somebody creating history? Yeah, within absolutely. A club? That's probably why I would consider going back, to be a part of something that's historical or legendary or yeah. to build on that. Because, I mean, you want everything that you're doing in life to feel like it has purpose. And if you feel like your purpose is this fictitious, fictitious goal that you said of, I'm creating history with these these men, mm -hmm. then that gives you purpose and gives you a gr your group purpose to strive towards that goal. Yeah. And so within a club, it's like, yeah, it's like, I don't want to be in a little mediocre club. I want to make this club the best at whatever, you know, that's yeah. always my mentality is like, I want to be the best at everything I do. Yeah. Not 
not saying that I am or I think I am, but I'm uh, I'm trying to give my best to create the best thing possible. And I think there's so many different rabbit holes to go down with this conversation because that's another one. Like you know, we talked about on the um, on episode 61 was just that was you know kind of what you're t- your I tell people not in a cocky way. Don't be a fucking asshole about it, right? Yeah. But you're bringing value to that club. I mean, I've, seen, I've met so many people and, and talked to so many people that are almost, they want to act, what's that albino guy from the Da Vinci Code? Where he's like, he's wrapping that shit around his leg and he's whipping himself. You I know, know what I'm talking about? about? I don't remember. His yeah, name. yeah, yeah. They want to act like that, like like when they're when they're going through the process of, of hanging around a club or, or, you know, getting to know a club or whatever. Like they got to be like, you know, they got to, no, you're, you're a rock star, right? If you're not a, the club shouldn't bring you around if you're a piece of shit. So obviously you're a fucking rock star. Yeah. So, so know that. So, you know, obviously you humble yourself. You have to, you know, they talk about serving the table. Absolutely. Yeah. But still understand the value that, that you bring. And I don't think that there's enough guys across the board that, that understand you're making them better. They're not making you better. Yeah, but there's you still You should that, already be the fucking there's still, best. I mean, that, that's a, that can be a problem, though, because when you know that you're bringing value sure. to sure, a sure. group of people, right? Yeah. Then... It's almost like it's well. I would say this: it's very hard not to allow that to go to your head. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you look. Absolutely. I'm fucking. I'm. I'm the peaches of cream of this motherfucker. You know what I mean? So, yeah. it's like, yeah, you don't want to have that. I guess that ego coming into things, but it's like you have to walk a line between confidence and ego. Yeah. And I think that's something that we were talking about earlier with like social media, right? Like, especially when it comes to certain topics, probably the bike world, club world, probably other other items and things like that. Yeah. If you say one thing, you make a post about something on social media. You getting ready? He's ready to talk, dude. <laughs> yeah, right, hey, wait, wait, let me finish this thought. So on social media, if you make a post about something, whatever the fucking thing is your thought, you could be like, man, I just had some great dinner rolls at, Out- at um, Golden Corral. Somebody would be like, why do you fucking hate Outback rolls? You know, <laughs> like, or Outback bread. You're like, dude, what? Yeah. Like, I'm not even talking. And that's the thing with social media, too. So when you say, like, you know, you have to have confidence in who you are as a person, then somebody, on, you know, on a four for the road post would be like, oh, so you're just an egotistical asshole? You're like, no, I'm like, fuck, never yeah, mind. Those, those comments exist, but yeah. honestly, like, the, the comments that are great versus the comments are bad, it's easier just to like the ones that are good and like the ones that are bad yeah. and treat them all the same and don't fucking, <laughs> I don't. I don't think social media is a great place to have a conversation. It's a great place to be inspired. And if people start using social media for inspiration, then it's like, oh, this I'm not interested in this. Then I have no point of saying anything to do with this, right? But this dude just did something badass. Whether he painted a bike or built a bike or rode somewhere or did yeah. something cool, I'm like, that's cool. I feel it. I'm going to tell him. Yeah. If this guy did something that's douchey as hell – I'm not going to go out of my way to say, hey, look, that was douchey. Like, what do you do when you're done with that? Like, when you're done making a post or a comment telling somebody they nah, suck? I say, look, like, I just told that dude he's a douche. Look. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you do after look. that? You're like, oh, man, I totally told that guy that he forgot to talk about Outback bread. What a fucking <laughs> asshole. Those are the same dudes that, are that, as you said, feel like they're bringing something to a club. It just, sorry, there's level. You know what? If you're in one of these, and no disrespect to veteran clubs, obviously, but... Damn, we're getting if real. You're, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. If you're one of one of these little clubs, like I don't even know you exist. If you if your whole fucking club explodes, if it doesn't make the news, do I even know? Right? Like yeah. if, if you fucking disintegrated into nothing. If a club falls down in the woods, yeah, like, like, <laughs> I don't care. Like the little like I'm glad you guys exist. I'm glad you're finding your fucking journey. Do what you got to do. But I'm not worried about you, honestly, in the comments or anything else. And so just to get past that, my thing was you're in something as far as being historic and whatever, you obviously, you're in something, an unfulfilling, you needed something more. Dude, you're this for the road. So you're in something with 11 people. I don't even know how far apart that is over the country. But you guys are doing something better. In a world of everybody can wear matching fucking vests and you can have fucking the same patches and you can go do your fucking Do they match their Dixon flannels too well, under just, their yes, vests? Exactly. We have Dixon flannel uh, days at Four for the Road. Yes. So. <laughs> well, I'm just saying in, in a world full of that where that's never going to dry up, you're always, as long as you've got a Harley dealership and a fucking club ch- and a, a hog chapter, you're never going to get rid of those dudes. Do we all agree with that, right? The yeah. Panther Creek dudes and whatever the fuck. Like, you're, <laughs> just the, know that Hopefully is. we never get rid of them. <clears throat> yeah, again, I'm not, I'm not hating on those dudes. I'm just saying, they're always going to be there. You've graduated, Dave. You don't need, like, sorry, you're just better than that. It I don't even know. It is, it is. So what I'm talking about is, you're, uh, 
So you're in this thing, this for the road. You got eleven different dudes in it, dude. You're, and y'all are on some multi level <clears throat> shit. Y'all are riding. You're podcasting. You're traveling. You're hanging out. You're you're on some man shit. Or y'all, you, you know, I can only imagine the fucking powwows. If y'all, I'm hoping y'all get together. I hope. Yeah, we, I hope we, you yeah. haven't done a hey, have a camp out, come hang out with us. I hope y'all are doing something. It's just y'all, and y'all are fucking, and it's no invite, no social media, like. Whatever, like well, certain that, certain take, guys in there that have clubs they can't leave the state. <laughs> but I, I guess that would be my thing is I don't even know how far apart you guys all are. But that is they're some everywhere. like you're on some you're on some next level shit with if you've got a, a, a group of eleven guys I assume there's some sort of chat or there's something some guys sell t-shirts and some dudes do this and some guys are in or in you know they're like your your job like you're 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 about your job I've seen the awards you get like some people about work and family. But the fact that y'all have this thing that you come together about, man, that's, to me, that's the most enticing shit. And that's what all this is about on top of everything, on top of you leave everything else. But y'all have a point where, like I said, you, all these aspects you're doing, you have a point to, to fucking, uh, I hate to say, uh, fucking preach and what's the testimony and all that bullshit. What's the word the Christians use? Amen. Sorry, gospel. Gospel. Yeah. Okay. It's just the. But you do. You have a you have a way to, meet, to to reach people and show stuff other than commenting and other yeah. than doing these little things. I mean, that's dude. That's to me. That's winning the lottery. That's the and same shit I feel we have. And it's, I guess, I would love to see more of that and hear more about that than these fucking dickheads. That honestly, as you're talking, I'm going these fucking. You're talking, and in my head, I'm going these fucking dickheads. Who's talking about don't fucking matter? Like, when's he gonna realize about this? Like. And I'm not talking about your friends. I'm just talking about there's a lot of shit that seems like below you. Where I'm like, you're worried about lesser shit when Dave, dude, you're doing it. You're doing it up, my man. I don't necessarily worried about it, but just cognizant of it. Like, because yeah. again, I, you, you want, I, I respect so many different levels of it. So the guys that are in mom and pop clubs, the guys that are in big, you know, national. Those guys don't work out anyways. You give, you, seriously. <laughs> but sort of, but I appreciate how those guys aren't in it anyways. But I appreciate what they're, what they're doing and I appreciate what they're, what they're looking for. And so that's kind of like what we talked about, um, you know, is, is do you need to be in a club? And I think, like you said earlier, everybody has to make that decision for themselves. Yeah. If you decide that you absolutely can't, breathe live whatever like this is just your your cat's meow that you want to be in this club because you found your home that's awesome do that and do it to the best of your abilities yeah but i think that that i tried to lately turn a spotlight on the fact that there's things ex that exist that can replicate that feeling without joining a club because i think sometimes people they don't have what you have, we'll use you as an example, right? So they're like, well, I'm going to replicate it through joining a club. And then, number one, they're letting the club down eventually, and they're letting themselves down eventually. Well, what about this? Like, what about the fact that, like, when you get a bike, let's just say that hypothetically you bought your first bike in 2015, started riding, you have Sons of Anarchy culture in one ear, you got Instagram culture in another ear, you got... You got the guys at the Harley dealership that doesn't look like anything you're interested in, but, you know, you want the bike... I don't. I think that like, I didn't figure out what I wanted out of motorcycles till I had time behind motorcycles trying different shit. Yeah. You know. Yes, I was in clubs, or a club, and I experienced that. And there was things about it that I loved, but then there was things about it that I I had a hard time with. You know what I mean? I'm a very loyal person. You know what I mean? So it's like, my demeanor as a man and other guys that. You know, we're not all built the same. Does that make sense? You yeah. know what I mean? So um, when 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 I was in a club, I'm like, we all signed up for this shit. So where the fuck are you? You know what I mean? Sure. Now I'm more like, dude, where the fuck you guys at? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, guys. You know, I'm like trying to be more motivating, you know. But in the club, I was like, uh-uh, dude. You signed up for this shit. Where the fuck are you at? Oh, man, I got a softball game. Then go fucking be in a softball club, bitch. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm that way. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not easy to be around sometimes in that world. But you know what I mean? Yeah, I get like it. I expect. You know, I don't know. And, and if that works for people, then they should do that. If you want to have a group of friends that you have accountability to, and you know, there's certain rules, regulations, requirements, things like that, like you were just talking about, that you have to be willing to accept and adhere to if you join a mm -hmm. motorcycle club. And if you have a group of friends some of those things go away. 
I think that that it's possible to have a connection with a friend group mm-hmm. without putting on patches and and to still have the same level of commitment to it. And at yeah. that point, I mean, you're really you're doing it for for free will, which is, uh, you know, an argument I made on the podcast. What's stronger than doing something of your own free will? There's not a requirement because you guys share a patch. There's not a requirement because you're paying dues or there's a mandatory or there's a fine or a black eye or whatever. Like you're doing this for your brother, for your friend, for your family, just because you want to. Yeah. And that's amazing. And if you have that, then maybe you don't need a club. And if you don't have that, maybe a club can give it to you. But you should, the guys are rushing into it because they see on Instagram that they can fucking get it eyeballs tattooed on their eyeballs and they can give middle fingers to the fucking camera and that just becomes their whole personality the very best representations that i've ever been around and that i think any of us have ever been around for the club community they don't act like that yeah they can take a picture with a smile they can shake a hand they can not be a douchebag at bike night those are the best fucking representations and emulate them a lot of those weight i think a lot of that represent or i don't know there's a correlation in weighing your options as mm-hmm. far as the first. Are you the eighth grader that uh, ended up marrying the tenth grader that started fucking you? And Wait, what? Guy, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is this the first person that sniffed your fucking ass when you when you rolled off the lot in a bike with a bike? And yeah, the first person that gave you attention. Yeah, yeah is yeah, that yeah. the first person that gave you attention, and that's who you went home with? And all of a sudden, like, oh, ten years later, this sucks. Ugh. Or did you fucking wait? Did you hold out for a little bit? And or did you try something but then not marry it? And Whoa. just be be willing to fucking reevaluate your reevaluate your that's a lot of things, dude. Ego gets caught up in this lot where dudes can't accept the fact that I'm not the same dude I was then versus now versus down the road. And I think you have to fucking you have to add in that wiggle room for you're gonna change a little bit. Life's gonna change about a little bit. You may have a kid. It doesn't mean you don't want to ride anymore. It doesn't mean I don't want to hang out with these motherfuckers every chance I get. But fuck, dude, I got this little fucking nitwit at home and this chick that's <laughs> fucking up my ass. I got to spend a certain amount of time here doing this yeah. to make sure this kid doesn't grow up thinking he's a fucking chick. You and, know what and I mean? The, like, the you very best, do whatever yeah. the fuck you got to do. There <laughs> we go. There's the Jesus. demonetized fucking retards coming next, oh, boys. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and, and there's, like I said, I get... The very best representations that you should try to emulate, no matter what you do, I don't care if it's mom and pop or you're going to the absolute top of clubs, find the dudes that balance what you're talking about, that can balance club dedication, family dedication, being a good parent, being a good husband, being a hard worker, all that stuff. There's guys out there that do it amazing. Emulate that and take it wherever the fuck you're going. And but that they, makes the best, that makes a good friend. Absolutely. And that's what you know what I mean? If you don't think you can do that in a club, which is where I landed, I didn't feel like I could live up to that where I was going club wise. So I said, I can't do it. I'm out. Have the, I don't even know. It's not, it's not integrity, but um, you know, just the, the wherewithal, the, the, the self identity or whatever to, to be able to say, look, this is what you require. This is why you guys are amazing. I'm just not at that level right now. So I, I, it's not for me. Well, I think I might've said it on the podcast we did with you guys, but I come, I'm speaking from a place where we have millions of people, right? We live in Dallas, Fort Worth. It's a huge metropolitan area. Huge. We have a lot of opportunities, a lot of people that ride. Uh, if this dude's a douche, there's 40 other dudes on Dinah's over there. We can go try to see if <laughs> any of them are cool, right? Um, but for the people out there that might live in, you know, a, a more rural part of the country or they just, you know, it's a very small town, the club might be the most appealing thing for them. But to kind of also feed into what you were talking about, and I think we're both saying, is that, like, if they start riding and traveling and get an understanding of what it is to be a motorcyclist or a biker, whatever you want to say, if they even when they come back to do the club thing, they're still going to be a better member. They're more experienced on the road. They're more understanding of what it's like to ride bikes. They've seen other cultures. They're not just, like, uh, pigeonholed in this one town and this one vibe, this one mentality, yeah. which can also be the – it could be the uh, the wall that keeps clubs from ever really growing and becoming anything bigger because they everything works and it's in this small little confined area, you yeah. know. But the um, I don't know. I just I think that if everybody, whether they want to go down the, the path of clubs or they want to just uh, you know cash in all the opportunities to hang out with all the people at campouts and bike events across the country, either way they're doing it, you're going to be better at either one 
by riding and traveling more and yeah. getting on your bike and understanding it. The conversations will be more about on the road, on the bike, rather than like, yeah, I just got the new Bassani exhaust and uh, <laughs> Ryan Hart. So Ryan yeah, Hart. it's like it's you know what I mean. Like if, if the products we were talking about this last night, if it, if the products that you buy for your bike make up who you are as a biker, then you're not a fucking biker. You're 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 just funding motorcycles for the rest of us. Oh, what the fuck, Jace? This is my girl brain kicking in. Ah, uh, you don't say that right now. There's a bunch of girls who got hella offended right now. They don't uh, listen. To you, don't fucking say, trust <laughs> you don't fucking say that. How fucking how fucking dare you? This fucking asshole. <laughs> fucking ugly dude. Fuck you. <laughs> Fucking parts don't make me. Uh. So I think that's better than, than what we said. So like, fucking back. red hat. <laughs> Fuck your red hat. <laughs> nice red hat before Labor Day, asshole. Uh. So sort of backtracking to the one about having confidence in what you bring to the table. I think a better way to put that now after talking is just understand the concept of just being a good human being. Be a good yeah. person. Like you don't have to be a bitch. You don't have to be an asshole. Like, you can just be a good person. They yeah. just, it's not weakness. And, and have that confidence that you're a legit, good, vibe dude. And, and people are going to be attracted to that. And you're going to yeah. add value to an organization no matter what you choose to do. For sure. I agree with that. I think, yeah, like I said, I think that there's club stuff. I mean, there's there's people that go that that route and they're just fucking G's at it. They're badass. And they just, they wear it well. And they're like, man, that's inspiring. But, I mean, I don't know what I'm inspired by. But maybe it's just a bunch of cool motherfuckers doing cool shit. No. But... I like it, but at the same time, you know, it's it's not for everybody. It's not for me. You know, I don't know that I want to ever be back in a place of that. Uh, I don't really know where I was going with that, but you know. so so for me, it's like again, you got any more notes over there? Yeah, so I was just gonna say like, and I'm not picking on them. I know you know it's fun. I do it sometimes too. It's fun to do sometimes. You know, the, the hard guy pose, the flipping off the camera. But there's a difference between that. No, it's totally cool. Y'all should keep doing it. <laughs> well, it's on, totally hang on, hang on. awesome. There's a difference between doing it and it being your entire personality. Persona, yeah. And, and there's there's so many that that you know every time the camera's on them, the Instagram. Why are you sticking up for these dudes, dude? I was t- I told them before you got here. I was like, I just listened to their last uh, club versus culture. I was yeah. like, we converted him. I was like, Dave's on our side. He's like, I am, but club. I'm just, okay. But and now I, you're I, going. I was no. I was gonna take the club <laughs> side just to fuck with you when you got on here, and you went full club, bro. No, 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 no. Don't I still? It's <laughs> still fucking. It's it's still gays aids. As no, it's not. <laughs> Nobody said it was ever gay as hate. No, it, to, to make that, to make that tough dude your whole persona, that's fucking oh, yeah, like, that don't sucks. do that. But, you know, I get There's dudes that don't have clubs that do that. <laughs> you got dudes that bike night that do that. You got to try to take a fun, <laughs> take a fun picture of bike Hey, dude, what a great night. Let's all take a picture. You got three guys in the back just... <laughs> Come on, dude. Yeah, absolutely. The Harley. Can't put this on my fridge. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Dude, the Harley I'm scene. Send this to my grandma. The Harley, the Harley scene brings them out and and get harder, dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so for me, like again, I'm still in love with with certain aspects of club life. And and mm-hmm. it's like today, today we posted a story on on Four for the Road, uh, the Pasadena Motorcycle com- um, Club, which is from Pasadena, California, and was founded in 1903. It's the third oldest or second oldest motorcycle club in the world or in the U.S. They posted at 1910, their president was pulled over uh, in Pasadena, I forget the name of the road, for going 27 miles an hour. And it was published in the newspaper, the Pasadena Police Report in 1910 about this ticket that he got. And I love that story. And so I, I, I reposted it and then I commented, you know, a few years ago, I tried to like look through old archives and see what I could find for the oldest like motorcycle club dust up. And I found one from 1908 that was the Kansas City Motorcycle Club. And there's this guy who was a bike builder. Like, uh, God, what was the name of the bike? Well, his name was O.J. Plummer, and I can't remember what the name of the bike was. Black was dude? It? No. Okay. <laughs> I was just asking. He said O.J. It's a legitimate question. He's a plumber. Yeah, dude. He's a plumber. <laughs> pull that February <laughs> black and <laughs> shit on me. That bike's till 1940, dude. <laughs> Oh, when did they integrate bikes? I've <laughs> oh, 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 whoa, whoa, take it easy. <laughs> don't refer to him as that, man. Come on. It's Midwest <laughs> Valley's over here. It's February. It's February, y'all. Can I can I finish the story? You fucking degenerates. So so so, so old OJ here. Old right? OJ. <laughs> him and the Kansas City Motorcycle Club are going on a fucking run on a Sunday and they're 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 goosing their bikes and they're being assholes and they're riding down the road and they scared Amish family in a horse and a buggy or maybe it was just a regular family. I don't know. It was 1908. 
<laughs> but they have a horse and a buggy. The horse flips out. The buggy goes everywhere. People spill out, and, and people are mad. So the bikers go on the run. They do whatever they're doing. And the newspaper's talking about when they turn around and they come back at night, like the townspeople and the sheriff are, like, waiting. With, like, they got the road blocked off to come back into town. They got, like, pitchforks and, and all that kind of stuff, and they want to they string these bikers up. Uh, and, and they got arrested, and they got Nooses. big fines and stuff like that. <laughs> but so that's the kind of shit that that – I love it. I don't want to be in your picture. If you want to flip middle fingers every time we take a picture, I don't want to do that. I want to be a part of the scene that that's doing what we can to make sure those stories stay alive. And yes, there's a, there's a time, a place, and a need for the hard-ass stuff. I get it. But I want more. <laughs> they got what they had coming to them, huh? <laughs> I, I want more stories about the guy going 27 miles an hour getting a fucking yeah, ticket. Yeah, of course. Those that's, are, that's good history stories. Yeah. You ain't living in history, my man. You're making it. That's what I was trying to say earlier. <laughs> but then the guys, um, so we did a podcast with the Pasadena Motorcycle Club. And so some of the guys were talking about is like a tradition. Um, the road. Did they right know there. what was going on? So the original guys? Miles no, but over they, the speed limit now? <laughs> so that same road. He's like, dude, we fucking tear it up after Monday. I don't know. I'll probably dry snitching. But he's like, you know. Is it the original guys? <laughs> They're like, what, are, what is this? The original from 1908? Yeah. They don't know what a microphone is. They're like, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? OJ Plummer. It's me, OJ Plummer. OJ? It's me, OJ Plummer. You thought this was going to be serious, dude? My bad. <laughs> so I'll take that back to him and ask him if it's the original guys from, no, from, from, from 1908. I'll, I'll, I'll find out. I watch too much sketch comedy. Sorry. So you said we did a podcast with them. I was like, I just pictured a bunch of old guys with glasses and looking like Junior Soprano, <laughs> confused by the microphone and the lights. What? Mm. <laughs> Motorcycles. Oh, yeah. What's on your notes, man? Um, they look important. Well, you have numbers on them, too. I did. Yeah. Let's see. Did I shout out the homies yet? I don't know. Oh, shit, it was all homies on there. It's like a fucking. <laughs> we are doing this podcast in February, aren't we? <laughs> shout out sections at the <laughs> end. Hold on. <laughs> That's it. If, if they ever shout change. Shout out Cubone. <laughs> speaking of. <laughs> speaking of. Marcus, thanks for bringing up my shift the other night. Appreciate you, brother. Free my homie. Uh... <laughs> hey, oh, dude, dude. Cole needs to take that fucking. <laughs> shit emoji and toilet emoji off of there. He's just talking shit. Literally. Well, but his last name Shetluck. He's hieroglyphing <laughs> it. He's hieroglyphing the shit. Um, we can oh, always but do it's that story. If you can do it, we can always do that story. I, I, if they ever change the rules, though, one last thing on, on the club thing, if they ever change the rules... I'm trying to join out. Black guys are taking over. I'm trying like to join ho- out. Are you taking like hockey? I'm, tra- I'm trying <laughs> to join out. Yeah, like black, guys black club. Own that yeah. Sport. yeah, yeah. If they ever recruit, a, if they're ever looking for a token white dude, I'm available. I'll yeah, I remember when I up. used to go when I, I used remember, to be in the I club world. We were heavily band. around the. Uh, <laughs> Sing it again, brother Kyle. <laughs> uh, we used to go to a lot of the black, uh, you know, club parties. Yeah. The best fucking the parties The best. Ever. White people take note right now. Yeah. Your parties suck compared to them. <laughs> Dude, you're going to like blackout parties where it's like everything blacked out and white. Like they have themes and shit like. White you, motorcycle clubs ain't doing no, theme parties. Like some tweaker at the end of the bar, like trying to tell you a story you <laughs> don't give a cameras. shit about. <laughs> it's much, white guys, there's like you know, like two chicks in there, and they're married to the club dudes, or, yeah. or there's some fuck, or if they're not, it's some busted ass stripper. No, there's just hanging lines of dudes. You're like starting with the prospect. Hi, my name's fucking Jace. I ride the motorcycle. I'm a fucking president. Hi, my name's Jace. I ride the motorcycle. I'm a fucking president. Hi, my name's Jace. Do you know, Down the fucking line of I w- sh- fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I went to, um, can, can you say a black club party? Like, is that correct? I don't. Uh, it's minority club party. To be correct. <laughs> they have like entrance themes and shit like that. I was like, dude, I want in. It's I like want in. What do I got to do? WWE. Wait, what out. Do I, I was like, dude, I'm going to come back. <laughs> I'm going to go just fly out. <laughs> and the president <laughs> of the. I was like, I'm a nobody. But <laughs> I want to go get one of those Western duster vests and come out like Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's the breaking glass. <laughs> and they're all looking at this singular white guy just coming the down the entrance. The problem is that like, that shit is fun. Yeah. And it's fun within the world of us. But if someone was videoing that shit and putting it online, everybody would be making fun of us. Look at these fucking dudes that think this shit's serious. Cause come out to out one. Out of context, that, 100%. You know what I mean? You're wrong. They're, they're wrong. If you say that, you got to come out to one. They're fun as fuck. Yeah. I've, I have been to Strokers where I forget what was – something was going on in Dallas, and they had – it was like a big club, black club thing, and a bunch of them rolled up to Strokers. And, yeah, you're right. I had, like, you know, a great time for a couple of hours talking to them and just kind of chop, chopping it up. That's a cool thing, right? 
And uh, yeah, I got, I got a. Uh, hey, fellas. <laughs> hey, so guys. I see you're also listening to Mystical. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was also, I, I walked up trying to. He make really is genuine, like, huh? What's up, y'all? Genius. <laughs> 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 Hey, you go to, like we now I got huh? soul sisters. <laughs> <laughs> like walking up to the DJ booth. Do you have any hot boys? I'm looking for the, <laughs> looking for the hot boys. Are there any hot boys in the house? <laughs> but yeah, and that that all circles back to the. I mean, it's it's awesome that we joke and make fun about every. But I think that just all circles back to the fact that if you ride motorcycles, there's a level of I can fuck with you. I can fuck with you if we. But guess what? I will. I'm fiercely, like you said, uh, somebody recording video making fun of all of us. I don't care who you are. If I'm out somewhere public, like I'm, if there's a guy on two wheels at all, like I'm, I'm your friend. I'm, if some something yeah. happens, I'm, I'm your brother in that sense. You know what I mean? I've got your back. And I think that trans. That's the beautiful thing about motorcycles. Every you know, that never gets lost. Oh, turn off your back, people. Blah, blah. Dude, they're also the kind of people that'll punch another motherfucker in the face for you if yeah. it comes down to it. If if they feel like you're outnumbered, and Damn. I mean, that's. That's the beauty of the ro- motorcycle you, riding community. And I think in a world that's so pronouns and I'm offended by this and you just fucking made me upset by what you said by that, I think it is kind of a microcosm of the kind of people that still can take a fucking joke, yeah. can be the butt of a joke, can realize, oh, dude, you just laughed at me a little bit. All right, I got you. I got you. I'm not going to, you know, wig out like. I'm gonna go get my trunk. Yeah, we're the. It's <laughs> Pop a trunk on his ass. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe I'm being naive on that, but I, yeah. I still like to think that the when you say the motorcycle community is the best, you know, the best of everybody, I think that trickles down to everything. That's not just, oh, if you broke down, we'll help you change your tire or we'll give you money for gas. It means we can all hang out any fucking time. We've all got each other's back and we can have and, a good time. And I know, you know, not to beat a dead horse, I feel like. I don't know, did I say whores or horse? It sounded like, it sounded like horse. Like horse. <laughs> <laughs> we we can fucking beat a dead whore. Uh, not to beat a dead horse. Like, I know, you know, Jace talks about this a lot on, on, the, different, with <laughs> on the different podcasts, but like. Depends on how dead. <laughs> that's the stuff that that riding somewhere to a camp out, to a Sturgis, to a Daytona, to uh, a club style get up or whatever can give you. Um, that's what I get. Um, from the podcast, and I don't think it's just because there's 11 of us on a page. Like Anybody can, if you wrote us and we're like, I want to come on your podcast, we'd probably put you on there. Um, or you can certainly write something, you know. And, and so building that community and that network is just some of the coolest shit to me. Because, again, you get to, like, being in here, art. I had something where I said, like, you know, I forget what I wrote, but but art is, the motorcycle community, I feel like, brings art together <clears throat> in so many different mediums. Like, riding is an art. Mm-hmm. Traveling is an art. The places you go has art. The photography that you do is art. The painting, the bike building, the the the, the events that are put on. Like, there's art in all of it. And, and so, you know, you can broaden your spectrum, you get your horizons, whatever. You know, you can, you can network with different people. You can take advantage of and really enrich yourself and what you're getting back. Mm-hmm. Motorcycling is expensive, or can be. And what are you getting back from it? Well, if you look at art... That's what, like I love watching what you do. I like what you do with photography. I love that probably more than than anything else that you do or that other people do. Um, Josh from Mercenary, he, I love the photography yeah. he does because it's like you can make an awesome bike and, and and I respect the hell out of that. But if you take a picture, you're capturing a story that people are going to look at 10, 20, 50, 60 years from now. They're not going to know what Jaden was laughing about, but you're going to see the smile on his face and that's yeah. going to make them feel some kind of way. I, that, so that's to me is the, the coolest part about it. But motorcycling in general, there's just so many different avenues of art. I think that's a genius point, and I'll take it down even another another level dumber and poorer. Is uh, <laughs> even if you like, as far as not capturing all that, you talk about mo- motorcycle motorcycling being art. If you've ever ridden somewhere, even halfway cool with your friends, and just the little things, obviously the stuff that you know the. The he's done some lately. Some of these, the great, some of that's the great art, brother. That is art. That's, that's some of the great art, art brother. Your shit's Wait, all over my point. Can I have it for a minute? But that's I'm saying, art. as far as that's like, can I touch it, can yeah, I touch it? Touch it. <laughs> Look. You're riding like we're coming through Coachella, yeah, and sometimes <laughs> it's looking over with the sun at the a right certain here. angle, right here, and you're looking at a <laughs> front end with like dual <laughs> disc and just seeing the shadows yeah. and the fucking the way the the. There's art and everything, and yes, you're right. When it, especially with oh, like, hey, look at that package, bro, dude. Yeah, the pack. But seriously, this is fucking art. Like, Kyle, call me if you don't mind, real quick. 
If you got your phone handy, I'll show you art. Like, it seems hand. goofy, but that's you art. You think I don't know this be, picture? That's going to be fun as fuck to look at in 20 years. That's not art. That's art. <laughs> two fucking idiots in Sturgis. The, years ago. Then, then name it two idiots in Sturgis and look back on it in 20 years. That moment no. right there, I remember exactly where we were, See? what we were doing. That was at the uh, Knuckle. He's right. Like, that's... <laughs> this guy calls me, which is in often. That's what pops up. That's like Bing Bong. That's like the picture I have of you. Um, that's the picture I have of you at, at House of Harley for for the industry party. Yeah. Um, what's up, Alex? What's up, Alex? Ian, how's it going? Good to see you guys. But with your balls out, and allegedly, then, allegedly. No, they were, they, were, they were your balls. You were with us that day. Remember? Oh that? yeah, oh yeah. And that was first day that's of COVID. Such a sick. Picture. The when first our day? city shut down. We all went down to Deep Ellum and we shot photos. Did some full influencers in the wild. Oh that's that's Trent boy. He's got a gun in his hand, if you can't tell. Yeah, he got his gun. <laughs> no, we got a gun in his hand. We were abiding. <laughs> we were wearing. We were abiding by masks before they told us to, because that shit was fucking straight punk rock at the time. <laughs> no face, and no then case. They said, "Hey, you can't do it anymore. Or you have to wear a mask." We're like, "Fuck y'all." I <laughs> I pulled out my gun at, at the after party. Uh, I won't say which bar. <laughs> Brandon from Mercy's like, "What the fuck are you doing? Is that what we do in Wisconsin?" I was like, "Yeah, it's cool, bro. Just <laughs> pull your gun out. It's cool." But any so so there we are in, the, in allegedly in the House of Harley lobby, and you pull your balls out. They're nice balls, but then They're the next day, crazy. I <laughs> no, I, I reeled it. Hang on. The next day, I reeled it next to that picture from from I think it was a, probably from uh, Danny Lawrence picture of when he was with the outlaws and there's a guy on a run and he's got his he's got a, a raccoon tail like like stuck on his ass and he's showing the guys his balls like he's doing almost the exact same pose and i was like the more things change the more they stay the same like it's goofy and people are like oh that's funny or stupid or whatever but but it, it's a it's a snapshot in time Dang. that people are going to look back at i like that and i probably shouldn't even say this but just so for the record i didn't come out of the bathroom going like it's time. He kind of came did. out of the bathroom completely <laughs> unaware, like one of 18 bathroom trips. And all of a sudden I came out and it was just, I walk out, you walk out of that little hallway and it's, everybody's going balls, balls, <laughs> balls. Yeah. I was like, no, no guys. No, <laughs> balls, <laughs> balls, <laughs> balls. <laughs> all right. If you, all right. If you insist. And I'm a give, fucking, them, give them what they want. <laughs> I'm a slut for attention. So it took like one time. I was like, no one like, nah. Okay. Okay. And we did it. But, yeah, it wasn't unsolicited. I, there was a little bit of a uh, crowd uh, request He pushed back a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, push his nuts back. I don't know. Oh, but <laughs> push, push that butt back. That move yeah. earlier, we Bulldog was motherfuckers. But, yes, like I said, you don't even have to have all that. Sometimes no. just riding and being yep. with your yeah. dudes and you see art and everything. And sometimes, dude, art maybe is laughing at a, at a fart joke or whatever the fuck it is at a gas station or just seeing something off the beaten path where you take a little – I don't know. We've seen it a million times, and maybe you should have got a picture. Of it. Maybe you got a picture of it. And guess what? When you look at it later, you go to post it. Eh, it's not that good. I got a million of those. You and yeah. me. If you got those, you're you are my brother. You see things, and then you look at it, you're like, "Fuck, dude! I didn't capture that the way maybe somebody else I know that captures shit good does." So yeah. I'm a little insecure. I'm not going to post it. But dude, if you got that, if you appreciate it, if you accept it when it happens, I'm with you. You are my fucking guy. Like, and I think that's. That's the that's the best thing about bikes. Yeah, that's the best thing about traveling, right? Is it not? Yeah, I mean traveling for sure. I mean, like you you know the camera, the motorcycle, and traveling are the best things because. And I've talked about a lot on this podcast over the years. Like I, I've struggled with wanting to do video because I love the concept of capturing these moments mm -hmm. as simple as they are, mm -hmm. and then just remembering what you can remember about it. It's like a challenge. It's like a, doing a puzzle. Yeah. Seeing this image and then connecting the dots in your mind of of when you were there, what it was like. Maybe you can relive kind of like the whole, your whole being at that moment, right? Yeah. I enjoy that about photography, but that's that's the thing about having a picture in your hand. Yeah. My man Trent, right? Versus... It's not the same. Yeah. And, and you, you know, know, I love what we were talking last night, I think, uh, about Tulane Life. Mm -hmm. I love what they do with the videos and the places they go. That's really, I think I've morphed into trying to do more of that style of writing. And so I love watching their videos to get ideas. But there's a difference in watching the video and getting excited about a place versus the emotion that's captured in a still frame picture. Yeah. Videos are great. I think a picture is just, it has a better story. When you're talking purely about art, emotion, feeling... I don't think you can replicate what a picture gives you with I mean, video or any other medium. Sometimes people can do it with video, but for the 
for them to do it as well, you would need a high production thing. It would need to be like some Hollywood type shit. You know what I mean? Is Every it, once in a while, somebody does yeah. it with, with within the YouTube community. Um, Full Throttle Hog has done a couple of good videos. It's kind of like captured some of that emotion, in my opinion. But, it, you know, it, it's just not... I don't know, man. It's just a weird place. Yeah, and again, I'm not knocking the video aspect of it. Like I said, I love the stuff that, that guys are doing with video too. But just my personal pref- favorite part is the photography aspect of it. I think that shit is just cool. But again, it just ties into the – there's so many different avenues that we can call art that have to do with motorcycling. Yeah. And I don't want that shit – I wish that shit was more talked about. Instead of how drunk we can get or, or what party we're going to or, or we're going to fucking be a clout chaser or what brand shirt we got. I know I got a fucking Odin hoodie on. I get it. But to, to – They're not even from America, bro. They're like right on the line. It's basically Montana – Born with the dots. No, uh, you know, I just I wish that we talked more about that. And it's not like it's it's yeah. not a fault. Of them. It's not like oh, the motorcycle community is tight. No, it's just my preference. Like I think that that shit is is dope, and that we should give a bigger stage to that scene end. Well, there's this there's this great Indian Larry quote that um, I can't even fucking begin to try to regurgitate. Um, <laughs> but basically, <laughs> but basically, uh, it went. He he was saying something. I think that the Scott Takes podcast that it's about to release next week that I did while I was in Iowa, he had talked about this, and I'm going to do a shit job trying to regurgitate it. But Indian Larry said something about, like, when you build a bike, you 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 build a bike with every aspect of all elements of Earth, right? From the leather, which is the, the human, the cow, the whatever, to the the metal, to the paint, which is chemical, the metal, which is, like, physical and all these different things, they come together to create like a, a, a rolling work of art. Yeah. And then the art of the life that you create while being a part of it, riding the bike, enjoying it, the experiences. There's something kind of poetic to that. I, I need to, uh, I did I did zero justice to that quote. But I, yeah, I mean, but just trying the point, to describe yeah. the quote basically is what I just tried to do. But um, it's, it's one of those things, like there's a lot of art in motorcycles. That's why you see a lot of photography in the world. You see a lot of people coming into this like space because it lends itself to be interesting. But the other thing kind of to some points that have been kind of thrown across the table a couple of times tonight, um, motorcycling, uh, is expensive, Mm -hmm. but if you're, if you're really living a real life on motorcycles, it's not about the money you spent because you feel like you would spend more to have this. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And and I'm not, I would never knock somebody that spends money on motors. If you got the money, spend the money. If that bring, like you said, if that brings you joy, then that's a hundred percent what you should do. Yeah. But again, with anything, don't make it your whole well, some personality. People, some people, like you said about the parts, don't make. Some it people have a hundred. Somebody have a hundred. Some people have a hundred grand to spend on a bike, mm-hmm. but they don't have a hundred grand worth of free time to go ride it. Yeah. Right. And those those people are as important to the industry. A hundred percent. As much as the guy that does have a hundred thousand dollars worth of of time off Mm -hmm. to go ride it, because those guys help create, they do a lot for the industry. They get a lot of shit because people are like, "Oh, you don't even ride that much." No, no, no. but why are we worried about it? Exactly because Mm -hmm. it fucks with uh, their their the it fucks with the person saying it's ego. It fucks with their idea of who they are, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people need confirmation of like, "Oh, why aren't you wearing your Dixon, man? Oh, I'm not in Dixon anymore." Fuck, why not? <laughs> What's wrong with Dixon, bro? Yeah. Like, they're mad. Like, because you're fucking with who they thought they were. Because they attach themselves to all these, like, brands and these these visions they see of themselves through social media that, like, they can't just be a fucking hoodie guy with no logos on it. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like a weird thing sometimes that happens when you get, when people, like, they bought everything hook, line, and sinker. This is who they are. This is who I am. Yeah. I'm a diner bro, club style boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you spent all the money, but you didn't get the experience. Yeah. It's something you said, the uh, y'all's trip to the Keys. You got these people that pay for these photog- that pay for these photographs and these, these huge spreads. They come down there. They love traveling down there. And they want to take this shit home. They want to be able to, in New Jersey or wherever the fuck they yeah. live, they want to have this picture of this thing that takes them back when they see it to, I'm Key in the with, Keys. Yeah. So... You want to put you want to throw money at it essentially. You could move, and I I know that this is blurring a lot of shit. You could move there, you could live there, but fuck no, you just want to take a piece of it home with you. It's the same kind of thing. You can throw all the money at at it you want, 
But you can look at that picture of the McCall or whatever the fuck it is, and you turn it out and you got an eight foot snow drift out there, you're still there. Yeah. It's the same thing with bike. You can throw all the fucking performance money, all this stuff that you can do. You can show up to all the things. But if you're still a dildo or you, yeah. you just don't come correct, it's not going to get you any closer to anything that versus. Like compressors on still. You know what I mean? Versus Whoops. just be a real dude. Just yeah. show up. There's Kid. so many dudes that have shown up on a how many year old road glide to yeah. somewhere and you get the same treatment. You show up on a sports or whatever the fuck like it, that does it. That's, that's one of the things we were kind of talking last night is like, you know, the camp out is not about how cool your bike is. There is, there is a part of the camp out that, that gets attention, but the camp out is about how far you rode or yeah. where you rode or how you came in or how you enjoyed this, how you made this your own thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I keep trying to tell people this all the time is, you know, two things just happened. Let me try to regurgitate this. Mike from Born Free, I learned a lot by doing a podcast with him and the conversations I've had off podcast with him since Born Free Texas. And he said to me, which is kind of like how, you know, the FXR tour kind of came to, to be with, it was Justin's idea. It was just, I had some facilitation on some on my end, right? But the... The fact that these guys put on this big show, but they're like, hey, man, we want to, you know, what what do you, you guys want to do? I want to make a place where you can do what you want to do. You got some ideas that are cool? You think you can make it happen? Hey, I got the fucking plot of land. Let's do it. And I'm like, man, that makes sense. Like, why not try to activate people that have great ideas so they can bring those great ideas to a place like the camp out so that it can just be a better place? The camp out's not about Jace. It's not about dragon it's not about any individual it's about everybody's experience coming to it mm -hmm. and what they do there and how they go home and and you'll you'll when you if you ever come one day i know it's probably not going to be any day soon but um when you go home and on tuesday the real start to happen you're you're glued to it mm -hmm. you're glued to it like fuck I, I wonder if they got that one oh they did fuck they got it you know what i mean it's like and then the people's, but, uh, dude, it's... But like we were talking about last night, you have said multiple times that with the, the camp out, your, a part of your goal is to have people make these connections, have this experience, make these connections, ride in from different places, break state lines, create bonds, and then be able to go forth and multiply. Not in camp outs, but in riding. Yeah. And, and, and my counter was that we're, you know, there's, there's becoming a thing where there's too many instances where people are on they're breaking state lines they're riding miles but it's only to an event that's going to get reels it's going to get instagram and, and don't get me wrong i love instagram yeah. i love posting pictures but i'm saying if you're going to sturges if you're going to daytona if you're going to a fast life camp out if you're going to the down south camp out a club style event whatever there needs there should be and i hope there is more of an emphasis on also taking that two three day trip whatever with a couple of your close homies and just getting gas station beers, a shitty motel, turn around and coming back. Yeah. Where there's not going to be a brand for you to support or hashtag. There's not going to be a or, or tag. There's not going to be a, a reel for you to make or whatever. I mean, you can still make a reel from well, it. but It's kind of like this. It's like, like say, Wilo and his wife this year. So Wilo out of uh, Arkansas, um, he decided this year, him and his wife, who also rides, uh, they're going to come to the camp out, and the camp out's going to be a stop on a West Coast trip. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I think that's that's dope. You you the camp out can be anything you want it to be. It could be a stop on a bigger trip. Yeah, it could be the first time you're getting out and you're you're testing the waters of traveling on motorcycles. Um, it's not expensive to come. There's not there's no there's no barrier of entry. It's not like uh you know no digs or anything. But when you go to Born Free California, you're paying roughly $75 to get into the gate for two days. And then you also got to figure out where you're going to sleep at night. Yeah. I mean, same, and so 75, on, yeah, these, $75 these. is going to pay for every night you're going to camp yeah. at this event, this, this place. So it's cheaper. It's easier. It's not, a you know, mo if you can own a Harley, you can fucking come to a camp out. Yeah. And, and you then, know I mean? you know, it's, it's, Oh, well we went, we rode to Milwaukee for mama tried or for, for the hometown rally or whatever. And it's like, okay, but that was well, an event. Like yeah. go somewhere where there's not a fucking event. Sometimes it starts with an event, no man. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, think, and, that, I think that's the catalyst. Yeah. Some, some, Carrie, some, but why? Is, well, some, I mean, some, why? Why are we only catalyst? Why are we only using that into more events? Well, especially for people that, especially for people that uh, that maybe didn't go the club route. 
where all of a sudden they're they're looking for they do want the connection. They're they're they've got that basic human element where they're looking for. They just want to connect with friends. They've met all these dudes on Instagram. They follow the same brands. Oh fuck, dude! I found these dudes. They're not club. I don't have to go club. I can still travel. I can go to these events because these are the things that they they make it. Well, man, I feel like every everybody you have that you know we've we've made jokes about it before. You could almost equate it to like a high school. Like you're staying in high school. Your freshman year is different from your sophomore year to your junior year to your senior year. And people go, I mean, it's, we've seen enough examples out there where the proof is in the pudding where people, there is a similar kind of a, a chart like that. And it's the same thing where you just, you give these people. So at some point they do some of these events and wherever it is along their journey, they will get the same. Okay. I've done enough of these. I've done this. I need to get the fuck out and do my own thing. I don't, if if they've already res- in my term in my words, if they've already resisted the fucking urge to do the club thing, so they've already resisted resisted that first like oh come here that fucking that recruitment. So all of a sudden you 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 ventured into the independent world and you successfully navigated to where mm-hmm. you've done some shows, you've made some campouts. You're gonna have fun with that for a minute, yeah. And sooner or later. You're probably you're naturally just going to progress. You want something a little bit different. You've done all this. You've you've had you've had your fun, eating mushrooms and doing this and getting fucked up. And at some point, maybe you meet a chick and she's into riding too, but she doesn't party or whatever the fuck it is. Maybe you had a kid. You just you everybody just changes. And sometimes it's your own. Nothing changes like that. You just change because I know I'm going through one of those where I'm just I'm not evidencing that right now, but I just I. Don't drink. Like, for whatever reason, my care for drinking has dropped off. So the whole point of that is at some point, I think these same people that may find out about a fast life camp out or a uh, hometown rally, whatever, then they do this for a year or two. They get, then all of a sudden they want to do their own fucking Yellowstone trip by yeah. themselves, yeah. maybe with one friend or whatever. And that's the thing is you never know. Cause there's a lot of people, a perfect example when you said the thing a minute ago, the I Vince. looked up Todd. Todd didn't do a reel. Todd yeah. came last year. If there's anybody in the fucking country that could have done a reel last year and tried to get a little Instagram It's not bringing up Todd because I want my helmet right now. But I'm just saying, but <laughs> Todd, Todd could have done a fucking reel, and he didn't, dude. And I look at his, his – he hasn't posted a bunch of shit since then. Yeah. He's a big story guy, I think. But you talk about a guy that's taking life by the balls, this whole independent scene and living it and running with it, and he's about to start doing FXR jams. And he's not, you know, hey, look at me. This is, I think we have the best of the best, that's best of the best that still goes under the, you know what I mean? Well, I think what, yeah, to capitalize on your point, also say this is like the events are, it's the marijuana for the drug world, right? It's, it's just the entry. Yeah. It's the gateway. It's like this will get you out of your comfort zone, teach you what it's like to travel. And then some people they stay with that forever. That's all. That's all they need. It, it fills the box. It fills the uh, the cup or whatever you want to say. Some people want more, and they go start traveling. They start looking for these places. Like, well, I want to do this, and I can't find anybody to do it with me, so I'm fucking doing it on my own. Right? Mm-hmm. There's those people. I mean, there's some people. And at, at one point in my life, I never considered traveling alone on my bike. I love it. I never just. I never did. I just didn't. It, it just wasn't a thing in my head. Like. I think I'm going to jump in my, even driving. I'm like, I think I'm going to drive from here to California. I fucking love it, dude. It's yeah. Right in my pants. I mean, I seriously, it. this, I mean, it's a recent thing for me. I didn't, I don't think I ever traveled alone on a big trip until I think the first time I went to California alone, I was selling my blue Dyna. And I remember the whole way there because it was a turn and burn. I, I drove to San Francisco, dropped off the bike. Picked up a, a set of tins I was going to paint. Dropped off a set of tins I painted, and literally turned around and started making my way back home. And I listened to uh, Hardcore History the whole way there Whoa, and back. That's a good and one. it was yeah, it was like I listened to the whole trip. fucking like World War One. Mm-hmm. I didn't ever did the Mongols one. Um, I, I know it's the best one, but I just I was into that World War shit, right? And to me, man, like I was like, oh shit, this is the first time I've ever driven across country alone. And I was like, why? Why did? Why is that a an achievement? Like, that should be normal. We should be able to, especially a man, you should be able to fucking jump in a car and drive alone across country. Now, I can see my wife, like, having, you know, I would be more scared for her. Like, you never know. Like, an attractive woman going to a fucking love's parking lot in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. It could be sketchy. Yeah. You know? But I don't know, man. It's like, uh, then you start, the first time I did a bike trip alone, I was like, man, I kind of dig this, man. Like, I... 
not that I don't like people. I love people. I love social interactions, but I love, I love being able to do everything I want to do on a trip. And sometimes we'll pass things on a, on a bike trip. We'll be, we'll be riding. We'll pass. I was like, fuck, I really want to go stop over there. But we just stopped three times so I could take pictures. This is going to be the fourth within like 20 minutes. Like <laughs> they're going to be pissed off at me. I'm like, fuck man. I'll, where are we at right now? I'm going to, I'm going to come back here one day. You know what I mean? Fuck, fuck that one day yeah. shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. fuck it right, I'm about, it right now. We'll stop 85 we've, we've times. Had we post, to, I know we say that, but just yeah, we, yeah, we've had this post-trip meetings about the same thing where we've all said, dude, fuck that. If you ever get the fucking urge, especially this fucking dickhead, if you get the fucking urge, it's probably cool. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. we, none of us mind doing it. That's why we're the fuck here. Because, again, the whole, oh, I'll do this next time. Dude, when yeah. the fuck are you sure you're going to get through the next and, time? And that's don't make the event... You, again, with anything, we talk about the theme, your entire personality. If if you want to pat yourself on the back because you're breaking state lines, but all you're doing is going to events so you can like chase brands or chase people or chase Instagram followers. Yeah, but people lame. celebrate everything, dude. It's fucking they celebrate lame. Thursday. Look, I have I agree with you a hundred percent. Thirsty Thursday, baby. We <laughs> I, made it. Oh man, there's it's wasted people, Wednesday. There's people that travel across the country for a chicken fried steak. That hey, I heard I saw this Instagram. That's video fucking wanna, cool. Do it that. is cool, but so that's also so perspective that right? like like it's you really can't be that kind of person. That's like that's. I mean, I, I we all have the opinion. I I, I can't take yeah. that away. We we have our opinion of what we think is cooler or not. But I don't want to discourage anybody for whatever the reason is that makes them travel. I just the fact that they travel means more to me than than the purpose behind it. Because whatever the purpose behind it, whether it's like malevolent, like badass, great ideas, yeah. all the checked all the right boxes or not. Yeah. Let's say it's not. It's all fucking self centered. It's all egotistical. They're trying to get their name out there. It's all clout chasing. Yeah. Well, maybe in trying to do those things that are not very good for you, they found something that is within the traveling and that could change that person and give them another perspective in life. So So take 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 three of your buddies, ride to go get the steak, then come to a camp out and tell Jaden how you shit your pants because it wasn't cooked right or something like that. Like yeah. to me that's the trifecta right there. That's the that's that's the holy trinity. Yeah. Like do that. Take something you got at the camp out, something you saw on Instagram, grab some of your homies, go do it. And then go to something, then go to another event sometime and, and tell a story about what you saw on the road. Yeah. Don't just make this fucking circle of event after event after event. Why, why go somewhere and tell that story when, again, you're in this, you're in this fucking network where you've got a chance to tell this, tell the story before you get to camp out. You don't have to wait for who you can't show up. Well, you can yeah. tell the story that yeah. may inspire somebody else to go do it. But there's, 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 there's something there's, to that, Dave. You there's, gotta there's the telling crown, a story. Dude. There's you telling gotta, a story here and there's telling a story here. Well, yeah, yeah, but again, that's the thing. Telling the story here, there's motherfuckers in the garage right now listening to this that are itching to take a to to do a to do a, a trip for anything, yeah. and all of a sudden, you may tell a story where oh fuck that place is an hour and a half from here. I want to go, go shit my pants. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go tell this motherfucker who's wrong. You know what I mean? Or yeah. I want to shit my pants too. It's that's I'm I gotta I gotta align with Jason on that that I never. Anything that gets people to travel, and you know what, I'll even go so far as extend to this. I'll even try to fit another group. If you're a, an adult couple that goes to like Disney World or any of that kind of shit, like let's say you want to go see Harry Potter, <laughs> honestly, you kind of make my fucking stomach crawl just as a fucking human being. What Harry do no you? Kids. But guess what? <laughs> no if kids. you want to do, go, go fucking travel. I'm so happy for you. In a world that's going before sooner or long, before every fat fuck's gonna sit on sit at home and say. I, I can see it on YouTube or I can do it in the metaverse or whatever the fuck. Travel. <laughs> Get out. Spend your fucking money. Go to another fucking zip code. Travel. That's, no that, matter that's, what the fucking reason. So go to the camp out and then go to Harry Potter land. Just, just, well, just, just saying, that was just a whole other group. Like when I see like the example of I want anybody to get out and travel. Obviously, I'm talking about bikers first, but I'll extend that to the point where even people that I fucking hate go fucking travel. Well, I mean, but like, like this. A, yeah, Henry's right. It's the gateway. Use it as a gateway, not the only way. Oh, he's I agree right about that because yeah, the gateway. May, this may be the marijuana where all yeah. you go all of a sudden, but then you're doing the fucking coach cocaine, bleh, cocaine trips where you go. <laughs> I want to go to fucking Big Bend, like yeah, go. non terilingual ride, yeah. or I want to go to fucking wherever the fuck. Yeah. And that's I'm gonna start a bar. Yeah, that's one of the cocaine trips, baby. I want to start a whatever, bar. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That was me in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Don't you love that about the Midwest? Everybody's house is also a bar. Yeah, like dude. you're not sure. Like, is this, a, is this a, there's a just a random pap sign in the window? Dude, yeah, I, is this a I bar? Was at, uh, this? Kung yeah. Fu Tap. I was at Kung Fu Tap, which is Church of Choppers uh, bar up in uh, Des Moines. Okay, and they sell. He has beer. You know all the all the good ones, Schlitz, all that shit. <laughs> uh, and then they sell tacos. And when I say tacos, I'm not talking about your trendy uh, on the Dallasites Instagram of new trending tacos this week in Dallas. No, it's a fucking like OG Taco Bell hard shell ground beef, cheese, lettuce, tomato, fucking sour cream on the top. Fuck off. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. And it's delicious. Especially when you're you drinking. Want. When you're drinking, you're like, fuck that, dude. Give me four of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, think about this. If, You've had Jack in the Box tacos before in the mm. middle of the night? Mm-mm. You don't have Jack in the Box up there? We do. I don't go to them for tacos. Dude, you're fucking, you're fucking tripping, up. bro. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So Jack in the Box tacos. They, I don't know. It's been a minute. because no, they're still good. They used to be a dollar for two. They're not a dollar for two anymore, right? Maybe like a dollar twenty-five. Yeah. So you used to be able to go there. It'd be like after a bar or whatever. Let me get 12 tacos. You it want. used to be a dollar eight cents for two of them, if yeah. you want to know the exact tax. <laughs> As of like 2006. They, they, times. They, know their, they know their fucking demographic, dude. They they had the munchies box and shit where you get like mozzarella sticks, tacos, fucking burgers, fries, curly fries, all in one fucking thing. Chocolate and Bucks fucks, dude. You got to have the ranch with the tacos, too. If you don't do that, you're, oh, like shit, never it. It. you're crazy. Probably per cap. This, <laughs> again, this is not going to be a high hit rate. Don't expect to go to your local dra- Jack in the Box and see this. But per capita, over every drive through you go through, Jack in the Box may have the better looking uh, servers. Every now and then you'll get a... Every now and <laughs> then you'll the get fuck? a... a Every now and then you'll get a Jack in the Box like uh, Mia from Fast and She's like, oh, you want the tuna sandwich? Like, you'll get one of those at the Jack in the Box window every now and then. Your delivery on that was perfect. There used to be one in West Plano that I should have married this. Bitch, you must live. I should have married this one. Live but, in fanciness. Like, oh, oh. Fucking, oh. <laughs> just, the only people pretty. I ever see at a Jack in the Box is in Abuelita, and that's it. Yeah, that's <laughs> what. Yeah, that's ex- that's what you expect. But then when you go through, no, that's, that's what that's I. That's across see the board. I expect all the time, every fast every time. food restaurant I ever drive through. It's yeah, in Abuelita, somebody's grandma, right, or s- something that I'm not interested in. Jack What's wrong with grandma? Every day, and you'll get that one, or it's like, what do you? What time you get off? <laughs> I'm, gonna come back through, I'm gonna come back through and get another order of curly fries, <laughs> just so we can talk. What's wrong with grandma's curly fries? That's like hey. finding a star on a Tussie Pop wrapper. It's like, <laughs> you're not like, I don't know what. They, okay, this guy. He's that's look, crazy. Look, Kyle's fucked a bunch of Jack in the Box people, and he's trying to like downplay. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> you wish until you can prove you're your blowing point. up my spot, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Jack in the Box. Okay, Kyle, ladies. I get it. Sorry, dude. So I had no idea what we were talking about, but uh, oh, oh so I was in Des Moines. Yeah. I was in Des Moines, and uh, that's the one thing I love the most about not just the Midwest, but like going north, like getting out of the belt, Bible Belt, how bars are part of the communities. I've said it so many times <laughs> on the podcast, but. Des Moines, that bar was badass. The bartender there, she'd been there like 20-something years. I forget her name, but she's rad chick. She was interested in why I was there. We, we chopped it up for yeah. a minute. Um, I just like, I don't know, just being there, seeing this is a bar with bike stuff in it. So there's like this constant, like you feel like you're in a bar for your homies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like within the motorcycle stuff, you know what I mean? Like bar, like when you go to Dallas, you go to the bar scene. Like you have the dive bars that kind of we all frequent. Yeah, and then you got fucking like the Walmart bars, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. hey, we're fucking packing people in. It's damn near a club, but they don't call it a club. It's still a bar, right? Dude, I'm ready to rage at the one in Hillsboro, where I'm from. Mm-hmm. There's one bar in there, and it's under the building of the like, right next to the fucking courthouse. <laughs> that, like. When we go on that trip this year, I'm excited for all of us yeah. to pile on that bitch. It's gonna be fun as fuck. Yeah. It's like they got cheap beer, fucking Jerry Springer on TV, and fucking a pool table, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what I like about them. So yeah, so I mean, I, I love that about going up north. I mean, you know what I mean? That's kind of like one of the slept on things. You know, like I said, bar scenes down here. It's like it's you know it's overpriced drinks. It's like a it's a weekend thing. It's like if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's not a part of the community as much as it is going up north. So I don't know. I feel like the Midwest in general, or, or the Northern Midwest, gets slept. And, and I guess it takes a certain type of, you have to, I can see why it wouldn't appeal to people. Like, you have to be into an aspect of nothingness. And like, no, no. I, I would take you one further. The reason why people sleep on Kansas, 
uh, which I like riding through Kansas. I like yeah, yeah. Uh, I I like South Dakota, Kansas, North Nebraska. Dakota. I don't know about North Dakota yet. And honestly, all jokes aside, if we're doing the whole like Sioux Falls to to Sturgis, yeah, it's a long flat ride. You can see the other in the state. But still, get off the interstate. Still interstate better than cool. Florida, dude. Still <laughs> better than Florida. Interstate. It's 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 cool shit. Like the Midwest is is wide open for the most part. There's not a ton of crowded big city towns that you're gonna go through. Uh, there's a, if you're into history, there's a ton of historical shit from from you know settlers moving. Yeah, west. we were talking about it like that last night because you said you were more of interested in the history beer, dude. of uh, in the history of like uh, the Indian side of things. And I was telling you that Can I was we more. Say Indian? Uh, yes, you sure. fucking say Indian. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, there's but certain, I was there's you. certain lines where I draw this podcast, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that 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 sort of history is my is my jam. Like I love. So I stuff. like the whole settlers, like yeah. the whole pioneers, the whole people that they were like living in like the eastern seaboard. Like you know what? Fuck these motherfuckers. I'm gonna go risk it all with the unknown yeah. out here and try to just get a piece of America right against the weather. The fucking like all all that shit. Yeah. I fucking like yeah, those yeah. motherfuckers. I'm hope. I'm probably not that. I'm probably one of the dudes that like everybody. I'm a descendant of one of the guys that came a hundred years after they did it, <laughs> when the roads were paved. <laughs> but like, so like, you know, I love the plains. Like I just yeah. I just love I that too. shit. And you can go to Sturgis and and you can go to Bike Week and it's never fucking crowded because nobody's doing it. But you can go to Bear Butte, which is right there in Sturgis, right? Yeah. Um, by the Buffalo. By the chip the Buffalo chip. Have you have you listened to Red Empire of the Summer Moon? Yeah, I've read it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. And and so you can go to Bear Butte it. if you go all the way up to the top of Bear Butte and you look out. There's a sign that'll tell you which way to look. Um, but you can see the Deadwood. I, I think it was the Pierre Deadwood. Um, stagecoach, and you can still see the tire tracks from that as settlers were coming in to to mine the Black Hills. And obviously, should they be mining the Black Hills, that's a different debate. But it's still it's it's interesting or they cool, or whatever. Have. Yes, to to see, but the Black Hills didn't belong to them. Why were they mining it? Take it. <laughs> so we won. You don't even, you don't have the Super Bowl uh, champions going. Ah, we're Super Bowl champions all but of your division. We'll let y'all keep that. No, so, bitch. We won the whole league. We're so social social debate aside, it's it's <laughs> fucking rad to get up there and look and still see these wag these these tire marks these from these wagons it dug into the ground. Like the impression is still there. You can clearly see which way it goes. Yeah, and I think that type of history is fucking cool. And I, I just I can't. You can to a degree with historical buildings or areas or whatever. But in yeah. big cities, a lot of it is big city. Not some big cities. They don't do a great job of preserving it. True, yeah, because, you know, like, uh, it, there, there's a couple different angles we can go with this, right? You could talk about, you know, you hear people say, like, oh, I want to ride Route 66. Mm -hmm. Great highway. But if you ever, like, go down a rabbit hole on YouTube on Route 66, it's fascinating. It's one of the first roads west. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or the Lewis and Clark stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit's amazing. Like, there's so much shit that you can take – uh, maybe what seems to be mundane traveling through the plains, all of a sudden now there's some historical things that took place that helped pave the way for everything that exists, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And there's something about it. Like, don't get me wrong. I love going east. I love feeling like coming to these towns are old. They have history. But goddamn, like when you're riding along a road, like when we went up the, that this picture in 2020, when we went up there, we rode. Uh, I had just read that Empire of the Summer Moon. Mm -hmm. We went up. 287 to Amarillo. We we're going to see my daughter, and she was going to college in uh, the Panhandle of Oklahoma. So all this Empire of the Summer Moon shit took place in this area. Yeah. Like the Comancheria shit. So I'm like, we're riding around. I'm like, dude, like, I'm looking at I'm looking at the land different because of the stories that I heard through this book. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's stupid. It doesn't translate. But there's a sense of discovery, when you, to me anyways, when you head west, even though obviously you're not discovering it, there's a sense of like, oof, like I'm 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 exploring, yeah. I'm, I'm figuring this shit out, as opposed to when you go to eat. To me, anyways, when you go east, it's a little bit more. I don't know. You're going back established. Yeah, yeah. There's just, there's just something about when you're going west. It's a little bit more like ah, I'm making my own fucking mark. Kind of you feel a little bit more cowboyish but, for whatever you know. Yeah. Dumb that down however you want. There's just uh, the other thing about going west. Is it's not easy, and you notice that when you go through these towns, that you didn't can't make help it. but think, yeah. how the 
fuck did they do this? And, and you know, to, to the East Coast credit, there's a lot of great small towns or even big cities in, in the East Coast that did a great job of preserving their history. But there's so many more instances where they just razzed it and now it's condos. Like, oh, you yeah. can stand on the corner where this building used to be this, but now it's a high rise or now it's condos or whatever. And that's not, you know, a, a, across the board. There are some great historical sites that are preserved on the East Coast. But, you know, when you go West, you're not so much as looking at a building as you are still a place in time. And I'm sure the landscape has probably changed, but you in your mind, you're standing right where, you know, these figures in time sit, whether it's Lewis and Clark, whether it's crazy horse, whether it's Custer, whether it's, you know, you want to go further back, you know, you're standing where they did. You're like, Oh, well, you know, like in South Dakota, you can go to the, where the last, they think the last Buffalo jump took place, which is where it's like a cliff and they chase the Buffalo off of it. Right. Buffalo jump. And you can go there. There's like a bar there too. You get drunk, yeah. but like you can go you get and, and see this shit. You get a penny. You put it in a machine. It does a yeah. buffalo thing. Huh? <laughs> you, you can get drunk and just run out there. Like just a real just take right off. episode, like eight second little <laughs> comedy bit. No, but, it, it seems that way with the with the West. They emphasize like the first time they did this and the first time. So well, it leads to that where you go east and it's more like they've been doing this and so and so, and you get the whole. It started, but then it's gotten down to well, here. So what they, you hear it said a lot, the flyover states, right? Yeah. The Midwest, right? But realistically, the flyover states are not the Midwest. It's it's the South or it's the West. Because you have like three lines of civilization. When you like, if you're in Dallas and you have a, the Interstate 35 line mm-hmm. up north, Kansas City or not Kansas City, uh, Wichita, Oklahoma City, Dallas, uh, all the way south to Corpus Christi. And then you go west. The next big line is Interstate 25, which is going to be Denver, all the shit on Colorado, Albuquerque, Las Cruces, El Paso, right? Then another big fucking gap of nothing, and then you get the line of Salt Lake City, Vegas, uh, Phoenix, Tucson, you know, Flagstaff, kind of a little bit off the line, but pretty similar. Boise, all that shit, right? Then you got another fucking line. And then you got your just your West Coast towns, your LA's, NorCal, Oregon, Pacific Northwest shit, right? When you travel on motorcycles, you see that yes, people f- have been flying over this shit for the last thirty years. That's why there's a gas station every five miles that failed, and it's now a graffiti haven, mm-hmm. right? Now there's towns that literally have barely anything holding on, and you're you're riding bikes on these these highways, and you're seeing this town going. What would it be like to live right there? You know, you're seeing these houses, and you're like, oh, is there prosperity? Is is there enough here to, like, have a life? Or, hey, these guys are, like, their fucking house is kind of built up into this hill or this, like, side of this mountain. Like, is that cool, or is this, like, poverty? I don't know which one it is, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of questions yeah. that come into that. And it's, and again, it's very specific. I don't expect it to, and I don't think it is applicable to everybody. It's very it's very much your taste. And so yeah. I love when, when dudes have a story like that or, you know, you, you tell a story about something that you're passionate about. Like, I get jazzed up for that, too, even if it's different than mine. Like, just tell me what you're passionate about. Like, I want to find people that want to hear stories. So the last time I went to South Dakota, I, I rode onto the, the Pine Ridge uh, Indian Reservation out of... Um, I was in the northern portion of it. God, what is the name? I, I can't think of the name of the town. Uh, just outside of Hermosa, I think, if I'm saying that right. But anyway, you can go to this spot, and you can go to um, um, you can go to this overlook for Tabletop? Tabletop, which is in, is in the Badlands. And it's the site of where the last ghost dance took place for, for the Plains Indian Wars. Right, so the, the the ghost dance in the U.S. government, the Indian yeah. agents, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, they wanted to, to put down this ghost dance um, because they thought it would it would it would lead to these tribes banding together and trying to take out the government or the U.S. whatever. Yeah. And so they, they would they would go into these remote corners of the Badlands, and they would perform these ghost dances. And there was a special ceremony in a shirt, and they really believed that it would make them impervious to to bullets and and things like that. Uh, that their enemies would just would just fall. And and if you go there, it's it's a hike in, but you go there and you and you feel that you can you can like just be surrounded by that. If you go back to the main road, right off the main road, there's a Catholic church, like an old Catholic. It's boarded up, it's failed, it's whatever, and it's just it's set against the prairie. Right. <laughs> and, and there's just there's not just in my n- house. <laughs> <laughs> God, not here. Um, but there's just nothing else behind it. But but if you look at it, if you're looking at it face on. Obviously, a couple miles behind it, but it's it's facing out towards the Badlands, and then a couple miles behind that would would be the spot where this this ghost dance took place. So you're kind of like getting this contrast of seeing the influence of the Catholic Church and 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 
Catholicism and things like that against what, what they were practicing. And if you're into that, it's just a super fun, it sounds cheesy, but a super cool no, experience. No, it is, yeah. To, I mean, to that, be in that. So, I mean, that's literally what's going on in, like, the whole Tyler Sheridan fucking universe of, like, Yellowstone in 19, or 1883 and 1923 and all that shit right yeah. now. I love how goofy he makes bikers look. Yeah. I feel like it's just like, fuck you for having to play a sheriff. <laughs> on Saturday, yeah. Like but, um, <laughs> but, no, to that, it's like... Um, what was I going to say on that? No, like the energy, right? So you go to certain places and you feel it. Like me and Steve Chamberlain once, we rode through part of the Badlands mm-hmm. on our way to Sturgis once, and there was a vibe. There was like something. I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say like woo-woo spiritual shit, but it's like there is a feeling. Like when I'm in Monument Valley area, yeah. I feel that shit. I yeah. feel why am I so drawn to this? Why am I so like – fascinated by this landscape you know what i mean yeah I mean, it's not just monument valley it's the whole area that that surrounds that as soon as you like when we were on this last trip in pacific northwest as soon as we crossed over where a ship uh ship uh, what was it ship mountain or shipwreck mountain or something like that it's like in uh kind of by farmington uh it's like a mountain that looks like a ship ship rock that's okay. what it's called yeah you can't even get close to it because it's, like, all reservation. Like, as soon as you try to go into it, they fucking show up. Like, the Indians show up. Like, hey. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Take it easy. Take it easy. But as soon as you cross that area, it's like you, there's a vibe. There's a feeling of, a, of the land. And when you're riding it, and uh, heaven forbid that you're actually riding it while the sun's coming down or coming yeah. up where you get, like, some lighting yeah. to kind of go with the senses as well. But, dude. Like that day, that was day one of our trip together as a whole this last year. And we're coming in and we're meeting Hans over at fucking uh, San Juan Inn. San Juan is the most dope hotel. I love that place. That, have you in. ever sat on that balcony they have above? It's like a second deck balcony right yeah, before you get to the room. Yeah, we got fucked up. Yeah, just we got drink and look at the yeah. there. I love yeah. that place. Didn't you like, get fucked up like on the, mushrooms there? That was the second coolest place of my whole experience there. I was down on the riverbed, like <laughs> feet in the mud. Like, yeah. <laughs> did you do mushrooms I, there? Oh yeah, I got it. All I got, the mushrooms. I think I when you Cody, I got a few of us down there, but I we, think when you're on yeah, the down there. because that's reservation land. I think you're supposed to do peyote. Peyote. I'm like, well, that's. <laughs> Nobody gave us PLT. We brought our own mushrooms. Yeah, I met a dude at the the Exxon or whatever that gas station that's there that was on a bike, and just like, hey, dude, what's up? How's it going? Dude. How does fuck out here? And then we left, and I went and and I had some drinks at, at the San Juan Inn, and then I, I went. God, where the fuck did I go after that? I don't even remember. I, well, I went towards um, um, what's Utah? What's the next big town you would come to in Utah? Uh, well, from there you don't really come to you like. You got Mexican hat and you got speaking of Alan to Utah. I'm convinced where we the, where the chick where the threesome. chick and her boyfriend were in the van having the fight and then she got murdered. Moab, Moab, Moab. I, I, okay, I, yeah. I went through Moab. Um, I went up to Hemingway's grave in Idaho. Right, so I mean we're talking like two days of, of riding. Yeah, I got to, to Yellowstone National Park and I'm in this fucking tourist line on my bike of these vans and these Asians. That no offense, Asian people, but you take fucking ridiculous pictures. Oh. The worst fucking <laughs> pictures at national Take parks. Easy. <laughs> you guys oh. fuck every line up, like and and so. <laughs> Goddamn balloons! <laughs> you, that was perfect. <laughs> look, look, look! Uh, I love, I love, I love Asian people. Whatever, but you guys. Take the or your relatives at least take the worst fucking pictures in national parks and block every fucking road. Yeah, and, and they just like pull their minivan off to the weirdest fucking angles. But we're we're stuck in a buffalo bison whatever line, and, and minivans just like blocking this road. And all of a sudden, a bike pulls up next to me. It's the same guy I met in Mexico at the at that Exxon station. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, what's up, dude? Oh, in Yellowstone. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, it's like two days later, like we just ran into each other. Yeah, that's kind of that. That's kind of shit happens, man. Yeah. honestly, out there because. It's all on like this path. Everybody's like, we, I've been, I've only stayed the San Juan in once, but I've camped at, uh, at Monument Valley like twice. And I feel like every time we're there, there's like European foreign people there on bikes. And remember we were at the fucking, we were in the bar there eating. Yeah. And there was like a couple over there, but they're European. At the San Juan in? Yeah, at the San Juan in. They were staying there. Yeah. They kind of hung out for a little bit, I think, and talked to us and stuff, but. They were staring so much that, like, they don't seem American because, you know, at some point, like, they looked American, but they, after talking to them and whatnot, we we're like, oh, yeah, they're not from here. They're, they're, they're renting a bike and 
traveling country, it seemed like <laughs> what it really seemed like was some like porn shit. Like this dude's like looking for somebody to <laughs> bang his old lady. It's like super troopers when they arrest that German. Yeah, couple? exactly <laughs> like that. Exactly like that. <laughs> because they're all staring so hard. Like what the fuck? Like yeah. what's going on here? Like it's uncomfortable for me. <laughs> so I went back to my room. <laughs> they're looking for with, a with them. I mean, they went with me, but... We want American jeans. Um, But, yeah. No, I love it out there. It's kind of like... As much as I love going east, and I've said this so many times, it's just fucking stupid now. But at the same time, I love going east. I love New York. I love all the shit about the history of these places. I love looking at the Brooklyn Bridge and realizing that shit was built in a time when cars didn't exist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's amazing to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I marvel at all those, like those feats of being in this this energetic place and whatnot. But, man, I need the balance of being out in the middle of nowhere out west. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you you mentioned Too Late in Life earlier. They're doing the whole uh, Loneliest Highway 50. I love those videos, yeah. You know, it's – I love that shit, man. I really do. I think that, you know, motorcycling has become kind of like as I get older and, you know, you know, I, I feel like – it sounds stupid, maybe cliche to say right now, but – I need these trips. I need these travels on my bike to clear my head, to to reevaluate life. It's kind of like a the most the best therapy. Yeah, you know what I mean. So if you think about it, if you're really a good motorcyclist, or if you actually indulge in it, you can save on a therapy bill that most everybody <laughs> after thirty five is going to need right in their there, life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So part of what I was saying earlier with the uh, well the art the art oh. thing. Oh. <laughs> Very hilarious of you, Dave. <laughs> Take it easy. Uh, no, with the Dr. with Jones. the art thing is again, you can barely make these fucking trips by, and every now and then you do your oh, I'm fucking riding with so and so, and you're uh, and you're doing your fucking uh, trying to guess what? One out of every like 15, 20 of those will come out fairly decent. Where the whole thing is, where there's people that travel down to the Keys and they'll pay all this money to get a picture and ship it back to their house. You have the ability, and guess, even if you don't get on your stupid fucking phone, your GoPro, sometimes just riding. Like I said, going through somewhere fucking rad, whether it's the Wachita Mountains, Coachella with your friends, L.A., fucking Maine, wherever the fuck you look over and just the way you see the fucking, the sun coming down, it hits a shadow, it's just a... Depending on how many drugs you do, you'll always have that memory. You know what I mean? Like, I know people that are a lot better than me. They're like, oh, I'll remember that forever. I'm like, dude, I hope to remember that come New Year's. Like, we had a fun, beautiful fucking moment. I hope to remember it come New Year's. Like, if we didn't get a picture of it that I can look through on my phone sometimes. And that's what I was saying. Even if you get a bad picture, sometimes those bad pictures help you remember, oh, yeah, the photo sucked, but it was there. Yeah. You can get the art. You don't have to pay, like, and it's so much... I don't want to say cheaper, but just more worthwhile to live that art. Like I said, even if it's not yeah. the best, like, oh, I've got this badass metal picture, you know, you don't have this, you know, thing Jetty has in his garage or whatever the fuck, like, it, you don't have to. You know what I mean? You can yeah. still have those same things where, dude. And We were talking about that last night about something along the lines of this where we were like, uh, fuck, what was it? I just interrupt you for no reason. No, no, but so. even and even then, just the uh, like I said, it doesn't even. Have, that's if you want a tangible like oh memory, dude. Just think about all the people that have done something that have had positive memories. And sometimes I hate to fucking bust anybody's ego. Sometimes dudes get into bikes and they're not trying to be a lifelong biker. They're not trying to be like, how can I be the fucking best? How can I put table? They're, they're a day tripper. They're in there for a year, two years, or whatever the fuck. They want to yeah. scratch the itch, and maybe they get a bike, and they never fucking like it again. I still fuck with those. How can I make this, you know, make his time? I'm never trying to be like, how long have you been in it? What's your fucking, what's your goals? Oh, sounds like a squib to me. You know what I mean? Like, it's, no, <laughs> yeah. dude, if you're a good, it's basically, are you a person? Well, honestly, that the difference between how you treat that person might be the reason they stay in it longer. Because no, no, none of us say, I'm going to do this bike thing for a year and a half, and then I'm done with it. And, like, you you have that much control over your everything? Well, I'll even take it a, a step further. I was sitting around the other day, and uh, the chick at the house that I stay at says, <laughs> What kind of definition of so, I, the landlord? Fucking, she's just, <laughs> no. My roommate? My mom? Yeah. No. Uh, so the man, owner, the a, owner a of the house? Looking, Amanda's looking at her phone. She goes, 
do you know uh, Cody Jones? And I went, fuck, dude, actually, I think I do. I said, I don't know, Cody Jones, he's riding FXR, he used to hang out with Mark Stern. I was like, yeah, at one point, I knew that dude fucking, like, hella good. I was like, I haven't, t- now that, like, I haven't thought about the guy in, like, a year at least. Like, I don't, now that you mentioned I haven't thought about him, I don't, I, I hope. Is he alive? Uh, this is what I was saying. I was like, if it's the same Cody Jones, I know one Cody Jones, and he's a great fucking dude, and I hope he's having a fucking great time, but it's, I never actually walked over to go, what are you talking about? Look at her phone. I was just like, yeah, I did. As a matter of fact, I started talking. I think she got disinterested and probably just <laughs> moved on, but. It brought up the whole thing where, yeah, dude, you come around these people that you know, and it does. Everybody doesn't have to have this big flame out, or oh, they're not in the. There's people that you come along, and I'm not mad at him. Like I said, he was dating somebody. I want to say he had a wife. Like they were. So let's say they did marry, and they bought a ha- tiny home, and his. Let's say bikes have moved full. I don't know if this is the case, but just if they have, I got no love lost for that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because he was such a good dude while he was here, that I assume at some point. He will get back into bikes. And if he doesn't, he's he's got a heart for bikes kind of thing. If he's into this or whatever, it's just, I don't know. I guess my thing's may, way more about the people that you are and not what the fuck you're doing. Well, you're talking about projections. You're talking about the people that are – they're projecting like you're – like I'm this level of biker. Are you at least that level or more? If you're not, then you're not on my level and you're not cool. It's kind of like a – it's like, you, you know, it's a radiation of each individual putting their shit out there, wanting to find some equal to either respect or downplay on, right? Yeah. It's it's a bad mentality. It's not good, right? But realistically, it's, it's, it's feeding the ego of, like, yourself. Like, I want to be the baddest biker here, so who are you? Your bike's nice. Oh, you're not into this for full time? Like, I am, so I'm better than you, right? Yeah. It's like nobody – people aren't acting that way, but that's the – that's the that's the cog in the machine in the head that happens to a lot of people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you have a list. I would. You haven't done. Any, you have a lot of words on there that you haven't. I, brought no, I think, we, I think we covered it all. But I was going to say, how know, do we cover all that in the nonsense that we've been talking about for the last? Okay, couple so hours? the first Both one. Of them are shout-outs. Yeah, the first one. You want me to read it? Read it. Hang in on. A, a offensive Asian voice. The first one was was make. <laughs> the first one was make fun of vets. We covered that. Uh, the second one was use Tupac lyrics. We covered that. Then there was why does the Four for the Road episode with Jace have a dumbass title? We covered out that. The next one is to say hi, mom. Hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> Knocking them off. <laughs> uh, the Pasadena story with, with the Kansas City Motorcycle Club and, and the, the the speeding tickets from the early 1900s. We did that. Uh, Four for the Road and the dudes that are there. We did that and how great they are. Love y'all. Uh, the club stuff we covered. Social media, the platform, uh, you know, having to fucking. I'd actually like to hear more, honestly, about the four for the road. Like, just the, your whole network. Like, that's badass, dude. I didn't. I'm going to go pee down. Because, same thing. Again, <laughs> I, like, listen, I don't want to hear about it. I listen to the podcast sometimes. And it is. It's uh, sometimes you got these two dudes on. Sometimes you. And it's, you know, mostly it's a. Uh, tele. Whatever the fuck you call it, where it's. You guys aren't. So, it's. I'm interested. Who are you guys? Like, what's the fucking network? What's it like? I know some of it, but yeah. tell me the rest. So there's, there's, if you follow Four for the Road, there's, there's two dudes that that contribute a lot, um, and they're both club guys, and they're both fucking awesome. They're the long time club dudes. Uh, they're old as fuck, <laughs> but uh, they started over and, and they were doing their thing at, at an old page called Sucker Free MC, which I think is the dumbest fucking name that there's ever been for a social media page, but that's my opinion. And the concept of it, though, was, I think, amazing. It was taking a platform and cre- and trying to create something positive instead of, you know, you're, you're, when you talk about clubs, you're kind of in a lane where most of the stuff that gets published is either not factual, uh, the narrative is wrong, or it's highlighting the... You know, it's highlighting the negative aspects of it or sensationalizing it. And so these guys worked with some other people to kind of create a platform where you could counter that. And I think it's important. I think that, you know, some people are like, oh, who gives a fuck what, what people say about us? You know, we're club guys. We don't give a fuck. I get that to a point. But I also think it's, it's important to control the narrative. And certainly, you're, there's stories that you're not going to tell. There's instances that you're not going to talk about publicly or whatever. There's things that are just, you know, either, and it's not 
gang gang shit or, or big bad Billy badass shit either. It's just it's stuff that you want to keep personal and close to the vest for your club. I get that. Oh, but yeah. there's also a point to controlling the narrative and what the public perceives about motorcycle clubs. So anyway, that's that's silent and and and, and blade. Uh, that's kind of what they did. They were again with some other people. They were kind of like the first two, and then and then Jim Drifter. He's from just an awesome historical legendary club, and again, he's old as shit. <laughs> but you know, Drifter, uh, I've learned so much from Drifter. Drifter kind of became like a pseudo dad um, for me, just filling that role. And, and a lot of how I feel about riding and things like that, I, I got from him and conversations with him, and I've been able to, to travel cross country with him uh, a few times. And and I just I love those moments. And and again, kind of a m- mentorship. Yeah, kind of absolutely. Um, so have you had any? So case, with having a couple sex? with having a couple older dudes like that, have you had any where they're like, oh, I don't know about this sure. podcast? Oh, uh, uh, no, not really. Not on that end, but like, you know, seeing the generational differences, you say the generational gap. Um, but what's great about it again is is for those dudes, they're very open to different ideas and then also passing on their their knowledge and their wisdom, especially, you know, we have we have folks, we have guys that are just they're high ranking members of their of their club. And so this thing that they've been a part of, just the, the mundane inner workings, like that's the knowledge that they have to pass on is, is amazing. And then you put that out on the page and then other people that are in their similar positions with other clubs or new to clubs or looking at clubs, they give their feedback. So now you've almost got a network where you can like look at a free flow of ideas, best practices. Again, we're, it's not trying to be the History Channel. It's not trying to be gangland. It's trying to be something positive. So then, then like, you know, so yeah, then other dudes would just come on board. So, like, Ken. Ken's prospecting for a club right now. And he has that perspective to, to give people that, that are thinking about or are going through a similar experience. Um, you know, Derek. Derek's kind of like, I think <laughs> Derek, uh, his, his, his club name is, is No Shame, but I think he's probably the best voice that we have on the podcast. Like I love his insights. I love the like how articulate he is, and he's well spoken. Um, you know, then there's there's guys that you know they're super busy with like Jake. Jake just had a new baby, so he doesn't post as much. But I got a chance to hang out with Jake in South Carolina. Like, you know, where's everybody from? California, Florida, you know, Washington, Virginia. I mean, guys are just all Nevada. Guys are just all over the place. Um, you know, and then we're watching dudes that have you know there's there's guys that have left clubs. Like myself, there's a couple of other of us. And then, you know, some of them are, are looking at their next step up in club life. And so watching them and getting their insights as they go through the journey. And then there's me, you know, kind of doing like the independent thing or whatever. Maybe one day I'll go back. So you have all these different dudes that really want to promote positivity in a world that's very easy to be negative about. And that's what I dig about those dudes. And again, all the people that I've met because of it, of all the interactions, motorcycles have brought some of the coolest, like, like I talk about Drifter and leaning on him as like a father figure and then the things that he's taught me. But I've been able to like have conversations that have taught me so much. And I think that, is it a lost art to say that like learning from your peers or, or, is, or is, it, is, it, is it any truth in saying that it's a lost art to learn from your peers? I don't, mm. do we do that enough? So to, to, to chime on that, what I feel like is it, most people that could learn from said subject that has knowledge, they come with this intention of wanting to be validated by them instead of learning from them. I, Does I th- that make sense? Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, and hey, I, would- like I, I follow you. you. You, you're a great in what you do. And instead of me coming to you and say, "Hey, man, you know, I just, you know, what's your thoughts on this? How, you know, what I mean, like having a real intellectual lecture from somebody with the knowledge. It's like a lot of us come to the table like trying to like prove ourselves yeah. for validation from this individual that we all look up to. It's weird. That's what I see a lot. I know you guys are all about serious shit, but I'm the funny man here. Let me fucking crack <laughs> jokes for a few minutes right, and prove I no. Oh, I thought you had one. But no, but do you guys, do y'all have any plans of taking that to something where y'all meet? I, I know it's like the network and. Well, last year, I mean, so, you know, for me, it's hard. Like Wisconsin, I got to like go meet him on a snowmobile. <laughs> but like last year we did, we all met in Florida. Um, Ken was was leaving where he was stationed in Florida and was going up the East Coast to Virginia. So we all rode down, met at Ken's in Florida, and then rode back with him to, to Virginia. Uh, you know, we've done that. I've Drifter, him and I, you know, we've ridden to Colorado together and went to Durango. Uh, and then he turned one way and then, and then I went west. Um, you know, I've ridden a bunch of times with Ken. We had a time to, to go and, and hang out with Silent at, at his 
his clubhouse and see his hospitality and stuff like that. So, yeah. So we had the clubhouse thing with some people would be a fucking amazing experience, especially for and not just not just the guys that like write or, or participate on the podcast or anything like, that. like just dudes that that like comment on the page, like to have them say, "Oh man, I saw that you were in my area. Why don't you stop by the house?" You're like, "Am I gonna get my ass beat or whatever?" But you no, go in there and they're, they're hospitable and the history on the walls and like them taking the time. Like, I feel like. I hope it doesn't sound gay, but I feel like, oh, it's like gay. Yeah. dudes dudes get jazzed up when you want to listen to them. Yeah. Like when they can teach you something. Yeah, because they nobody else up. in our life wants to listen to us. My wife doesn't want to give a <laughs> fuck about what I got to say. My kids think I'm fucking old. And where else do you have a place in your life where you get to like regurgitate what you've gained in life? Like whether that's perspective or just knowledge that you've obtained from your own searchings or whatever. And I was thinking the same thing with just kind of the nature of the network y'all have that, you know, we throw it out. Hey, we're doing our big trip. You want to come meet along, whatever. And, but man, it seems like y'all's would be even way more tailor made, tailor made for that. We're guys that are way more likely, you know, than just, Hey, I, I fuck with y'all. And I'll just, even if it's a couple yeah. hundred miles, I want to yeah. ride with you. Go to and, do this. and sometimes and it it's, y'all have something that's so yeah, and, and sometimes it's harder because like they have like club considerations, so they've they've got you know we're gonna meet up on a Saturday, but they've got a, a national run that day. Totally fine. So we get together, you know, we we can have a beer or something like that, and then they got to go do their thing, and, and that's part of why I like riding solo too, because I can kind of mix in and, and go to different stuff. And, and it's what I like about like what y'all have done for the years is that like you have a lot of people that are essentially you're all contributors, and the four for the road is the is the hub. It's mm-hmm. the magazine, mm-hmm. right? Everybody contributes to. You, you guys all write, you come with almost like your own monologues, your own kind of like perspective that you want to put out there about said subject. Yeah. And so there's a lot of structure, even though you have to, it, you have to peel back a couple curtains or yeah. layers of that onion to see the structure, but I do see it. I, I see it within uh, the podcast that you guys do where you're, you're trying to like, you have a, a subject, subject matter and this is what we're doing and we're all on this page and we all have our ideas about it and we come to the page to talk about it it's it's good yeah it's way better than us sometimes (laughs) but i think that these tits (laughs) but 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 this the the camp outs you know even like i remember like four or five years ago like always just like why did y'all start the podcast it was just easier to like, it's easier to have a conversation like this than it is to try and get all of your thought. I hate writing on, on a social media platform because either it's too long and people stop reading or you, again, you have to, you feel like you have to defend everything that you write. If you're somebody like myself, that'll go in the comments and like see a negative reaction to your shit. Like, ah, I should have, I didn't mean it like that. I should have buttoned up, I should have buttoned it up on the back end so they couldn't make that comment. If you have a free flow conversation like this, like it's easier. Comment, like on my YouTube, like. Every once in a while we get those comments of some dudes like, really like the content, but you guys got to stop saying like so much. I'm like, your mom says likes. <laughs> I just, I want to, I want to respond to everything that's like slight like yeah. that. Like your mom, yeah. your mom, your mom, your mom, fuck off, dude. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Do you want us to be good bike builders? Or you want us to be fucking public speakers? I Can't be I both. I take it a step further. I reach out to him directly and go, hey man, I'm really sorry you felt that way. What's your, what's your uh, personal number? I'm going to send you something. Just, and then when they when they do it, it's a live picture of me showing my bottle of black night. Or it's, <laughs> when you when you, when you first get that picture, it just looks like it's my bottle. But then if you hold the little light, if, this is only for people with uh, Apple phones. <laughs> if you don't have an if you're an Android person, you're poor and you won't get this. But on uh, on live photos from Apple, you can hold a button on the little bottom right corner, yeah. I believe, left corner maybe. And then all of a sudden, it like. The picture tells a story. So we've got one from nah, a couple so, months ago. So do you ago, think a lot of people get that picture where it's it just was, your butthole and then, like, let me hit play? Like, they want to well, dive deeper. Well, that's the thing. A few people there's got a it. hidden message in there. There's if you want it, there's the, an the, Easter egg. The guy egg. there, like, oh, here you go. Watch it. Watch it. There you go. There <laughs> look, look, look. So that's good enough, right? That's not good <laughs> enough. No, there you go. What's, oh, that's what's, a whole extra message, Jay. <laughs> Dave. What's the message? I just watched your butthole open up three Part times. What are you so the first one, I, like, couldn't, hey, man, I, I, really, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't stop focusing on the actual butthole. The first one is, hey, I really, I really, why is there not more hair? The first one is, I really appreciate your concern over this topic. I'm listening to you. I'm the listening second, to you. This, the second one is, hold this down. I'm going to show you what you can do with that opinion. And then just so you <laughs> pop, 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 like a fucking medieval paper shredder. And uh, <laughs> if you don't get the fucking point after that, that. 
I why, don't care what you think. Why didn't we get the butthole at House of Harley? All we got was, it was the Shove balls. it down this razor-bumped asshole. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, the house of the chick that I stay at, she helps me keep it You clean. always hear the stories of like the people that got the, like, the, the weird tattoos. They're like, oh, I, I blocked out my eyelids, and I'm just a tattoo. If there was like one body uh, upgrade I could do, I'd probably add like teeth to my butthole just so like I could do that, like a paper shirt. I'm like, hey, can you feed like a five dollar bill? You got twisted just like. Nah, nah, nah. They based him the whole movie off of a vagina about that. It's called teeth. Oh, teeth. Could you could you do that on the podcast? Like, like most things, have me as asshole. I'm late as fuck to the fucking party, dude. Do what? Can you do that on on YouTube? Just a video of him getting tattooed on the podcast of his butthole. Uh, probably not his butthole. Only fans. Hey, that's a new market. Yeah. Only Patreon. Fans. Patreon. <laughs> you didn't listen very well. I didn't say get tattooed. Uh, I said have teeth inserted. Oh, I mean, we can do that yeah. too. Implants. I'm like be, like I'm, dentures. Like in your butthole. I, I'm thinking more like a great, like a little mini great white. Uh, you know, they just got teeth on teeth on teeth. Don't they have gross. like three hundred some teeth? I didn't really think this out either, man. This was like <laughs> a funny. Joke. Like, it was funny for like a second, and then the more I'm explaining, I'm like, oh, this is the how deeper that we explain. Like, yeah, like, man, oh. why is your finger all cut up? Let's see you the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Got cut. Got on that. Fucking dispose all again, huh? That Jaden flytrap, baby. <laughs> that dragon flytrap. <laughs> oh man. Uh. Well, he, doesn't I, even, he doesn't even tell the chick. I'll have his a tongue punch him his <laughs> tongue's all cut out. <laughs> Between that and the other one, I'll have a duffel bag on the, on the doorstep when I get home. I was sleeping in, in the garage tonight, fellas. She's like, the house, of the, the house of the chick, huh? <laughs> the chick that I currently sleep with. <laughs> he didn't even say he's like, the house of the chick. Uh, <laughs> this is the same chick from the beginning of the Full Road podcast, so. Remember the one? The one that you're doing you good. Yeah. The, wait, 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 wait. No, wait. I, I thought that was cool though. Like you guys reached out and Jaden did the podcast. So I remember you came here to do it. What did you do to these before you drank them? They all fell. But isn't that the chick you quickly? Easy, yeah. You Jay, quickly. Hey, Jason, like, wait out of this. Let's watch but, him open it again. This. So uh, no, you guys uh, when y'all like reached out to Jaden and, and he had him on the pod. That that one's still on there, right? Mm-hmm. That didn't get taken down because no, I saw of. Him. I thought that was cool as hell, man. It was kind of a, a proud dad moment for me, um, just seeing, you know, people like you guys like wanting to hear from him, and also li- like because I was I was kind of here a little bit. I think that you had ended up leaving. I was gone at so some you, point. You left. I did the whole podcast here. You left. You I left. I actually yeah I left, but then I, I listened to the podcast oh. and I was like, oh that's it was really cool because usually all my friends in this world like I hear their perspective here right. But it's different to hear it on a podcast with other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it brings it to – there's probably a lot of crossover. um, But it brings it to an audience that probably is focused on clubs. And so to hear a perspective from somebody that's not in one but is very much a hardcore motorcycle rider, enthusiast, whatever – I think it's important. Like, I don't care if you join a club, you don't join a club, do whatever makes you happy. I just want you to have perspectives to draw from so that you're just not in this fucking bubble or this echo chamber of your own ideas. Yeah. Like, experience more shit, experience more people, and then make your decision. I believe the whole podcast was, we were, it was coming off the uh, the month trip. Come on, dude. Where are you why are you He's getting further off. I, Why are you I, mean, I, earlier, I saw it earlier on. New, yeah, but every time you do it, you come in like this. <laughs> hey, take it easy. <laughs> you don't just You're slide like over. The court, was, you was, don't the ask, fuck. don't tell. I thought they repealed that shit. Dude. Get on over here, bro. Um, but no, it was it was originally like, hey, we want to get you on because you just spent a month on the road. Like, we just kind of want to get your take. And yeah, that was the. To be honest, that's the first and only podcast I've ever done as far as like a non this one. And I appreciate it. I'm actually doing uh, tomorrow uh, tomorrow night. I'm doing the live for um, uh, Tulane Life. Oh yeah. So, I like <sighs> virtual or what? No. So that you know they do their like Thursday night lives yeah. or something like that every week. Are you so. flying to California? No, I'm just doing it here. Oh okay. Video oh, yeah. just like that. Weren't you out there live in person too? We were both there. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think that one ever made it to air. I think I came in a little hot on that one because I, yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, you know, that's. I was like, no, you know what? I did uh, that one too. And I looked. I was like, no, I guess they, I they, didn't. They, they, <laughs> I guess I didn't do yeah. that one. When we showed up there. We actually were doing the podcast with Galen and Lance, and uh, we came in hot and heavy. And I, no, what happened was we went, we got there, and then they took us to lunch, and we got drunk at the fucking lunch spot. Then we came back, and this is when uh, Little Lance and them just bought the Lowrider S and shit, and they were all doing wheelies out front. And me and Jaden are out there like, 
Yeah, dude, it's cool, dude. I, we just came here to drink and do a podcast. You know what I mean? Like all that shit. And then, then uh, we went in there, did the podcast in the room. It was it was a good time. And uh, but no, dude, I like seeing like, they just. So I was talking to Galen today. They just took over the whole thrashing shop. They expanded their shop. Now they're building a whole new studio and everything, dude. It's so rad. And have you, you know Galen's back like from growing up and stuff like that, right? Yeah. I always feel like when I like have a beer or I talk, and, and he doesn't make you feel this way. It's just like cause knowing his backstory. I'm always like, like my disapproving. Like if I had a disapproving father, like that's what it would be like. Dude, like I always like I'm always trying to be mindful of record. how hot I, I want Galen to be my dad. Right? So fucking if, bad. If he's taking applications, we are. I'm applying. So the funny part about that is when we got to the shop that one day. This is about what thirty an hour before we're even doing the podcast. Like we get there a little early, and it's just they're hanging out doing their thing. And you've met those dudes, but I've somehow I missed them at Surges a couple of times. We like local yeah. coyote, I'd missed them. And we're walking around and stuff, and I'm looking, I'm looking in boxes, going, I wonder if I could snag that sticker and if anybody would really. You try to steal? You try to steal? Not steal, <laughs> but I'm just like, ah, oh, they got a million stickers. Boost. <laughs> and, think, and all of a sudden, you hear Galen go, "Answer the goddamn phone! What do I fucking pay you?" Like he. Bitches at somebody else. I, like, I was like, there's my fucking family. <laughs> like, there's, I relate to this guy. And uh, yeah, that's kind of, he can, oh, fuck, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Kind of walked by. And I think at that point, I grabbed a Coors Light. So he walked by and he's like, saw me with a Coors Light. He's like, I don't know who this fucking guy is, but I don't have time to deal with him. He just like walked by and later he's like, oh, okay. And then obviously once the inter- I was like, oh, hey, dude. He was trying to get security. He was trying to get security. There was definitely a minute where he was like, I don't know who this fucking douchebag is, God but I beer. want him out yeah. of my fucking shop. There's a homeless guy <laughs> trying to steal stickers. There's a bit of your uncle, just you didn't hold, or your dad, you not, didn't hold up the uh, the flashlight good enough. Because, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, he was bitching at fuck about invoices or something, and he just let loose, and it was awesome. I was like, oof, what a great. And like, he'll, <laughs> and, like, he'll have a beer, right? But, like, I remember him, like, Oh, he's that, the nicest fucking guy yeah. in the world after that. We were at, um... I said, I was like, dude, I at one point, I thought you were a fucking major dickhead. It's like, oh, I don't let that fucking bother you. No, come on. <laughs> oh, I am. I am. He's so like, we I had lunch. I was like, oh, dude. I'm. He's like, I thought you were stealing. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember meeting him at the Iron Horse. And, and again, just like how nice he is and like knowing his background and stuff like that and how he grew up. It's like I go to the bar to like get a beer and like I come back to sit down next to him. I was like, is this? <laughs> and he's got a beer like himself. Like he's having, you know, he's like, I'm like, is this okay? Can I, is this, sir? Can I, is this cool? Yeah. He's like, yeah, if he was taking applications for stepkids or whatever, yeah, like, I'd yeah. apply. I would definitely like to be one of his uh, write offs. <laughs> um, but no, like, uh, you know, I met, I met Lance first. I met Big Lance first. And, you know, I was, I was inspired by them by their traveling and stuff like that. But, you know, Galen, Galen and Lance are a great pair because they're very different from each yeah. other, right? But they feed on each other, and that they make a dynamic duo of difference. Mm-hmm. But motorcycles is is a commonality, right? Yeah. And uh, I love that about them. They and both they they're interested in the same shit, but they have different personalities, and that's what makes it an interesting thing. And I love how they break like stereotypes of what you would think of like an older Harley rider or whatever. Especially, you know, obviously Big Lance. And then having Lance Jr. and the X Games and all that, fine, whatever, you might have a perception there. But, like, Galen can fucking ride. Yeah. Galen's a maniac on a Harley. And the stuff that he can do, you just looking at him, perceptions, you wouldn't expect it. And then to see some of the shit he does on a Harley, you're like, God damn. <laughs> what the fuck? That was a fart. <laughs> that was a juicy fart. <laughs> So I guess I just so if he is adopting one of us, I just moved to the front. <laughs> You're definitely fine. It smells like onions. Smells like onions and he's ketchup. Try, he's not trying to change any more diapers. <laughs> ruffles, dude. Dude, that's, I got a I got a sour cream and onion and ruffles. Bro. I got a piss too, but like I don't want to walk behind you now. So hey, just like, go on through it, buddy. Gonna, <laughs> Water's fine. <laughs> we talked about peeves the you other day. You got fucking humid and moist in here. Yeah, I ordered a sandwich the other day at the shop. And I think somebody fucked up on the uh, chip oh, order because they had the candle. Cool Ranch Doritos <laughs> and flaming Hot Cool Ranch Doritos all on this middle shelf. Where previously you used to have <laughs> Ruffles, Sour Cream and Onion Lays, like three different spicy nacho Doritos, like all these good chips I liked. Anyways, it's a, like I said, I filed this under peeves. This is one of those little... <laughs> I you ordered order. a sandwich at the shop. 
What shop? This is uh, Jersey Mike's. Jersey. I, don't know if, I don't know if we can be. <laughs> he ordered a sandwich to the shop. What shop are you working at, buddy? No, I said I ordered a sandwich. I thought I said it was at the sandwich shop. Oh, okay. I, I misread I miss her. Oh, do you think I was trying to be cool? Like, I was like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I was at the, the shop. shop. Uh, what shop? Fucking the doing fucking a bar. In, you fucking Uber eats it to the bar you're at? I was doing some fucking engine mounts. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here, Kyle. I'm not that dude, dude. I've never been. I'll never be. I'm never trying to be. It that wasn't guy. about that. It was we don't like, have any real. Of, you're like you made it seem like you were working at the shop, like no, a hey, shop, like yeah, the sandwich shop. You Uber, <laughs> Jersey Mike's. You Uber eats it to the bar. You were no. you were That's clocked in at. That's another thing. I don't. Wait. Not even the bar that you were working at night. I'm glad you brought up that. This is this is another thing. Uber eats, unless you, unless you're building a motorcycle and you get it. I've, I'm. I've had exceptions before. I'm like, oh, dude, if it's after uh, 2 a.m. you're drunk, whatever, do Uber Eats. Or if maybe you got offices, I'm backing off all those. <clears throat> Just to save a little face now because your little shop joke. Unless you're building a fucking motorcycle show or a motorcycle, I'm going to even say for the FXR tour. Unless you're doing that, if you get Uber Eats, you're a bitch, dude. Like, if you're drunk, fucking brave it. Be fucking better than the cops. <laughs> if you're... If you're, uh, <laughs> what was the other example we had? There was something else. I was like, ah, if you do that, I'm not mad at you. Uh, oh, no, I always had my three. Pizza, Chinese food, and there was one other thing. I was like, ah, those are all delivery free. Get your delivery on those. Otherwise, but yeah, at this point, if you order delivery Uber Eats on anything other than you're trying to get a bike done for the FXR tour, you're a fucking, you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> I, I don't, I live in the fucking boonies. I don't, they came deliver hey, that pizza sounds to bad. my fucking... Be, Hey, don't be so poor. Live closer to the city. Live closer to a fast food place. You, I'm on your side about the fucking Uber Eats shit. Now you're going to fucking turn on me for that? So what yeah, do I do? I Kill myself? Uh, yeah, that's kind of what <laughs> that's I'm doing. That's your only doing. option, yeah. No, I'm God, saying they don't even deliver pizza out where I'm at, let alone a $10 goddamn. $10 extra for food oh, that's not even fresh. A food that's fucking 10 minutes away. I don't know. Maybe I just, I'm so maybe busy. I can't action. go down the street, wait in line to get fresh food, and eat the fries in the car like an adult, and then <laughs> eat the hamburger when I get there. Goddamn bachelor! I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pay Uber Eats. This guy's gonna go sit in line, deal with all the headaches. Right? Thank you. And then I'm gonna get it's it. Ra- it's racist, honestly. If you think about it, <laughs> just just the whole what concept the by itself. It's it's pretty racist, dude. Okay, we're there. I didn't say I didn't say that. I just said eh. I'm just saying like we're there. But yeah, if you don't if you don't have the time, do they do Uber it? Eats in New York City? Of course. They oh do. yeah, of course they do. That's all they. That's and you get all a fucking or is everything just takeout? Like people like riding on bicycles, taking shit everywhere. Bro, I don't even leave their house in New York. New York sucks, dude. Let's be honest. I had a great time. I love New York. I love it. I want to go back so bad. They got a bet. They got the best comedy scene too. Oh. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I don't know. I don't know. That's not even like the. Cunt. That's not even me able. If we to could, if we could go to the cellar right now and see some Shane Gillis, some fucking uh, Andrew Schultz, some of those guys in there, I'd fucking love that. Yeah, I'd love that. Hundred percent. Have you ever seen that that little uh, viral reels uh, Shane doing the Special Olympics one? Doing a Special Olympics, dude. Bit? If you just watch some of the like the last podcast that he did with uh, uh, Matt. On Rogan, where Shane does this thing where he goes like, "Look, dude, I was I I was at this uh, he's stuck in the SEC championship." Yeah, game. he's like, "I just act like a retard." He just put his head down. <laughs> he's like, "Oh yeah, you're a retard." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The way he looks, he's like, "Oh yeah, he checks out." Get him. Get him <laughs> speaking, speaking of, of speaking of people with that disability, uh, Mark. <laughs> Wait, Mark, you Mark said it so professionally. <laughs> Mark says hi. Speaking of, <laughs> I'm all ears, my man. Yeah, Mark. Mark Lex and Mark says hi. Ah. <laughs> hey Mark, yeah, how's I, it I going? Mark, I'll hey buddy, <laughs> uh, you gotta Dude, speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of fucking vets with shitty haircuts, Mark yeah. Sky. <laughs> <laughs> I would defend them, but you know, no, I was, uh, you know what? I, I, I feel bad because he's like he's on vacation, you know, doing his doing his dad thing or whatever. So I feel bad like picking on him. Where do you take his son to? I don't know, probably some Tom Brady weird shit. You see that picture of Tom Brady? Like, <laughs> yeah, making out with his son. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, that's too far. You're gonna lose okay. your you're gonna lose your sponsorship. No, nah, it's, if it's Tom okay. Brady didn't lose his fucking job, I think it would be all right. <laughs> it, the I, fucking the politicians it, that fucking run YouTube love that shit. So Dude, my on Epstein's Island right now. So what was, Tom Brady in that picture? He's like giving his kid like a kiss on the lips. He's like sitting on his Dude. lap or something. Like I'm sorry, making fun of a dad being kid, a good dad. Kid's but, kid tongue. But was his kid's like what 11 or 12? My my youngest is 10, and he was like sitting on my lap playing video games, and I saw that I like pushed him off. I was like, get the fuck off. Get on my lap, faggot. <laughs> you push like you need a boner? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, what, did you get a boner? Like, get the fuck <laughs> We're not doing no more shit together. <laughs> no. Yeah. Why did dad leave, Tom? Ew, dude. <laughs> Easy for all you dudes with dads to laugh. Well, I had to, I had, I told my son, I was There's like, some uh, of us over here going, fuck, dude, I wish, I wish. Well, well would have been son, nice. My son is a quarter inch taller than me now. And I just can't take him on the motorcycle with me anymore. Like, he can't ride on the back anymore. Look over, gay. <laughs> Look over the top of your head like he's on yeah. a crotch rocket. He's like, hey, dude, turn right here. <laughs> like, okay, dude. <laughs> My son has lost motorcycle privileges because he grew out of it. <laughs> nah, dude, I bought you one. Go ride. Yeah. <laughs> he's a quarter inch taller than you and his dick's four inches bigger. <laughs> <laughs> That's the black uh, in him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I knew it. I could feel it <laughs> in my back. <laughs> yeah, he's a teenager. He you can tell when he gets the boner. He just lays the boner down. All, right. he all, just these fucking, down. all these trips over the over the Zing Bridge are getting out of control. <laughs> I gotta quit riding my hooters. <laughs> your, your gun's digging into my hip. <laughs> Gotta get a cam man, son. You need your own seat. <laughs> Actually, we're just gonna take this to the Jeep where you're sitting a, a rep. You know? <laughs> we became uh, car guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mopar life. <laughs> oh, True story. Shit. Thanks a lot, Tom. Bur- Thanks a lot, Mark, for for that segue. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I am gassy. Dude, that might be that shit. Was that was <laughs> that, didn't that have might a, be shit. It wasn't a fart. They can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear shit. Oh, it didn't even have a sound oh, to it. It was a pop. Mm. Uh, so what's next on the list? I don't know. All right, we made fun of Mark. Um, that, was a, that was tacked in. <laughs> yeah, that was tacked in there. I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a paragraph of shit. Yeah, dude. We, we, don't go skimming over that. We, we did more work than us. I mean, Goddamn, you got a list. I like to come prepared. Yeah, that's good. I Jayden come got prepared. a list. We never go over that. <laughs> so yeah, what's on, what's on your list now? Jaden made his own Bullshit. fucking list as you were talking. It was like, he put his arrows. <laughs> <laughs> I got to so be like, honest. Don't I feel like this motherfucker off the floor for the uh, road. I, I don't f- know who these 11 motherfuckers are. I feel like a lot of your uh, peeves center around... Uh, Race? Oh <laughs> no, not so, well. I'm there's kidding. a. There's <laughs> a kidding. I'm kidding. It's. A, I did have a pee. This. I wouldn't even know if I'd call this a recent pee because this happened long enough. Uh, where I was like, ah, it's okay now. But the. Um, do you guys ever get stuck behind people? It's almost as bad as like the guy trying. To, actually, it's a little worse than that. Then the guy like buying like. I'm so excited of, bunch, for where this a is bunch going. Of scratch offs or lottery tickets, and you're just like, oh fuck. I get it. At least this dude's like he's. You know, even if he's wasting a couple of minutes of my life, he's he's going for the American dream, right? This motherfucker's trying to win the lottery. He's he didn't deserve trying it. not to work. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> didn't oh, yeah. it. <clears throat> As it's happened, I'm praying with everything inside me and my ancestors that this cocksucker doesn't win. Like, I'm hoping <laughs> that you just fucking plumb yourself into financial fucking uh, ineptitude. But the next thing worse than that is you know, some guy buying a bunch of scratch-offs and maybe winning one or whatever. Is the guy trying the new technology? The guy that wants to pay with Apple Pay or whatever the fuck it is, where he gets up to the thing and he's like, "Think, think." He's just trying to hit the side of the. Fo- You're that guy at the mach- at the Coke machine at work. Oh well, no, way. this I'm talking about like the racetrack, the the line, like Quick Trip. At like, I mean, the guy trying to move the line faster because your fat ass can't get your goddamn wallet out of your pocket <coughs> fast enough. And you guys, no, let me, me fucking can business I, cards. Chime in on this. I got a great one. This is a dude where I was like. And he kept trying to do it, and his phone wouldn't work. Oh, yeah. And I just, what color was he? he got, uh, <laughs> Dude, that's so racist. He might have been. All right. I'm not going to tell you what color Brown. he was. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. <laughs> that's what that means. Up. That's what that means. He, he might have been dressed like he was the sixth member of, like, the Kings of Comedy tour. 
<laughs> he had a fucking, you were at the gas station on a Sunday? <laughs> he, had a, he had a fucking hat on. He had a fucking too nice of a suit to be pulling this shit at a racetrack. Well, I'm getting fired, dude. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, dude, he, he, he looked like he was a fucking super Bernie Mac fan. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. And I ain't afraid of you, motherfucker. Almost try, at one point, I almost said, He said hey. on every chick on the way out of the fucking gas station. <laughs> at one point, I even almost hey, asked him, like, hey, dude, hey, ma, I'll pay for hey, it. Ma. Just get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> Let me holla, 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 yeah, I, that was one thing where I was like, you know what? If you don't have your fucking Apple Pay or whatever, the thing thing to, to do at the gas station, maybe just pull out your credit card. Because he was like, damned and determined. It was all things like, oh, yeah, no, 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 I got money in this motherfucker. He was, like, he was like, no, my shit works. And where everybody's in the line was like, oh, and he's like, no, no, you no. You ever no. get in the line with some people? Where they're like, that, like, the shit ain't working and they think that it's a money issue. And they start telling people like, "I got money." That's what he said. Yeah, I got money. Yeah, that, he kind of he was like, "My shit works." He's like, "My shit's working." And I was, oh, "I got okay. three thousand dollars." This guy, like, <laughs> the, the fucking guy, the that, hey, bro. <laughs> it may not be a money thing. It might be a Boost Mobile thing, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Get AT and T like a real man. Yeah. Yes, I just hey, to do stop paying monthly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was one of my recent like. Peeves, just hey, just pay. Look at the debit card. Like well, if you if you think you got your Apple phone or your iPay shit or whatever, and even then, you know what? Probably just for being uh, that's a real specific being an grief. asshole about that. Uh, Josh, if you want to resend me a hoodie, <laughs> JC guys, if you change your address on this, this is a PSA. I changed changed my recent uh, address. Yeah, we address heard about it about an hour ago. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> did all that. So guess what? I forgot to change on Apple Pay. So I bought bought a hoodie from a friend in the industry. JC Cycles. Need a new hoodie, right? Been wearing the same play down shit for a while. I know, Josh. I'll get you hooked up. So, ding, ding. I do it Apple Pay. It's like, ooh. even though I felt, I was like, oh, this feels so fucking lazy. Like, I should just type out all the fields. I'm going to use Apple I Pay. I love it. I love it when that could just, Dude, like, it went to the wrong. Print. I immediately got an email saying, it's going to this address. I screenshot it, sent it to Josh. Go, hey, dude, I fucked up. Apple Pay is wrong at this. Please send this. He goes, oh, it's a third-party ah, company. I'll who's s- got the blackest ass now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I said to him, he's like, God. He's like, hold on, let me see what I can do. Tim and Sarah got a text message. He's like, gotcha. About a week later, I got a message. It's going, delivered to the wrong address. <laughs> That's because he has a mullet. <laughs> same guy stole your bike, stole your hoodie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, that's the thing. I thought, oh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you about what I thought about since then. But Did you go Did you go there? Oh, I thought about going like. Yeah, you know the fucking. Hanging out by the you know the landlord, bitch, right? <laughs> Hit her up. Not, but not good enough like that, no. You can't just be like, hey, what'd you do? <laughs> I, like, I, I, on the car, I, I, yeah. I thought about it for three hard days going should i message josh and i was like it's on his fuck up right like i'm the asshole that didn't update my like why should he have to pay for that no i'm right? saying you the peep the lady at the apartment no dude, that's what i was asking did you like did you message her because i've i reached to them as about something else once about uh males like and they dude they act like male is them a male which motherfuckers come through and like leave your, they're like oh, i don't live here no more and just leave your shit they act like males the most Secure, like national security. Like, oh no, you're not getting back in this mailbox. Oh, you lived here for four years. You ain't getting back in this mailbox. Not without a fucking right of Congress or something. It's like, yeah, the fuck out of here, dude. I'm trying to get my W two. You cunt. Like, you can't. They couldn't even, dude. They'll they'll track. They'll hold that mail down on lock. But your bike's free to go. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't that some shit? (laughs) So, did you get the hoodie? No. No. Well, do you need a new hoodie? No. Like I said, this was, uh, I felt bad because I'd just been wearing the same. Up. I finally brought, I was like, you know what? Well, he, we spent a lot of money on hoodies while we were in California. <laughs> I, I'll call, I'll call He Jay. was wearing it earlier, I'll but he you. changed, you know, for, he got oh, to get or the character. power plant one for sure. Dude, I'll reach out to Jay. I'll get you a left lane syndicate. I'll be like. Is that a right lane? Does that have anything for the right lane? <laughs> yeah, we're having, that, we're having that conversation. Right lane cruisers, yesterday. baby. <laughs> well, all, the, all the real crime. I'm kind of down a bitch. Right I like to ride the right lane a lot of times. Yeah. Like, is there like a right lane is for crime too? Because I'm over, I'm in the right lane, drunk as hell, baby. <laughs> like I'm, I'm over there just breaking all kinds of lane, all kinds of laws. I got guns on me. I got drugs on me. I'm just not going fast. So like, yeah. why can't the right lane be uh, for crime too? Right lane is for bootlickers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, on, on your story about like a... So PSA, 
If you got Apple Pay and you haven't fucked with it long, you change your address, change it on fucking Apple. You know, I know that's. Do y'all have any of those gas stations where you have like one cashier, (laughs) but then you have like three self checkout ones? Yeah. And then you walk, like every morning I go to the same gas station, I get a monster and a water. For free. I wish. (laughs) I'm not Jaden. Chicken sandwiches. But like, like there'll be a line to the door, and I walk up and get in line, and I'm looking at everybody else. Like, I'm trying to make eye contact to understand, like, are y'all all all paying cash? Is everybody here paying cash, or nobody's going to use the self checkout? You know what I mean. And I, and I feel guilty, like walking past them, like. Yeah, y'all, like you're doing something yeah, wrong. That, that's when you use that self checkout, and guess what? This is how you do it. Boop, boop. I'm at the door. Yeah. Go in the bag. And walk the fuck out, dude. That's it. That's Good like little, job later that's on. Transaction. That's two items. Jaden scan. He left with seven. That's what I'm <laughs> no, listen. Boop, boop. That's how you really do it. That is, you're mistaken. That's not the scanner. That's my voice. Boop, boop. And you fucking walk out, dude. You're out. If all these fucking idiots want to go through, it, look, and there's. Uh, <laughs> At some point, are we not getting smarter as a society? <laughs> Seriously. At some point, this is like... Conquisters. There's like... If you, if you deer hunt, all these fucking dumbass deer sitting around there eating off the corn feeder like, oh, this sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> then you got one deer that finds a way to like not eat out of it. He kind of like... And just dips on... Dude, who's the fucking... Who's... The, what does that have to do with stealing from a convenience store? Evolution. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> Jay's the oldest buck Bucky around. What is he saying? Yeah. You wouldn't get it. Yeah. Jay said he's a 13-point buck. <laughs> they never get to grow that 13th point because <laughs> they dumb. <laughs> oh, shit. Motorcycles, right? Deer hunting. Oh, man. It's a new year, right? 2023? Is this, like, any anything this year, like, you're excited about? Well, yeah, right, Inc. But are you going to, you guys going to come do the Midwest? We are doing the Midwest, yeah. but we're not going to do the 120th. Yeah, no. You've already been in Milwaukee. You've been in Milwaukee. Skip it. Yeah. Fuck Milwaukee. I'd well, love, love to be in Milwaukee. It just doesn't end. I love Milwaukee, but, like, there's so many other... Like, if you're doing it to, like, hit spots you haven't seen, mm-hmm. there's so much better riding. Like you said, in Iowa, in Minnesota, in the Dakotas, in northern Wisconsin. Down, Where are you meeting us? I don't know. I mean, if you come from North Dakota, I'd go to North Dakota. Duluth. I love that. Meet us in Duluth. Okay. We're going, all the way, we're going wrapping around all the way down into Chicago. If, if, if you go to Duluth... <laughs> I forget what the what the highway is, but I mean, you can take it. It follows Lake Superior the whole way to to the Canadian border, and it's cool. So you're fucking up right there. Okay, we're on a path. We're not on a path of deviation. And even then, I want to I want to run that back a minute. If some if fuck us, somebody that's coming up for the 120th, if you as being where you live, where you're from, you know the area. If somebody was coming up, let's say they were little club, no little club, whatever the fuck they want to do, what would you suggest doing? If you're coming up there for the 120th, if that's a, if you're your, oh, Harley, 120th, we got to, you're telling your fat fucking wife, oh, this is what we got to do, honey. What are you doing? Delete I'm, trading company. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends what you're into. Like, if you want to ride and, and see shit, then you should get outside of Milwaukee. Oh. If you want to experience the rally because you're into Harley, it's 120th, then you should go to the museum. You should go to yeah. Juno Avenue and see the plant. If you want more, you know, what's the right word? If you want more today's scene type stuff, then you should go see what House of Harley's putting out. If you want music, you know, they got, okay, they got Green Day and the Foo Fighters, but they got smaller acts like Cody Jenks, who are fucking awesome from Texas. So really? it really kind of depends on on what yeah, you... He is He is pretty good. Isn't he from yeah. Fort Worth? Mm, I don't know where he's from, but it's... He's got a, he's got a couple good songs. Yeah. He's pretty... A couple? Fuck, they're all good. But anyway... Yeah, it, it's a bit, you're right, you're I don't right. like country music, so it's all good. <laughs> oh, here we go. He's fucking 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends what you're looking for. I like music. I don't listen to rap I think that... I like rap music. The House of Harley's <laughs> getting ready. They're going to put on some some cool shit. And then, you know, I mean, if you want that kind of... Like, people think about rallies, right? They think about that, like, the pop-up tent with the shitty jewelry and all that stuff. There's going to be that. If you need some Harley wraparound <laughs> sunglasses and a bandana, there's going to be that. If that's your jam, that'll be there. Um, Milwaukee Harley is connected to a strip club. So if you want to park your bike in a parking lot, get annihilated and get kicked out of a strip club,
Strip Club, you can. So I think you kind of have to. I feel like when Milwaukee has events, the part that sucks Dude, is the chicks at the Milwaukee strip clubs have tans. Do they have tans? Yeah. They got Hopefully not, they, baby. Because <laughs> you want some, you want some chalk white bitches out there. Well, Come on. I, I mean, with red like hair? cheese curds. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I mean. There's two like a cheese curd. I want I want those sea section scars looking like elevation changes right. on a map, baby boy. I, mean. <laughs> I want to see it going from brown to white to yellow. <laughs> All over you. Dan girl, is that a bruise? <laughs> it's a bullet wound. I bruise easy. <laughs> I've been working in Milwaukee. That guy time. tried to bite me one day. <laughs> they eat oh, bitches no. up in this motherfucker. So are you going to go through northern Wisconsin and then through the UP of Michigan and then yeah. come over the bridge? That's the plan. Um, I did, I really wanted to go to Detroit. Um, that was one of the, my bigger things I want to do. But in order to make this whole trip kind of like cohesive, since we had to split up into two trips, uh, we're going to kind of hug the western border of uh, Michigan all the way back down into Chicago. And then Chicago, we're going to ride 66 all the way back down to Tulsa and then – or. To Joplin, we're gonna do a big party at uh, Frank Speed Dealer. He bought a spot on Route 66. He's turning into the, like the first biker destination. It's gonna be on the podcast uh, I released with a uh, Speed Dealer later this month. So we're gonna do a big party there. He's got a speakeasy set up this this uh, this historic building he bought. He's refurbishing it, turning it into a destination for motorcyclists. And then from there, we're gonna ride through. Password is nutsack. Yeah, <laughs> for the speed sweep. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have a password, and you're gonna have I to hope fucking follow saying directions. Nutsack now, every time I show up. Yeah, yeah, nutsack, hundred <laughs> percent. Frank's the Frank's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. I I can't wait for everybody to meet him. I'm stoked. Um, and then we're gonna kind of like from Joplin, we're gonna go through. I think we're gonna do Hot Springs the next day. Uh, right. Uh, yes. We're, we're gonna go through Eureka Springs, Springs then but going then we're gonna do Hot Springs yeah. and then Hot Springs home. So, are you I, gonna do the uh, the new vacation thing? What is that? That's remember they go to Ar- they go to Hot Springs, Arkansas. Oh, did th- I brought that? So yeah, uh, the uh, the the pet rat. Yeah, the pet rat thing. That we did that on the on the what's the name's podcast? Um, With Craig. No, not Craig. It was wasn't it Craig? I thought it was Tony King Tony. No, I think it was Craig. Either one, like we were, we were did the whole like a uh, is vacation is what yeah, it is, yeah, the newer the new version vacation, of yeah. vacation. Oh yeah, it was with Craig. It was Craig. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. that's where they went, right? It was Hot Springs or whatever, and the guys like, you can take this back way in. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, thank you, man. Hey, yeah. what, what, what's your pet rat's name? <laughs> 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 I think about that one. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Have you ever been to Detroit before? No, I haven't. Uh. Uh-uh. And there's no way you can make it, like just with the time schedule. No, um, I think you would enjoy Detroit. Like, just well, it's one of those places I I don't, you know, the thing about like our trips is our trips is like it's it's we all come to the table and we figure out what we all want as a collective, right? So we all sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You know, some people want this, I want this, they want this. We we all have to come to a, an understanding of like this isn't my trip, it's not your trip, it's our trip. So mm-hmm. we all have to fucking in, like meet in the middle, right? And it made more sense with all the things we wanted to hit to make certain sacrifices on the trip. And uh, yeah, I wanted to I wanted to reroute the dudes through Des Moines. I wanted to go hit up Kung Fu Tap. I wanted them to, to experience that. But for us to be able to hit all the states we got to hit and do what we got to do, North Dakota's bitch ass. That's what we got. That's yeah, North Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota fucked it all up for us because we got to touch that. And so there's certain things that's not going to happen. But the thing is, is like. You know, we have all these things that, uh, you know, we want to do as well. It's, um, you know, you're trying to. What I like about the fact that we have a group of friends, we're figuring out where we want to go, how we want to do things is that you have everybody coming to the table to figure something out and to put their, their, their two cents in. So you don't feel like completely obligated for everybody else's uh, happiness. Right. Yeah. Everybody's put in, so everybody enjoys it the same way. We all had our ideas we put on the table, and we all figured it out. So the goods, the bads, the goods and the bads, we all experience it the same way. It's not like, oh, this is a good because of his idea or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, no, there's a lot of cool places I, we would love to go on the trip. 
Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> do you want to let it out? The trip? No, no. <laughs> oh, they did the... You're really leaning into that, eh? It's the end of it. Am I wrong? I didn't. I don't be a man. Like <laughs> <laughs> could, have, could have pushed some hair in that butthole yet. <laughs> Shit. Good luck. They don't grow in there no more. <laughs> Uh, Too much okay. acid shits and I'm Vaseline. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jace. This guy was worried about Toast. how much I'm drinking, and I think he cut you off. Uh, I didn't have a great point to begin with. So, <laughs> just you knew Last of Us episode. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they lost me after they after they fucking after the fucking butt. bearded guy started making up. Dude, that was a after, Ron, after, after, Ron, after Ron had to get butt fucked. Uh, all right, well, you. Hey, I wasn't for sure. He might be actually. Top. He did not get butt fucked. <laughs> he was on the bottom. He's a power bottom. Yeah, that's, that means you got butt, yeah, fucked. butt fucked. He was yeah, on the bottom. Exactly what that means. Our like, bottom butt meaning, fucked hard. He was the one no, he was on no, the bottom. No, he was pushing no, his ass dude. back. Is that not where a power bottom is? Well, who the fuck's the bottom? The means you take it. <laughs> yeah. No matter no matter what kind of bottom you are, you, you I have bottom. lost my whole understanding of what a power bottom was. No, what it's when you push back. What does you think the bottom meant? Yeah, you it means that like someone's riding you and you're the one that's fucking. No, thrusting. you're on the bottom. Yeah. No, you're in the back pushing back. But you're on the bottom when you're on the bottom. So yeah. the power, no, power bottom seen. is the one that's like, oh, you fucking like that? Fuck that ass harder. Like, that's a power bottom. That's why James, James asshole doesn't have any hair. <laughs> <laughs> so Jones is the power bottom you know. That's like the, the one what power bottom you know. What is a power bottom? <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Wait, of course, of course fucking she's offended. You yeah. yeah. All right, let's take series of fucking what homophobic bitch. power bottom? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, dude! <laughs> You're way wrong, dude. Yeah. James, Jason's been calling himself a power bottom this whole time. <laughs> I'm straight out here fucking dudes. Power say, bottom huts and son. <laughs> what is a power bottom? Here's what I found from Wikipedia: A power bottom is someone who aggressively enjoys being the receptive partner. Dude, that's so fucking raw, dude. dude they did my man <laughs> yeah, wrong like that. <laughs> wow, I couldn't, you know what? I, it's not that I don't care that that it's 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 got a homosexual couple. And that's fine. I learned. But why did Ron have to be the bottom? That's the part I don't. He might not be. But he was the bottom. But he was he the dude was riding him. So he ain't gay, dude. <laughs> no, that means he's the top. No, no, Ron was the bottom. Yeah, Ron was the bottom. Ron was the he was the male. That's no the guy bottom. fucking Ron would have been the male, right? They're no. both fucking males. Obviously, we need to get more educated. We're talking to about a fucking thing. <laughs> both fucking males, fucking males. We're talking about a fucking show that's based oh, off a video game where none of the dudes are gay. This is a video game where everybody was fucking. No, I thought we're trying to fit one code. They were, they were, right? they were gay in the video game. No, they fucking weren't. <laughs> yeah, they were called partners, dude. Get the fuck out of it. Yeah, this there's is a whole Have you watched it yet? yet? I saw a thing that said they were not gay in the video game. No, they are gay. Oh, yeah, yeah. what? I hate no, gays. No, they said. That's what they said. That the gay annotations were not in the video game. That's. But they added them. In no, the show. what they said in the what? What I'm playing the game fucking right now. Yeah, it's implied. I'm replaying it again to like relive it as I'm watching it because <laughs> like, I'm there. Because yeah. you know in the game, like, hold on, we need to update this. So this is what happened. Is it back back down he, eight of thrust? He talks about the the guy talks about <laughs> in the game. About this situation as my partner. He mm -hmm. says my partner, my partner. Yeah. And that interpretation can be a lot of things. But the way the story Maybe plays out cops, in the game. Dude. Maybe the way, that, the way it, it translates in the game was when he, there's this whole kind, this whole thing is not in the game. The two characters are in the game, but the story that was like portrayed through uh, HBO is not in the game. In the game, you meet Ron or the guy, I uh, forget his name. Um, the character played by Ron Swanson in the show. Well, no, Ron Swanson's a character. Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman, yeah. Nick Offerman. He plays a character. He's a prepper. That's who he is in the game. But in the game, at the end of the cuts or end of the the sequence that you're doing the game with this guy, you get to this house where his partner hung himself. He couldn't get out of it, so he just died. So he wouldn't have to get ate by the whatevers, right? And there was this cut scene where it's like, yeah, you know, it, he. Considered him his partner the whole time, but at the time when he died, it was kind of like a, 
it could be interpreted as gay or not. It really can be. It's really open to interpretation. To for for my uh, for my career, I would like to say that I'm totally supportive of all of it. I am only upset the fact that they made. Was Ron it not Ron. a good game? Was it not a good yeah, episode? Though? Fun, oh, uh, I feel like you're setting me up. The game's fun. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> was was the episode no, not like good? It. I'm in. Yes, I'm into this show. Uh, if, of all the like pushing gay shit on you. In, in, in Hollywood, yeah. was that not at least... Yeah, it, do, it does suck when you take the most manly man of, like... The funniest dude, like, yeah. Like the, why, I eat my steak, yeah, you like, know, why couldn't this you take, guy, why the whiskey, did, you know, all this why shit. Why couldn't you take Steve Carell? Literally Carrell. owns a... Uh, Steve Carell making Steve Carell would have been a great power bottom. <laughs> Nick Offerman owns a wood shop and does woodworking for real. He was working with some wood, all right. Yeah, no shit. But Steve Carell would have been a much better power bottom. Everybody's over here talking about riding and shit, like... Fucking nerds! No, this is a, that We're was talking later. about power bottles, bro. Grow up. <laughs> Just da- oh, was talking about Dave, the last of us. He, fast he life camp out, about. calling you out. Cole's about to be a power bottom. Laconia week on hundredth. Oh, Laconia, get the fuck out of here, Laconia! What? You bunch of fucking nerds up north do something, and I don't fucking hear about it. Does it happen? Get the fuck out! <laughs> what? Be a fucking bunch of Eskimos. Get the what? fuck out of here. Laconia Where was hate for Laconia. Lie, that riding was I'm fucking joking. dope. He said, "I'm joking." Out of here. Fuck some, I, I, Laconia is great. It's just the wrong time Laconia's of year for us. We're always traveling. We, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like. I want to go to Laconia at one point in time, but I don't know. I don't know. You know when I'll go? Well, when I decide to make it fucking cool. Is when I'll <laughs> I will say that, like, this is this last year we're cu- clearing up all 48 states. We're kind of open to a lot of options now. Do you think that we're going to fucking be able to nail down what we want to do next year without any, like, we've, we all, we, we've had more opposition going in, like, the further we've got down. Now we're at a point where, like, yes, the goal is to, Clear all 48. We're going to do it at all costs. After this, dude, I have my art, my, I have my heart set on three or four different parts of the country, and I'm doing them next year. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, well, so I kind of knock them out on one week trip. So now I what feel I weird talking about this with an outsider uh, in the room, but uh, yes, this is our podcast. I'll fuck Dave. The, uh, <laughs> no, it's as much as um, you guys heard me in the planning trip where I was like, Guys, we don't have to do it all this year. We could do like one more next year. Like, I just want to kind of drag along. I was like, the just eight of the eight of us. Like the the fucking episode three last that was, was for him. Shut the fuck up, dude. But there's one thing I was like, guys, we could always do it uh, a little bit next year and just drag this out. Because yes, I am. If you want to know the truth about it, I'm a little bit not scared, but okay. I am scared about like when the. When we do all this, all of a sudden it's like, uh, oh, well, we don't have to, you know what I mean? I've got fucking business shit I got to do, and somebody else has a kid shit to do, and whatever the, f- you know what I mean? I'm, dude, it's gonna be over after the, this year. The thought of all eight of us, what we've been doing, like stopping that, it, it sucks, dude. dude. I don't want to, you know we, what I mean? We've we've had a great run. We're gonna we're gonna. This, no, is, dude, this is why this is why I don't break out good. I'm, I'm like a part of the divorce. I'm like, no, it doesn't have to end. After Fuck this. this year, like we're gonna hit these states. We're gonna hit fifty eight or all forty eight together, and then you know what? We're gonna probably run it back in about ten years. We're all fifty two <laughs> years old. I'm not gonna be alive in ten years, dude. <laughs> Straight up, I'm just not. Well, you might be the reason why we decide no, to get back together y'all. and do a dude, trip. I'm gonna the whole fucking yeah. trip, dude. Hey guys, guys, I know we haven't talked in years, but should we do this reunion tour oh, since dude, Jaden died? The case. Oh Lord, let me be a fucking axe that you pulls should, out on every one of these motherfuckers. You should make, <laughs> you should make like a <laughs> treasure map. <laughs> you should make a treasure map that they have to follow. No, like he's gonna die and give a, dude, a you long think they instruction. That much? Are you kidding me? If I left them destruct uh, instructions or something, you think they wouldn't go at my funeral? Go, yeah. So just get open up the garage door, and shake like, it. Crumble up, crumble up their back. Go, yeah, fucking. He's probably on cocaine when he wrote this. <laughs> fuck this. Dude. Like dump it right next to my prayer card or whatever the fuck you. The, what's the fucking the obituary uh, shit? Yeah, the uh, fucking the thing that gives you like the 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 run sheet for your funeral. They would crumple it up right with that. Like, ah, There's only one guy team. in our group like, no, Jaden really wants to do this, and everybody's like, dude, fuck Jaden, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even here anymore. It's exactly <laughs> how He's exactly not even gonna know. <laughs> Let's don't say we did. You know what I mean? Uh, so where are the three you want to do after this, dude? I want to do. I want to do a hyper focus trip. Uh, from Salt Lake to uh, Glacier National Park in like a 350 mile radius of that. Yeah, and um, we do that. I want to do a hyper focus trip on 
uh, Arizona and SoCal, like just Arizona, like all the areas. Tijuana. That, I don't, I'm not. I'm not interested in Mexico at all. That's because you don't have a passport. <laughs> Maybe, but I'm also I'm not interested in it because <laughs> that's, that's it's kind of like go. no. It's I, I mean it's kind of like you know uh, Tijuana's there. You're in fucking no, it, San Diego. That, you're a, there. That's it's a gimmick. I want to go there to do this. I heard a story. Yeah, knock no. it off on our bikes. No, I I want to do all the shit in Arizona that that's not on the beaten path that we've passed. We still do that. We've only ridden through Arizona in a very small way. You know it's what I'm saying? It, so, I'm calling this right now. This motherfucker's gonna buy gonna he's gonna build like a eighteen hundred dollar chopper, right? He's gonna build something he can ride down there where if he gets where if he gets robbed, cool. <laughs> he's gonna wanna do fucking Mexico at some point. He's gonna go, guys, come on, just fucking no. ride it on your I ride it on your cheap bike. We're all gonna go, what the fuck, dude? Like you got us down here. What are we doing? I wanna ride to Mexico, dude. <laughs> no, this I, is gonna be a full Mexico trip. I just wanna at least kiss that motherfucker. I don't wanna do t- I don't wanna tire. do some half ass shit like I want it when I do Mexico. It's because I'm going through Mexico down south, so I'm saving down south that. Where? What does that mean? I want to go America. all the way to Argentina. I want to do the whole thing. Danger dancing right, right now. now. That well, is what? A, that is a you dream. Pan of my, America. I don't give a fuck what I do. I do it on a fucking BSA for all. But I give that's a shit what I'm saying. At. But that's a whole different trip than going. It is, and that's why I don't give a fuck about Mexico in the current state of what I'm riding and what I'm doing. When Mexico happens, it's because Mexico is a is a step one. I don't go ever talk. It's a step one for. A, a very long trip down south, and I don't, I don't really, I want to do it. I don't really care about the BDR, the or the what is it, the El Diablo. El Diablo. Yeah. I don't care about that. That doesn't fucking get my juices. Jay's gonna going. buy. Jay's gonna buy his first BMW, going to Mexico, and he's gonna get decapitated by the cartel. For his maybe. Shit. Uh, I'm not <laughs> gonna. Fine, do I'm fucking going to. Go to Mc- but he should have gone. My, he, my goal is to, to do that. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna be a solo trip. I don't know if it's gonna be a trip with with. Current friends or new friends or whatever. I don't know what it's going to look like, but that's my Mexico goal. And I don't give a fuck about Mexico until that goal is happening. Straight up. There's still a million things in America that I want to do. Have What's you looked at how long it would take one? you to get to Argentina? Huh? Do you, have you looked at how long it would take you to do it round trip? How many days? Uh, honestly, I, I've looked at a lot of things, but at the same time, I've, I'm bouncing ideas off of like, like Danger Dan and I have talked quite a bit. He's currently down there. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's supposed to come back. We're going to do the podcast again and catch up on on his ideas. But there's a lot of ways to do that trip. And I think that he might be unveiling a way to do it that's more understandable. He rode down, left the bike, flew home, took care of shit, flew back, rode further, left the bike, came home. You know what I mean? Because I don't know if I could be gone for three months. <coughs> But I don't want to, like, rush through these places the way we've rushed through certain parts of America because we only have two weeks to do a trip. No. You you know? I would almost say you can't do it that way yeah. because the way things happen, bikes break you down, whatever the fuck. And maybe we'll, I think Dan's done it the best way as far as you got to – Got to be able to fly in and out and leave yeah. your bike at certain spots. And I've never him really, and his bike may be a lot different for you. And yeah, I mean, I'm not going to do it on a bike that's a, a fifty thousand, seventy thousand dollar bagger. I'm going to so, do it on a fucking bike that, like, you know, yeah, it's going to have insurance. So in Arizona, like, like what they show in the in the opening sequence of the Mayans, can you actually? I think that's in California, but like, so like the border states, Texas, Arizona, California, whatever. Can you actually ride your motorcycle along the the fence along the border? In some parts you can, but okay. not. It's you can ride it. Is that as cool as it seems? Like I've, I've never done it, so I don't know. So all I have like, riding through concept. El Paso and seeing Juarez is pretty surreal. I feel like that would be like that's something I would want to do. Like, I've never been that far south. Uh, when you ride through, when you go to Terralingua and you leave Presidio, going back to Terralingua, you ride literally along the river to some points where you can like. There's a spot in Terralingua you can cross the river for like breakfast tacos. Uh, li- physically, you can either like walk across folklore. It, or it doesn't exist. Not a video. I saw the video. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It's not real. So okay. what happens is there's a town. It's on Terralingua. It's in Big Bend. Big Bend, that's right. And what they, they say is, like, you can go across, and there's a town right across so you can see it. I'm right here. It's you can't right see there. it. No, it says it's like a couple and miles. And they say you can just walk across it. And they said, but they forgot to tell everybody about the fucking customs checks point right there, <laughs> where if you don't have a passport, you cannot walk across this motherfucker <laughs> and get tacos. Oh, see, this is passport shit again. Yeah. <laughs> You go, go, you go in. It's it's the craziest shit, right? So did, did you try it? Yes. Oh, okay. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking bullshit. So there's <laughs> there's a very nice place with Turn air conditioning. White boy. Okay. A very nice place with air conditioning and a fence. So the fence is like, here's the walkway to go to Mexico, and the fence goes out like ten feet on each side of it. 
right? So you you can walk around it, <laughs> right? But you go, you park here, you go in, like, yeah, I want to go over there and get the tacos. I heard they were great. Uh, passport. Is it's it like cool. a custom agent? Like, just chill yeah. there? Okay. He's got a gun and everything. <laughs> he's, like, and watching the 10-feet of fence. He's, like, pull out your... Uh, yeah, your passport and your ID, and then you know we'll we'll let you know if you can go across. I'm like, I I heard, yo, <laughs> I heard we just gotta have an ID and we can get across to eat some tacos. He goes, you heard wrong, son. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll go fuck myself. Do y'all have <laughs> chips here? He's like, can I'll I, fuck, can I'll I get fuck some, you for have you. sneakers or something? Because I just rode here <laughs> thinking I was gonna get some fucking tacos, and now I can't get across the border because I just am an American citizen. That's all I am. You know, I can't go to this town that's connected to anything else because there's no other way. Like, this town lives in a fucking, like, it's a bubble, right? You you, you could get a passport. Fuck a passport. Jace is trying to keister back some cocaine, <laughs> baby. No, well, the, the crazy thing is you leave there and you go to this lookout point. You're like, I can walk over there right fucking now, dude. I can walk. Now with that eagle-eyed border, he's on you. Anyway, uh, it's Jace a bullshit. Is, Jace is the fastest guy in the West, dude. I think it's chopping, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. But no, it's. Hey, what's the third I, trip? I, you, I said, you said Mexico. You said. Or not, I did Mexico, not say sorry. Mexico. You said SoCal. You said. So I Mexico. said I want to do. Uh, I want to do a hyper focus trip in the uh, in the area of Salt Lake to yeah. Glacier National Park. Mm -hmm. I want to do a hyper focus trip to Arizona in Southern California, meaning like Salt and Sea, all those places around it, like uh, uh, Salvation Ma Mountain, uh, Glamis, all that shit. Right, uh, Jerome, fucking. Where's the place the comedian's from? Bisbee. Yeah. Uh, Biz is it Dan Hope. Yeah. yeah. Bisbee. All that. I want to do a hyper focus trip in New York and New upstate New York, New York City, and like the Adir How do you say Adirondacks? Adirondacks. Adirondacks. Adirondacks yeah. I want to do that. That's like the three main things I want to do, and I really don't give a fuck about anything else. So Bruce, like, hey, let's go to Florida again. <laughs> Kill yourself. <laughs> There's nothing about that, that state I ever want to go back you say to. Say that until you're like, all right, it's uh, November and I'm going. No, to no, I, no, I'm going to do that again. That's my. That is the only Florida anybody gets out of me is down south, and when we go to the Keys, that's it. Daytona can go fuck itself, and anything else in Florida can fuck itself. You're saying trips. You're, well, you're talking about right now. Just to clarify. You're talking about trips for us, for the friends. That no, we I'm talking about what I'm going to do. Y'all motherfuckers can come along if you want. We, oh, I'm not after sure. we I'm get off sure. this trip, after we do this 48 states, and we sit on the table again, and everybody starts going, well, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. I'm going to be like, if if nobody puts on something on the table that I'm interested in, I'm just out. I'm done. I'm out. I get that I'm not going like, okay, this is a, I, I'm committed to having to do this trip. But do you know we're all going to come to the table with this this table with ideas. Let's do a week in Colorado. We've talked about this. Let's do a week in this state. Let's do a week in this state. Let's do whatever the fuck. You know it's going to come correct at some point. And I'm with you. I'll do the ones where I'm like, ah, I fucking don't want to do it. I'll go too. But you know it's going to come correct. With we're This isn't then. We've talked about it. Like, that's part of the reason of getting through these 48s is so we can, as a group, do this stuff. Like I think that half the dudes are, they got plans that they're going to do that doesn't involve riding anymore. I'll be honest with you. Okay, that's where I agree with life changes. You got to wiggle in your room for some people wanting to fucking build a house. Some people want to whatever. What if some dude in our group says, hey, I want to be my chick on this trip? Well, I mean, they're, what? What one of our chicks is going to want to go on this trip? What are we talking about? Well, I, I didn't say the chick wanted to go. I think the dude <laughs> wants his chick to go. Oh. And then when that happens, how do you, like, I'm not going on that trip. It'll... I'm with you. It'll be interesting right? to see once we get once we get the 48 done. I don't know. This, this, this is like watching mom and dad he's fight. Like, he, like, he's spending the night in somebody's house, and then the parents are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, all of us that like listen to the Fast Life podcast are trying to figure out who the outsider is. Like, oh, I bet it's that motherfucker. But that, that that's the thing is we've talked about this for so long where at some point, yeah, we are going to knock off, and then it is going to change. And that's I almost like that because it's almost like, like for everybody that's watching, it's a, hey, this happens, right? Like, you've got to figure it out. And what are we going to do? And, and again, that's, dude, it breaks my fucking heart because, yes, it scares me to think that that next trip, that somebody's going to go, you know what, I got to focus on this, I can't do it. But honestly, because of the group we have with the trip, that, with the group that's done all these, that's knocked off all these states, there's something about where if somebody needs to go and do this or they can't attend because of this, I'm kind of cool with it. 
because they're not doing something we're not doing together. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. They're not leaving anybody. It's one of the things like, we're going to do this extra hard now. And if you're not there, that's fine. You were there on the original. You were on the, the maiden voyage of it, and I get it. We're all pulling. Fuck, I like to think of us. This this friend group is we'll all be pulling for. Yeah, there'll be ball busting for sure, but we'll all be pulling for somebody, whether it's so-and-so that's building a house or so-and-so having a kid or whatever the fuck. We'll all be able to go, ah. Kids are gay. Houses <laughs> are... I need a house. But you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, the, I, I totally well, get what you're saying. To clarify what I was saying before I walked away... <sighs> stairs um <laughs> so for the last five years people have got to be on this podcast listen to us have these amazing journeys <clears throat> the bittersweet thing is that for some of us i feel like the journeys are they're not coming to an end but they're coming to a head where the journeys don't align with each other right so <sighs> fuck hold on i feel you, I feel you. <laughs> there's not that many stairs dude I used to make fun of too, but I'm there. So, the thing is that the people in our group that are probably going to be going down different paths, I respect it, and I love it. Doug, not you, too. Dude, not you, too. The microphone didn't pick it up. Take it easy. <laughs> Just dry snitching. <laughs> he is dry snitching. He so, uh... Hands. <laughs> <laughs> you, better go, you better go check on that one. But, yeah, so the, the, the thing is that, like, uh... In a perfect world, I think that like it would be great if we all was on the same page and we all rode the wave together for the rest of life, and we you know rode bikes. The thing is that like I think that we all got to come to understand that that as five years of riding bikes together, hanging out, if we come to the table next year and we're not on the same page of what we want to do or what we need motorcycles to fill with each other, then we're at that crossroads where we have accomplished this thing, but we don't have a major goal within each other. To continue doing this, we have individual things we want to experience. Yeah. And so there is, it's a bittersweet thing. It's right, right. It's a bittersweet thing where uh, I don't want it to be something that we're all like, we're, we separate and start doing our own thing because we hate each other. It's not that. It's all love. But it's a hard place to understand that we all have different needs and wants out of motorcycling at that point. And I think that we're going to come to that this this next year, and um, hopefully we can all handle it in a in a very professional way, and maybe we can all find another common goal together to continue and find and, and try to achieve something together. I'm not saying that I'm not going to ride with anybody else after this trip, but I think that some guys who have publicly said what they want to do with themselves are going to be on another path, and that path has nothing to do with anything I want to do in my life. But I don't, when I say that, it has nothing to do with my life, but that's his life. And I want him to do his thing, and I respect that, and I love him, and I love his, his direction, but that's him. That ain't me, and I ain't doing that shit. And I ain't trying to do that shit with his old lady on the trip either. <laughs> and that's just respect, 100%. It's no animosity. It's just honest. It's just, hey, look, let's, hey, look, I don't want to do that. I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a. I think at, at the end of this summer's trip, everything goes as, as planned. We get everything done we want. But there's a fucking sick tattoo lined up. Somebody designs it. Everybody gets it. And then. You don't have a tattoo at all. And then. Nah, take it easy, mister. I got a bunch of tattoos. Some of us don't have all. Some of us. This means something. Shut up. Did they have a Gryffindor for some Hey, time? take it easy. That's Oliver Peck. Harry Potter, that's what he's saying. It wasn't a Gryffindor. He's trying, he's trying it was to a plan fucking... A, it was a bubblegum machine. He's, he's, trying to, he's trying to plan an adult vacation to fucking you. Orlando. What I'm saying, you fucking fucks, is <laughs> we get a fucking... After we after we knock off the 48, we get a tattoo that's just something generic. It doesn't include 48, and we leave it fucking open where there's something... I would do like want to do it. Dude, because when we get 48, I'm not going to lie. That's awesome, but it's some. I know we can all do the other two on our own, but there's something about if we could. I'm not even pushing for the other two. Like I said, if we can all do the 48, the two, if you uh, if you do Alaska and Hawaii on your own, fucking right, you done them. You done have 50. It. But, man, there's something. If we could somehow figure out to get those, and there's something. You take that one tattoo, and you had a fucking big 5-0 underneath it or within it or whatever the fuck. I'm just saying. I know. I know what you're saying. We're gonna get the we're gonna get this trip done, and somebody's gonna go. Hey, I got different. I know what you're talking about. We all we all will 
But dude, and making the the those two other states, that's a whole other fucking trip. A yeah. night like a thousand percent is a whole other trip. But dude, it ain't something that we can't stagger out over like, okay, this one takes two years to plan or whatever the fuck. It's not something we can't nah. do. And I I just I can't imagine if we could accomplish that goal with the fifty. You do? That's Fuck. what I'm going to do. Fart and be a man. We've, the, whole, the whole thing has been like, oh, we get the 48, then everybody will be on their own for the two. That's what we've always said, is we just get the 48 together, and everybody do their own two, the two on their own. We're going to get the 48 done, and I'm going to double down and go, guys, take a year or two to re-rack, but let's fucking do these. Let's do it all. Why not? Well, that's probably going to be the, the nostalgic that makes us want to come back, is that after you've done the 48, you have this goal accomplished. I think that we all, and you even said it, like, we do it ten years after you're, when you're dead. <laughs> we're gonna go to Alaska when he dies. <laughs> we're gonna there, go there's you. a lot of other guys that I want to travel with. You know what I mean? It truly is. I mean, it's nothing to do with anything. It's like it's not a dig or anything about the people we travel with now. The He's best, us, bro. But I no. I mean, this is Jaden's fucking. I'm regurgitating what he said on the podcast. Yeah. He there's other people he wants to experience the road with, yeah. and I'm the same way. Um. You have to be. Dude, look at this guy who's done it a million times with other people, right? And he yeah. took the time to do it with us. Same thing. If I can travel with, again, I know we brought him up earlier, but like a Todd, for example, or anybody. You fuck it. You name the guy, somebody that's gone, hey, dude, I want to do that. I want to go to I want to go to the Pacific Northwest. I've never done it. An RD. Anybody that says, fuck, I've always wanted to do this. But fuck, okay, well, fuck, I've done it. You know what I mean? Like, I've... I scratched my fucking thing well, with my boys, but I want to. He's at your reach. We t- we jive on the fact, like, some of the things that you want to do on a trip is also things I want to do on a trip. And it's kind of a hyper-focus in certain areas. And if we're both nerding out about the same kind of uh, folklore around these areas or the, the folklore or I guess it would be folklore would be the history yeah. of said road or said area, that's cool for me. I'm, like, down for that. Like, trust me, I'm down to drink all the time, but I am not about – Drinking is not the reason I'm on this bike trip. It is a thing I do on the trip. Yeah. Right? So if we're riding the loneliest highway in America, we're fucking, we're stopping at everything and saying, dude, this is fucking crazy. Pony Express, this is the whole idea, and it fucking failed. And here we are, and there's a ghost town, there's this. Hell yeah, let's go get a fucking beer over here. Yeah. Right? Not, hey, we got to get to the next town because there's fucking rage in the night. <laughs> get a nice so you cold. skip all the shit that you came on the trip to see. Because you got to get drunk tonight. Yeah. How about a I'm nice gonna get cold drunk tonight. sarsaparilla? I'm going to get drunk no matter what. Regardless. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So why rush to get there when I'm going to do that anyway? You know what I mean? So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, I want to get to a point where – I would say I want to get to a point. I think I'm going to be at a point where I'm going to value that in traveling where, look, we're going to drink. We're going to go do the Irish bar in New York, and we're going to bar hop tonight. We're gonna ride this. We're gonna fucking ride the subway. We're gonna do all this. We're gonna do the comedy store or not the comedy store, the cellar. Stand. We're gonna have fun, but we're also the next day. We're gonna wake up. We're gonna go to an Indian Larry's block party. No. We're gonna go experience the motorcycle culture that we came here to see, and the other culture we came here to experience. Right? I love that. That's yeah. that's me. That's traveling. That's fulfilling more than just the motorcycle thing. It's also I mean, fulfilling life. That's and, and you know you probably feel the same way, but like that's part of what I get. And why I like traveling alone so much? Yeah, I like starting a trip alone to where, and then having points where I'm going to meet up. I would rather like my preferred travel would be like to meet up with you somewhere and ride with you and see what you like about an area or, or share a common interest or whatever. Than do an entire, I mean, uh, do entire trips with people. Yes, but I like starting off on my own so that if I want to stop somewhere, I want to deviate, I can. And then eventually I make it to where I'm meeting up with somebody and we're going to ride a little bit. And then I'm going to go yeah. somewhere else and meet up with somebody. Like, And that's the cool thing about social media is like you can meet people that are in those areas that you're interested in and they can tell you about the cool bars. And maybe if they're, if they're, if it, if you want, you can ride with them or they'll show you around. They'll show you the cool roads. Like I'm excited to go to Montana and, and ride with Drew and, and see, you know, highway from the zoo, baby and mm-hmm. see highway 12 and that shit. And, and, and kind of make a big loop back around. Cause I've never been, I've never been to that, no, that far North in, in Montana. Dude, it's a, uh, well, all those people out there, but uh, to your point, it's like, I do like travel alone as well. And, but at the same time, I do love experiencing things with other people. Um, I just, I, I feel like there, there's a lot of different angles in which you can enjoy, uh, all this stuff. Yeah. And 
yeah, we kind of we're going off the rabbit hole, kind of talking about s- some of our group stuff, and it can probably sound like it's a it's a breakup story or this is a farewell tour, and it, it might be for some. And I, but I need everybody to be under, like okay with that. You know what I mean? Like everybody needs to be understanding. Like, hey, look, we're wrapping up something we planned to do. It took five years for us to pull this off. We started at a bike night, sitting around a fucking crate table. You know, a, a metal grade table, having beers, talking about let's let's ride the whole country together, and then five years later, we're wrapping it up. We've all changed, we've all grown, we've all like some of us have bought houses, some of us don't have legs anymore. You know what I mean? There's like different things that's taking place for all of us, but pursuing through all the life changes that's happening that has happened, and we're also still trying to accomplish this. You know, forty eight states. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. You know what I mean? Because, like you said, this is all free will with all of us. And, you know, yeah, me, Kyle, and Jaden, you know, our free will leads us to beer all the time. <laughs> so it's an easy thing for us to stay together. But some of the other guys that are thinking about buying houses, uh, thinking about, like, planting roots and, like, trying to grow, like, they they can't do this anymore. And I'm okay with that as long as they say they're okay with understanding that I'm still going to ride bikes and do what I do. You know what I mean? Like this, my life still goes on. I think it'll give you a new avenue too to like, instead of so much of your time and energy and money. You can afford again? No. Oh, right. I wish. Going into <laughs> into the group and, and stuff like that. Like, yeah, the group ride is, is fun. But now you're going to take time to do your own rides. Yeah. You can plan whatever the fuck you want, however the fuck you want with the dumbest worst routes or the you know the routes that just mean the most to you that other people wouldn't like it doesn't matter anymore you it's all for you and then you yeah. can meet people along the way or you can ride well, along the way Jaden got to experience like the when we did the whole month on the trip thing he got to experience the second half of that trip where it's all work for me and it is work and we did work we busted our ass but the thing is about those trip that side of the trip like he's the only person that's ever experienced that with me so maybe you can have a a, a say on it after this, but it is a goal where everywhere you go, it's about getting the podcast done, getting the content you need to record it, and then fi- figuring out what you have left to enjoy the day, the mm-hmm. night, the time, but also being available to do whatever at a fucking split second, right? And we when we split off from the guys in uh, in Boise, we went to. Vic's house, and the thing about doing podcasts with people, especially when you're in there, like when people come here, when they fly to Dallas, they come here to do a podcast. They show up, they down there, the formalities, hey, man, how you been, how you doing, when Jordan from Hot Bike comes in. And they're nervous. Bam. That's the other thing is they're, they're nervous. They're not in their home, you know what I mean, their home yeah. arena. They're so, they may not admit to it, but there is a level of getting here and, Oh fuck, dude! You're at the you know whether you want to say it, whether you want to frame it or like that or not. But you're you're at the Fast Life Studios. You're seeing it for the first time. You're here. You're doing something. Oh fuck, dude! I'm, this, I'm in the studio. And well, and, and you're live. Like if you say something fucking dumb, like yeah, well, yeah it, a booger it, it, coming out of your nose or something. Same thing. It adds to the whole like, oof. All right, you're here. It's, yeah, it's a, an experience. It's a thing. Well, so you know, we do this trip. You know, we 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 split off from the group and we. Literally go stay at the house of uh, Victor Newmark, right? FXR guy, John Teller, uh, the famous face for John Teller on on Sons of Anarchy. And we're staying at his house, and his wife is cooking us steaks, and we're eating potatoes, and he's running back and forth to the store, and he's having issues with fucking Club Worlds. He's involved in Club World. He's having an issue in fucking, and he comes back. He's like, this motherfucker at the goddamn grocery store saw my shirt, my support shirt, and we're hearing this story, right? But at this point, it went from we were on vacation to where, like, we're still on vacation, but now we have to do podcasts. Now we got to – we have to make him feel comfortable about telling us everything he's willing to divulge on this episode, right? While he's opening up a part of his home to try to make it comfortable for enough for us to do what, you know, what he what we, yeah. what he came to do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. to – Hey, I want to give you respect because that's the thing is nobody we're going to is like, oh, hey, fucking, you're going to fucking do it in the, the back corner of my garage and it's going to work or you can go fuck yourself. Everybody that we've stopped at was like, 
oh fuck dude what's the best I can make like they're yeah they're they're so accommodating so like he's saying is you're you're trying to make it work with the absolute best of what they're providing versus what you need and it's it's just it's a it's a whole vibe yeah well so we you know we left his house and we had a 400 mile trip to TPJ's in uh, Reno and we stopped we 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 had a kind of an epic experience like with the the Mormon crickets that doesn't even get into it, man, because I feel like just the, the, like, the podcast itself was awesome, right? Like, that's a one, and he could have been any other guest, but he wasn't. For me, that yeah. was, like, a one, once, like, that was yeah. a, that was an amazing guest. So, we'll, we'll leave that all, all to the side, but then, let's just say if you want to extend the hospitality to the next morning, where we're waking up, and we're coming, you know, I'm on the back, so I'm trying to shed, I'm shed smelly shoes, and whatever the fuck, and we just... And the whole thing where we're coming down to as comfortable as as taking care of we as as we've been for two weeks. I'm still last minute trying to pack, unpack, whatever, like make it the best. And his his I'll never forget this. His neighbor stops by, and dude, Vic is a uh, Vic's a high energy guy. So Vic's a very I don't know if you would want to call it ADD, but it's one of those things like if it's not happening right now in front of him, it's kind of fucking. It's and he doesn't have a lot of chance for you know a lot of time for slow stuff, and his buddy his neighbor shows up and it was the sweetest thing when this guy shows up and he talk starts talking about and for a guy like that that's you know fucking high strung whatever the fuck you want to call it for this eighty year old guy to show up and just to watch him slow his whole fucking roll down and we're talking to this guy and this guy is talking about he's been riding since you know he was in his twenties. And his goal was to ride till he was 80. Yeah. And he made it to like 83, 84. And no, he made it to like 74. 74. Yeah. Whatever the fuck. But it's one of the things he's like, he made it close enough where he's like, ah, I don't fucking love it, but I'm accepting it. And he talked about he had rigged up some like CR450, some dirt bike where he rigged up a thing where he could carry his fishing cooler and his fucking fishing poles. And they had a lake close enough to where we lived for. That was his thing. He was like, I'll, I can ride 100 miles a day, maybe, if he takes a long road. Like, some yeah. shit where I can get out and ride, but as far as on my Harley, going up the roads and doing this shit, he was like, I can't do it. He's like, 100 miles puts me down for, what do you say, four days? Yeah. He's like, I ride 100 miles. I'm down for four fucking days. I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. But he rigged up this dirt bike to go fishing. He's like, this, this is staving off the fucking inevitability, right? Yeah. Dude, it's... As a fucking, as a motorcycle rider, even if if you're a guy who's like, oh, this is, I just fucking do this for fun. If that doesn't hit you, if that doesn't grab you by the fucking balls, I don't know what will. As far How as, how many? It's all coming for us, right? Like, you can do the whole, like, oh, I'm not a fucking painter. I'm not a fucking influencer. I just ride for my fun, fun. And I got, uh, I got, I, I got my kids. My wife's a business. And, uh, you good. That's cool and all shit. But guess what, motherfucker? Time doesn't stop. And that clock doesn't doesn't give a flying fuck. I think I think I got a point right here, right? Yeah. Let me ask let me ask you this. And let me ask everybody listening to this. Right now in your current state of motorcycling, would you say would you honestly say or have you said up until this point where I asked you this question, you're doing this for the rest of your life? You know what I mean? Like you know what I mean by that? You you know what I'm saying? Like I started riding. I'm having fun. We're doing this. We're doing the bars. We're doing the campouts. We're doing this. And you're just enjoying it. Like, I'm never not doing this. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I wonder how many people in their life, like, really think about, like, I'm never not going to be doing motorcycles. Maybe I'm not going to a camp out. Maybe I'm not doing a club-style Tennessee or yeah. something like that. But I am always going to ride motorcycles for the rest of my fucking life. Like, I wonder how many people think that. Or maybe how many people think like I'm gonna ride bikes and this is fun. This is a good thing. I, you know, this is cool right now. I think I want to. I think people think about what they want to do with their bike, but they don't think about the fact that I'm always gonna do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so when you accept like you're married a motorcycle, not just a bike, but the 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 idea of a motorcycle. I'm married to this forever. Mm-hmm. This is who I am till I fucking die. Are you committed to that, or are you like committed to that? Till it serves you, yeah. Or are you going to be committed to that till like it doesn't serve you, but yeah, you have yeah, to find yeah. a new purpose within it? Like, so I'm gonna I'm gonna commit motorcycle sin and and say that 
I don't think I'm committed to it. And the fact that my joy doesn't come from the motorcycle, it comes from the connections that the motorcycle brings. If I could get, there's just a certain type of people. There's a certain th- it factor that riding brings that you can't get. You can't. I feel like anyway, and and people can disagree, but Good. I don't think that I could get with boats. You can't get with van life or whatever. But for me, the connection to the people, the the history, and the nothingness. Like so again, so my jam is like riding and nothingness. Like I can't get that from any other passion. Yeah. Motorcycling is what brings that. So it's a means to an end. If I had the money to own a thousand acres and horses, maybe I wouldn't own maybe I wouldn't own a bike. I don't know. But for me, I don't care about I don't care about the bike. Like I don't need a hot bike. I don't need a fucking uh, a performance bike or anything like that. I want a reliable bike. But I want to suck all of the connections I can out of that bike. People, places, experiences. Like, And if, if there comes a time when that's done, then I'm done. If I found, if I found today what another – av- if I found another avenue today that could give me those connections, I'd sell my bike. But I don't think – at least I haven't found – Anything else? Jet skis are pretty cheap right now, dude. especially I, in Wisconsin. <laughs> I I love ice fishing. Ice fishing couldn't give me. I could put all my money into ice fishing. It wouldn't give me the connections that I get from the motorcycle community, and that's yeah. why I have a bike. But everybody's answer is going to be different. But that's mine. I yeah. don't think that it's a. I'm not wed to the motorcycle. I'm wed to what it gives me, because I can't replicate that anywhere else. Well, I I guess I, I that's fair, and I think that's a fair like way to look at it. I'm wed to the motorcycle because the motorcycle is something that if I pay homage to, it gives me those. It's like it's kind of like paying the church and the church provides or paying the government. This is a bad <laughs> analogy. I'm going to give the government and they're going to pay the roads for me, right? Yeah, yeah. That kind of situation. But it's not really that. It's like the motorcycle creates the opportunity. So if I stay loyal to the motorcycle, mm-hmm. it'll give me the life that I want within motorcycles. When I don't praise the motorcycle then you start praising the other false gods of the world of motorcycling the 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 materialism and and materialistic aspects of it but i think it's different too again because this is your livelihood and you're an artist within the community i don't i don't make my money here and I don't give back. In I that wonder way. a lot, like on that same thing. That's I've heard that a lot. You've said a lot. A lot of people said a lot. I wonder how much. It's this is always this is a hypothetical. This is a wonder, right? I I can't. We can't measure this because of the latter. I feel like I love motorcycling so much that it's just part of who I am, regardless of whether or not it's my business or not. Sure. Like. When, if I took my the fast side brand out of it, I don't think that I would I would still be a biker. Yeah. I would still be a part of this. Yeah. I don't know it would change anything. It's the reason why everything I do is so I guess second nature is because all I'm doing is showing what I naturally do. Yeah. Because I'm so involved and, in motorcycles. And, but I think that's the difference there is what you naturally do. You are naturally gifted in in art. You are naturally gifted in in building painting having a vision yeah, but for that the, so for that that's the that's the that's the very misconception thing about me is that i was into art and art took me to motorcycles yeah. as a place to 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 make money with my art and i fell in love with motorcycles more i fell in love with art yeah so but it's still the art aspect of it and what you create yeah for me i'm not creating anything i'm getting memories connections and, and perspective. And well, you that's are what too. I'm talking about. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like I found more love and, and connection mm-hmm. through connecting with people and whatever you want to call the things have been for the, since we started this podcast. Yeah. That's been more beneficial to me than any art I've ever created in but my life. You also get that connection to, to the art of, in a lot of different ways, the machine, right? Uh, this might be a dumbed down version. <laughs> My tenure, my, my tenure in motorcycle customization, custom paint, all it does is give me a small bit of validation. No, no, hand. I think you're looking at it from a business end. Yeah. Well, no, take it's that like, out of it. No, I, I, I'm. What you create with a bike. What I'm getting to with this situation is like those things give me a little bit of a 
of ability to step on a stool and talk amongst people and say something and I get a little more eyes on me. Mm -hmm. And so when I started getting eyes on me because of my art, well, my art was on motorcycles and I love motorcycles. So I started falling in love with more motorcycles more than the art. Right. And so I started connecting with people based on why they love motorcycles and that connects with me more. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've felt like my, you. my connection in motorcycles has been about, or like my, my artistic like palette or my, uh, my body of work is more importantly to about inspiring people to do something mm -hmm. right. And this sounds super gay as AIDS. I'm sorry. Not but, as gay as, as Nick. But, you know, when I when I'm when I look at these David Man posters that I have, when I look at uh, these documentaries that I've watched over my years, mm -hmm. I, I've been inspired by so many people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that I'm trying to be the inspirer. I'm just trying to live a life that inspires. Mm -hmm. And then we started this podcast, and then conversations inspire, mm -hmm. right? So but like, like nothing. You, I don't ride a bike cross country because I'm like everybody's gonna love this. I'm like I fucking love it. Mm -hmm. That's why I did it. I did I, it for me first, and then everybody else second. Does and I think sense? you know you, you, David. David Mann's a good a good reference as far as his paintings go. You know, a lot of what he did, he paint or most of what he did, is he painted what he was living and what he saw and what he was passionate about. Yeah. Like his his club, his brothers, that scene, that era of the of the you know the seventies and the eighties and, and and that stuff. That was his passion. That was what gave him. Among other things, purpose. And he was a great bike builder too. I mean, he wasn't yeah. just a, just a painter and an artist. Um, and he could write. He could write. I mean, but some it's of crazy. Like he was a great bike builder. He's a writer. He's all yeah. these things. But some this one thing he did that maybe wasn't like the thing that he wanted to be his catalyst, but that was the thing that is his legacy. And, and so for me, it's different because I don't have that. Like that's just, and, and I'm not like. Oh, I wish I had that. No, I'm fine with it. Like, for me, my catalyst is... You're not. Was that the gayest Ashu I've ever heard? Did you just go, Ashu? Oh, <laughs> is, is, you know, being somewhere in in some wide open space somewhere or riding somewhere to hang out with a dude that, that I can't wait to learn from or something like that. Like, that's what I get it from. And, and that's where I put my time and energy. And again, I don't think and haven't found another avenue that can bring that, like the motorcycle. Well, so I that's think, why that's I think why an, one artist to another, like, I feel like you have a talent within writing, within formulating ideas and taking the past and regurgitating it for the, the current. And I think that it's for you. It's just like until you find the right medium, the right place to put what you've learned how to do, which you've, you know, like all that. Like, I, I feel like you, you have value to give. And right now it's through four for the road, but I think that eventually that shell can be broken and you can find a, another way to like provide a service to everything through like all the research, all the ways that mm -hmm. you've learned how to communicate. And I think that's going to be uniquely you over the next couple of years as you kind of blossom yeah. as and, a and fucking think, young child <laughs> and uh, back you have your, your first period and all that. Back <laughs> to your original question. Like, I don't want to give up motors. Like, I'm not, like, looking to sell my bike and, and go into something else. Like, I love what it gives me, but I'm, a, I'm not a giver. I'm a taker. You know, again, if we're, using just, if we're using just you as an example, you're giving stuff back to the motorcycle community. I'm not. I'm just purely taking. I'm taking connections and experiences and, and, and the interactions with people that are making me a better person and, and the things I get to see and be a part of. Yeah. But I'm not giving anything back. That's why my life is not invested in the bike. I said, if I, if I, you if I had the money. You fucking give the, shit that's back. That's bullshit. Yeah, that's yeah. bullshit. No. It's, you, I, I, you, 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 that's a way for you to go, oh, I'm, I'm just taking guys. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> what? I'm just taking all the guys on. Taking all day. Literally just taking like, tons like, of guys. So, well, at no, once. but no, listen. Like, I, I go pee. Argue you, amongst yourself. Uh, we we got to wrap this up. We got to we, we go to the Waffle House. So. Do you? I got to go. take an hour drive. I got to go home. Dude, you don't be a little bitch, dude. We're going to Waffle House. I'm going to my bed. Tell him, don't be a little bitch. Don't shut this down. What are we? Uh, well, no, he's, he's three and a half There's hours. There's only like dude. 10 you people watching. This is like four, four for the row podcast. Yeah, right? dude. I got to <laughs> I got I got I gotta pee. I got to go to bed. I got to test tomorrow. I'm going to get fired yeah, 30, for saying shit on here. Yeah, I shouldn't have said. 30, 30 minutes. Dude, when I, get back, when I get back to my home state, my boss is like going to have a copy of this. and be like, do you really say this about vets? I'm like, God damn right I did. No. Dragon did. <laughs> yeah. Look, look him up. He, he's he a fictitious never, character he never in a even podcast. Applied. 
Fucking be mad at him. Well, <laughs> Dave, thank you for coming. Uh, I don't know if we ex- if we exceeded the expectations we did all of, this of your in, like, notes. The first hour, so. Um, I think that people need to understand that like uh, Four for the Road in general is a great podcast. It's a great informative podcast. It's a lot of great insight to uh, the world of motorcycle culture as an individual rider and as a club member. It's a great podcast. I'm glad it exists, and I'm proud of you guys because the consistency is still is still going strong. And I think the dumbest, and I'm going to do the dumbest gay shit and say that oh, yeah. about what somebody can do with a podcast, but. If Derek ever comes, and I think he is coming through Texas, and if there's a way to work it out where he's going to be near Dallas, and if you have the free time and availability, you can do a podcast with him. That I, I selfishly, I would love that because I think Derek for four for the road, no shame, is just so much more articulate and and so well spoken, and would be a great podcast. I would love for you to have somebody else that represents four for the road being able to engage with you like yeah. this. And I think he's the perfect. No, no, no offense well, to you anybody else. Money, money. there should be a value. It would be a monetary <laughs> value thing to all fly here to do a podcast together, but because you don't want to charge money, I will pay to fly him. Nonprofit Habsies. podcast up in this bitch. Yeah, I'm gonna take the go have these, dude. I'll I'll add that on t- on top of that. Y'all should all ride down to the Fast Life camp out. FLC no. six. It's too it's too oh, yeah, uh it's go. too corporate yeah, for them. That's not what we said. That's not what but I yeah, said. At all. You don't have to come down, it's like oh rolling like, uh, I gotta wait for the other six dudes in my group because we're the we're now the for the road podcast. No, come in, fucking check in, come and hang out and all they just Dude, come the fuck Now up. I sound like, now it make me sound like a hipster. Like, oh, it's too cool. No, that's not what I said at all. You Just are the, a fucking it's hipster. The, the fucking rise, Odin like manufacturing. The tide races all shit. So I can't, I can't, I just can't even imagine. We're there doing shit on the stage, and you guys are all there as a crew. Dude, get the fuck out. Yeah, you're going to have you your own about, award. You want to talk about doing your own ride? Like, in and fucking doing some stuff? Hey, you want to meet up with all the, we've talked about it. We're over it. We're over the rides. It's our home ground. We're like, ah, we're fucking going to kind of hang out. You want to go do some sort of like, oh, dude, for the road, we're going to run to this and do that. Go. Halfway along the way, talk. You want to meet people, whatever. It's a like. weird thing because what he's talking about and what the place is like. Like, I've had a lot of brands hit me up and say, hey, you should do a meet and greet in Sturgis. And I'm like, no, I don't fucking want to do that. Like, I don't look at myself as a person that needs to do a meet and greet. Yeah. That's the weirdest fucking thing in the world. But in certain worlds of YouTube, that is... That is the natural fucking way of things. That is the natural order. Well, because I don't like it, I don't want to put another brand on on blast. Like, hey, you should do a meet and greet at our camp out. No, no, no. You should do your own thing at our camp out. You should Are you come about to our four camp- for the road. Yeah, no, four for the road. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right yes. now, we've never. We, I'll say, hang on. I will say right now, we would never do anything like that because it's not us. It, it's just four for the road is nothing more than AOL online. It's a it's a chat ah, room. That's what I'm telling you. It's a that's chat a, room where you can come ask chicks their age, sex, location. Like that's yeah. it's a collective of people. First where off, you can share you don't ideas. Get to, you, you, honestly, that is one perspective of four for the road, but mm-hmm. four for the road. But there's also a perspective of the listeners. And they actually dictate more of what it is Not, over the, you. You have no, a perception of what you're trying to do. We're not making do, money off them. Then you should. <laughs> yeah. And just because you just don't use you don't make money of, just because you don't make money off of doesn't mean that that dude's not listening in fucking Kansas. The I'm, guy that I'm, are the, we are we boring you? Ah, uh, fuck Kyle, dude. Don't worry about <laughs> him. No, I'm serious. The, just just because you're not making money I'm off of it. IHOP or, uh, just because there's he's you're not making, right on doesn't too. mean there's not a dude in Kansas. That fucking did four years or whatever the fuck, eight years, whatever, you know what I mean? That's a lot more in tune to y'all's world that's listening, that is in this world. He goes, yeah, oh, and, and, and I love meeting guys that, that follow four for the road when I'm on the road and stuff like that. Like, I love that connection. But again, I think to put any attention on us individually as a, as like, oh, we're four for the road, it, it does a disservice to what the idea of it is. It's a platform I for disagree. everybody. I disagree. I, I, be it, again. You guys are trying to do something you have no control over. Yeah. yeah. You guys are trying to be like this autonomous, anonymous idea of a brand that puts all this effort into creating uh, content that people consume. Yeah. And people are consuming the content, and they love it. And you're trying to play this role of like... Number 25 in Canada, baby. You're <laughs> Come on. Not bad here in America, too, <laughs> though, dude. So I think uh, I've seen you guys in the top 20, top 10 before you know what i'm saying like it's it's 100 percent good so what that happens is like you got these people that listen to it and yeah i don't put like this 
the content you put out is what people consume. It's not so much like, put like this. Uh, I'm Jace. I do this Fast Life podcast. I'm the constant, but you're the guest, and the mm-hmm. guest is a selling point. Yeah. Right? You guys have a different mod- different uh, approach. Like you do a podcast where you all bring something to the table. Sometimes you have a guest. Sometimes you don't. So your content is the content you guys create. Mm-hmm. The monologues, the ideas, the the topics, that's the content, right? It's it's well thought out, it's thought of, it's it's things that you're putting on the table. It's it's a uh, complex conversations that you're having to kind of dissect the world of what you're dealing with. And uh you guys can't stay in this like super humble state. Not saying you need to have an ego or anything or develop anything, but you gotta you have a community of people that, that that are interested in what you do, so you have to give you gotta you gotta follow up on some. You gotta create something for them to connect with you on another level. And if you don't want to, I get it. But eventually, it's doing a dis- disservice to the listeners because if you guys don't have a deep connection as to why you continue to do this, no. then at any day y'all can stop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that when y'all do, all these guys are like, well, I guess I'll do what, Jaden. <laughs> I go fuck myself, hundred percent. We go fuck ourselves because you didn't want to monetize it so, and make this a priority in your life. <laughs> so it's just like I'll do it when I can, and then you know I, what I mean. I feel like some some people are going to criticize the fact that I didn't have any like good like I just there's on my always going to be people criticizing. No, the hang, fact. On, hang on, fuck wait, wait, them, dude. no, hang on. That I didn't have any good, like, I jizzed in my grandma's hair stories, like, last time. Like, I feel like those are what people, like, gravitated towards the most. But I will say that. stop reading the comments, bro. So, I was was in Virginia with Cole and some other dudes. Um, We're at a bar, just hanging out on the porch, having drinks. Out of nowhere, this dude, like, opens the door to the porch. And, I mean, he's a ways away. And he, like, yells at me. He's like, hey, aren't you that gangbang guy? It's like, whoa, dude. Lower your tone. <laughs> but he was a super cool dude, and I had a great time. I was like, hey, he's just yelling across the bar. Aren't you that gangbang dude? <laughs> Who does it? Dude, last night at the bike night, the dude, the homie, he's like, man, I heard your voice. Like, uh, yeah, you're the fourth of the row guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, motherfucker. But not the gangbang guy. No, but you're the guy. It's the voice, man. <laughs> Look, you put your, you didn't have to do a podcast. None of you guys in fourth row had to do a podcast, but you fucking did. So grow up <laughs> and be a fucking podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have great content, great, great stories, great perspectives. Own the shit and fucking just just own it. You're, you're, you're beholden to too many people that don't fucking dictate anything in your life. You're beholden to too many. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again slower. You're beholden to too many people who don't dictate anything in your life. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I, I get what you're saying. But they want it, but they don't. Yeah, you know, it's fuck them. But we're in, because you're dealing with certain content. You're dealing with fuck them. All right, can I go pee? Yeah. We're all going I, to pee. I say that I no. This turn it, this no, shit no, off. <laughs> no con. There's no com. No no content on that as far as that goes. You guys have y'all are eleven D and y'all produce shit across Ken, the fucking masses. You're no not, shame. You're everybody. not just doing a podcast. Where you're trying to fight everybody. You're riding. You're traveling. You're doing all this shit, dude. Anybody that wants to turn a negative comment, they're not even on your fucking level, dude. Those are fucking people going, I wish I could do half this, so I'm going to shit on these guys. Because, dude, this is we're this not, is even a veteran and non-veteran. No. This is like, I feel like that's a that's a big thing a lot of times with the mut- motorcycle community. It's like, oh, dude, these I'm just trying to end this I podcast. Didn't, I didn't pee. serve something. Oh, no, fuck that. Fuck that. Tr- quit trying to get off of it. Piss on yourself in the podcast yeah, like a fucking man, yeah, dude. dude. Fuck, are you what kind of, or not, bro? What kind of veteran are you? Yeah, exactly. dude. Are you a Navy SEAL or not? But no, there's a ton. Of, and if you got to pee, you got to pee. But there's a... <laughs> but no, dude, there's a ton of like... Uh, but no, dude, you don't You don't owe anybody a motherfucking thing, dude. Um, okay, so I'm not talking about like owing negative people anything or, or, or what the perception would be. Well, okay, kind of the perception, but not the comments. When you we're not talking about just individual motorcycling bike industry stuff, that's not our that's not what we do. We talk about something a, a culture of motorcycle clubs, not motorcycle culture, some of that, yes. Like Jay said, we have different guests on and stuff like that, but a lot of what we do involves club ideas, aspects, thoughts, best practices, going ons, whatever. 
Dude, I you, listen to your podcast more than this fucking guy does. So you're not talking. You're not telling me anything. I don't know. I don't. What I'm telling you is, at some point, you're gonna have that. Can I finish? Wait, you guys on a podcast? <laughs> I'm saying, dude, you guys are doing this thing, and you got a fucking. You got this. You got this. You're building the city, and outside, you got all these dudes sitting. I'm going. Ah, I want to be a part of it. But yeah. it's not that simple when you're dealing. It is that it's simple. Not. It's a different content, and it's a different lane that you have to be thoughtful and respectful of. And do you not think that most of the guys that are listening? You're First getting, off, fuck your click in the <laughs> click. No, but fuck your bitch. You're not listening. Fuck your bitch so in the, the click, click you claim. claim. West Side when I ride, come equipped with game. You don't think you claim to guys, be a player? You don't think the guys that are listening? They're. I mean, again, I don't. I'm not military guy, so I don't. But I have to assume they're not. Fresh sign up good dudes that are like, oh, I'm fucking. I'm, oh, he's talking about the club. World. I'm worried about it's the constitution. The yeah, that's side. what I'm saying. Like, by the, the guy, by the time they get to you, they're they're diff, disenfranchised with the bullshit. I'm not gonna lie. I love you, but you lost me. I don't even know you, the constitution thing. I don't even know. You really know what I'm saying? Like, by the time they get to you, you you it almost seems like you're acting like, oh, well, dude, Kyle's we're doing got it. fucking Waffle House dreams <laughs> going on right now. I'm in, it, dude. Dude, I just want to go to my hotel and go to sleep. All right, we're done. <laughs> We'll save this for a Patreon. I get what Love y'all. All right.